So hey guys, welcome back to my channel. What if Naruto was the god of land and sea and had all Pokemons as his slave? Movie. Smoke filled the skies as fire spread throughout a boat cruiser, the sounds of an infant's cry echoed in the dark empty halls. Shish, it's okay mommy's here a long red-haired woman whispered as she held a blonde-haired bundle close. Half an hour ago, a group of strange characters wearing blue had attempted to hijack the cruiser. Their objective seemed to be the meteorite the woman's husband and colleague had discovered. The group was easily dispatched with the help of both Pokemon and trainers aboard the ship, they didn't however count on sabotaging the engine as they had detonated a bomb, this caused fires to spread and water to gorge in through the ship's hull. Kashina, she heard her husband yell. Minato, in here, she coughed as she held her child close, protecting the infant from the black fumes. Manatric, use wild charge. She heard, not seconds before the door burst open and flew across the room. In came a blonde-haired man and a blue-colored wolf-like creature with a yellow spiked mane. Before she could run to her husband they felt the ground shake and soon the room seemed to detach itself from the boat as a second explosion burst nearby. The woman fell back, holding on to her child before falling over the edge, Kashina. The older blonde yelled as he dashed and grasped her arm as she fell. The red-haired woman looked down at the raging waters, then back to her husband, Minato, take Naruto, I can't hold him much longer. She cried as the bundle began to slip from her grasp. Minato reached down, stretching as much as he could, Manatric biting into its master shirt, making sure he didn't fall. Minato, she cried, before. Kama, 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 Naruto. They shouted as the child fell into the cold depths of the sea. Pacific Log Town, 14 years later. Jin Gigi, have you seen Naruto? A small boy in swimming clothes asked. Hum, can't say that I have, have you checked with Faust or Lydia? The elder asked. Yes, they both haven't seen him, we've even swam underneath the Corsola colony, we can't find him the boy paused before stuttering, why you don't he think he went up to the S sky pillar do you? The Sky Pillar. Nonsense. It's off limits even to the most skilled trainers. Naruto knows better than to do so. Now go on, he's probably gone diving with the Clamperl again. Hell turn up sooner or later. The boy nodded and rushed out of the hut. The elder cupped his chin. The Sky Pillar. Why would Naruto go to someplace so dangerous and with his only Pokemon being a Corsola, he thought. Sky Pillar. A blonde haired boy wearing a wet white shirt black swimming trunks, and sandals ran up the tall staircase holding a basket full of various berries and poffins. Tied around his back was a single strap bag with dusk, dive, luxury, and ultra ball, this boy was named Naruto. Thirteen years ago, his foster parents Faust and Lydia found him at their doorstep during a heavy storm. They didn't know who or what left him but he was a bundle of joy that changed their lives for the better. The only thing they found on the baby was his wet blanket and jumpsuit with his name patched onto it. After five minutes of tireless running, Naruto finally reached the top where he was tackled to the ground by a white and blue blur. He chuckled as a cloud-feathered bird nuzzled its head against the blonde, yeah, yeah I miss you too Altaria he stated as the phoenix got off him with a happy chirp. The blonde walked up the few stairs left and was greeted by a light snore. In front of him laid a colossal green wingless dragon with glowing yellow runes on its body. Its eyes snapped open upon catching the blonde's scent, it yawned before getting up and close to him, letting the blonde pet its head. This was the legendary Pokemon, Rayquaza. I brought you guys snacks. Naruto stated with a smile, out of his bag, his dive ball popped open and out came his Corsola. Corsola, Core. The blonde fed both Phoenix and Living Coral a Pecha Berry whilst the dragon fed on many Spellin and Corn Berry. Naruto himself gulped down a bottle of water before one of the Nanab Poffins levitated into the air, a pair of glowing red eyes glared at the blonde, Hey Bayonet. I didn't forget about you, otherwise I wouldn't have brought the Poffins he pointed out with a grin. The eyes softened up a bit and in a zip a golden Cheshire grin appeared before materializing its body. The Pokemon had a doll-like appearance three spikes on its head with a long zigzag-shaped ribbon hanging down its head. It also had long three-fingered hands with short stubby legs along with a yellow brush-like tail. This was Bayonet, Naruto's first Pokemon. Naruto smiled as he watched his team chow down on the food he had brought. Unlike most of the townspeople, 
The blonde was always more curious than cautious and even though many had warned about the dangers of the sky pillar he went on in any way. He never regretted it. On his first visit he met and befriended a shepherd, the two would play together along with the Zubat and Cladal that resided within. A month later, Pasifidlog town was visited by a traveling merchant, Naruto had purchased his respected poke balls using the pearls, star pieces, and star dust he found beneath the ocean floor. Not a moment too soon did the blonde catch his ghostly friend within a dusk ball, a week later he had caught one of the Corsola within the colony below Pasifidlog town, using his dive ball. The two Pokemon easily become friends due to their playful nature. Naruto was a smart kid and knew that if he brought Shepard back with him to Pacifidlog Town his foster parents would find out that had been going into the Sky Pillar. So, he decided to keep Shepard outside his Dusk Ball for the time being while he brought Corsola back. Corsola was a common Pokemon that many trainers within the floating village possessed so it was safe to assume the blonde hadn't gone anywhere to catch it. Several months later, Naruto and his Pokemon came across an injured Swablu which was under attack by a swarm of Golbats. After a long and tough battle, the young trainer emerged victorious, Shepard had also evolved into Bayonet after the battle was won. After several weeks of nursing the Swablu back to health using berry medicine, the small bird grew a strong affection for the blonde and would nuzzle against him at any given point. Bayonet and Corsola happily accepted the bird into the team and was captured into a luxury ball. Years passed by and Swablu had evolved into Altaria, Naruto had ventured further up the sky pillar until he finally reached the top. To his surprise and awe when he came face to face with the sky high Pokemon, Rayquaza was a very territorial Pokemon and would defend his turf with lethal force if required, however for some reason, it didn't. Naruto remained quiet for several minutes, his Pokemon had popped out of their Pokeballs wondering if their friend, Master was okay. They wondered if he was scared of the legendary being, Hellbaynet and Altaria had lived in the Sky Pillar long enough to know not to mess with Rayquaza and hop they wouldn't have to battle. Corsola was highly intimidated by the dragon before her and shacked behind her trainer's leg. The blonde however surprised them by bowing to the dragon and blurting out, Arigato. Thanks for saving me. He didn't know how, or didn't know why but his gut told him that the dragon before him had saved him at some point in his life and could remember bits of the day his foster parents had found him. Flashback. A storm raged outside, the closed windows slammed against the walls every now and then. Faust, a blue-haired young man held his wife Lydia, a silver-haired beauty closely as they sat by the fire. Whether in Pacifidlog town was never this wild and dangerous, something was wrong and the skies weren't taking a liking to it. They snapped their heads up as they heard the sound of a baby's cry, Lydia got up and walked towards the door as the thunder roared outside. Swinging in the wooden door she gasped as her eyes laid on a small bundle who refused to stop crying, Faust rushed over and helped his wife bring in the child. The two searched room for warm blankets and fresh towels, the child was soaking wet from the storm and proceeded to remove his jumpsuit to dry him. They noticed the name sewn into the clothes, Naruto. They muttered before lightning struck close scaring the child and causing him to cry harder. There, there don't cry, everything's gonna be okay, Shish Lydia whispered motherly. Suddenly the storm stopped raging, which highly confused the new parents. Faust opened one of the windows and gasped as the shadow of a wingless dragon levitated above the ocean waters, it gave a mighty roar and flew into the skies. The baby Naruto had his small eyes opened enough to witness the legendary Pokemon. Was that, Rayquaza, Lydia muttered. Flashback end. Having memories as an infant was rare, sadly Naruto failed to recall anything further down the line. Months passed, and Naruto continued to visit the dragon who had grown accustomed to his company. Like most legendary Pokemon Rayquaza once preferred a more personal sanctuary, away from Pokemon and humans alike. Then again, the boy's presence did make things more lively, after about a year, Naruto had challenged Rayquaza to a battle, who had accepted. The battle was an extremely difficult one, the fact the Rayquaza's outrage, extreme speed, and V-Create made it nearly impossible to defeat, then again it's to be expected from a legendary Pokemon. The dragon was highly impressed with the blonde, not many Pokemon had lasted long against his attacks and the boy was doing just that. Using many combinations to counteract the dragon's superior strength, the team was finally able to bring it down hard. Corsola using Iron Defense and Mirror Coat was able to block off most of its attacks, 
Altaria had used Dragon Dance and Dragon Pulse which dealt a great amount of damage to her opponent, and Bayonet who had managed to leave a burn using Will O Wisp before using Hex to, to double its damage. Utilizing Bayonet's signature move, Curse, Rayquaza suffered major damage before it was defeated by a trio attack from the three Pokemon. Bayonet, Altaria, Corsola finish him off with Shadow Ball, Dragon Pulse, and Rock Blast. Naruto commanded. Corsola materialized a large boulder and fired it, which fused with Bayonet's Shadow Ball, in which came in contact with Altaria's Dragon Pulse. The strike exploded upon impact and Rayquaza laid defeated on the rooftop above the cloud. Naruto whipped a thumb below his nose and whipped out his last available poke ball. Ultra Ball, go! A pale yellow beam shot forth and sucked in the dragon. The ball shook once, twice, thrice, ding! Naruto stood quietly his Pokemon breathing heavily from their match, he walked over to the poke ball and picked it up. A smile graced his lips, yada! I've caught Rayquaza, he held the ball high in the air and his Pokemon cheered before they all collapsed from exhaustion. He of course had no choice but to take them to the Pacifidlog Town's Pokemon Center, where no doubt, his parents would find out. He was ever so lucky that it wasn't the case as his foster parents didn't see him enter the center. Nurse Joy flipped over the injuries given to the boy's Pokemon and ranted on about being careless and whatnot. It wasn't until he showed her Rayquaza that she nearly had a heart attack, this boy was most likely the first ever to capture a legendary Pokemon. A week of rest and his team was back at 100%, he made sure that they stayed within their poke balls until he made it back to the Sky Pillar. Naruto chuckled at the memory, fighting Rayquaza made him want to travel the world more than ever now. His parents already knew of his urge due to him disappearing every so often, they knew it was a stage that every boy goes through and they would support him 100%. They have already scheduled for him to meet with one Professor Birch in Little Root Town for his own Pokédex and hopefully, a starter Pokémon as well. They knew the chances of that happening were low, after all why need a starter if you already have a Pokémon. Naruto finished his water and got his team's attention. Well guys tomorrow's the day we begin our journey so today will be as good any he paused, the Pokemon leaned in wondering what their trainer had to say, I want you to meet my parents he stated dramatically, Rayquaza's sweat dropped while Bayonet had a surprised look and Altaria went star-eyed, Corsola not so much as she had already met them. The five finished their meals before Naruto returned them towards their poke balls and dashed back toward Pacifidlog town. Outside Naruto's hut, the blonde stood nervously as Faust, Lydia, and the rest of townspeople stared in awe at the Pokemon before them. Bayonet floated around a group of children, making them laugh with his ghostly antics, the girls of the group began to pet Altaria's feathers and nuzzling up to them saying how fluffy and soft they were. Naruto had kept Rayquaza within his Ultra Ball and had it tied around as a necklace making sure nobody knew he had captured a legendary Pokemon. Seems our son is growing up Faust stated with a graceful smile, Lydia whipped a small tear from her eye. Our baby is growing up so fast she whispered as she saw the blonde play around with the children and Pokemon. Well son Faust said getting the blonde's attention, since you'll soon be traveling across Hoenn you'll need a little something for your journey he motioned for him to follow. Naruto and his Pokemon eagerly trailed behind him and into the hut. Their Faust gave him his very own extrance I ever, a black and red watch like communication device obviously for calling them and giving details of his journey. A book on berries and wild plants, a pair of goggles, a strange blue star charm, a survival pack, and a new outfit. His Pokemon waited patiently for the their trainer and not too soon did he walk out of his room, now wearing a short sleeve black turtleneck shirt with red poke ball markings, knee long stripped black shorts over black pants, a pair of running shoes, black and red wristbands and fingerless gloves. And, similar to Yuki, Brendan's emerald outfit. So, how do I look? he asked, Altaria chirped happily while Bayonet cupped his chin, he used Will O-Wisp to create a comical light bulb on top of his spiky head before grabbing the pair of goggles and placing it on the blonde's forehead. Naruto adjusted them, not bad, thanks Bayonet. Bane, he replied with a Cheshire grin. Corsola, the pink coral approved. Lydia watched as her adopted son laughed alongside his team, she took a glance at photo frame near on a nearby desk. A picture of her and Faust holding a baby Naruto with an innocent look as he sucked on a pacifier. By the way son, where exactly did you get Bayonet and Altaria? 
I mean they don't travel this far and even so the only place to find such Pokemon would be at the Sky Pillar. Lydia gained a tick mark, so that's where you've been going. She pinched Naruto's cheek, getting repeated apologies from the blonde as he flailed his arms in distress. And there's the Lydia I know Faust thought with a sweat-dropped chuckle. The following day, Little Root Town. Naruto had flown across the ocean on Altaria's back and had arrived in a matter of three hours, knowing his Pokemon needed to rest up he returned her to her luxury ball. For the majority of his arrival he had window shopped through most of the stores and began sightseeing the city, after all it's his first time away from Pacifidlog town and he would take advantage of it wholeheartedly. It was almost time for him to meet the professor so he asked the local law enforcement, excuse me. He asked a turquoise hair colored woman, anything I can help you with. Hi, can I get directions to Professor Birch's lab? Oh, thinking about becoming a trainer are you? Yup, I've got an appointment with him, hopefully he'll get both a Pokédex and a starter Pokémon. Hopefully, you already have a team? Jenny asked as she eyed the Ultra Ball around the boy's neck. Yeah, but it wouldn't hurt to add a new member to it. You make a valid point. What you've got to do is head straight down Main Street and take a left up down the road, his lab is located just outside the city. Arigato, he waved goodbye and ran to his objective. Professor Birch's lab, 20 minutes later. Naruto walked at his own pace up the forest path, he soon arrived at a large structure that radiated a peaceful aura. He gave a couple knock and was soon met with one of the researchers, Hi, my name's Naruto I have an appointment with Professor Birch he explained. Ah. We've been expecting you, sadly the professor has gone into the field and won't be back for a bit, you're more than welcome to stay here until he comes back. Naruto scratches his cheek, maybe I'll take a look around the forest, might even find him myself he said before trekking into the trees with his arms behind his head. The researcher shrugged and went back to work. The blonde smiled as he watched several beautifly, zigzagoon, and Talo pass by. He felt something bump into his leg and looked down. C dot, dot, the small acorn Pokemon ran past him and into a bush, before a blast of water sprayed his face. Okay he thought with a deadpan look before hearing multiple dog barks and followed their calls. In a matter of minutes he came across an open view where an older man wearing brown shorts, sandals and a dark blue shirt under an open lab coat, who was stranded on a tree branch as a ward of Puccina barked and scaled several inches up the tree. Not too far from him was a Trico and Mudkip holding their own against a Mightyena, well might as well, Corsola lets go. Releasing his water, rock type. Hit M with spike cannon. Corsola. Her body glowed white, pointed her horns at the pack and fired thin spiked missiles. The Puchiana yelped under the assault, which got the attention of the Mightyena and charged at the coral Pokemon. Iron defense. Stopping its fire. Corsola was now outlined in a white barrier and her skin now glowed dark gray. Mightyena sunk its fangs into the hardened skin and went comical wide, teary-eyed, now hit it at point blank with ancient power. Naruto commanded. Corsola's body glows white once more as she forms a silver spiraling energy ball and shoots it at the stammered bite Pokemon. Mightyena was sent flying back towards a tree which was knocked over upon impact, the Pokemon laid on the ground with swirl eyes to prove its defeated state. The Puccina rushed to their pack leader who weakly got up and barked a retreat. Great job Corsola, grabbing his dive ball and returning the cheering coral. You guys okay? He asked. Birch would have replied if he wasn't mesmerized by the boy's appearance, he looks, just like him he thought. I mean Faust did say he and Lydia adopted a kid but, there's no way he could be theirs, could he? I mean how many kids are named Naruto these days? He thought before climbing down the tree. Thanks for the save. It's always an accident that gets me into trouble with the Puccina, and now they've got a Mightyena he trailed off. Are you Professor Birch? He asked. Why yes, and you must be Naruto, come well talk more at the lab Birch spoke, attempting to empty his thoughts. Half an hour later, Birch now stood gobsmacked as he stared upon the blonde's team, for a beginner the boy already held three powerful Pokemon. He had explained that Bayonet and Altaria had evolved from Shepard and Swablu, their current condition proved they were well raised and battle ready. He watched as Naruto checked info on his newly acquired Pokédex. Bayonet. The marionette Pokémon. Bayonet generates energy for laying strong curses by sticking pins into its own body. 
It is said that a dark power will release if their mouths are ever to open. Corsola. The coral Pokemon. The horns on its head are known to glitter seven colors when they catch sunlight. Unlike natural coral that can take years to regrow, Corsola can regrow its horns within a single night. Altaria. The humming Pokemon. Altaria carries a refined set of vocal cords that allows it to sing or hum in a beautiful soprano voice that causes its listeners to experience dreamy content. Sugoi. I wonder what else Dex can do. A lot of things actually, besides tell the name, gender, and info of a Pokemon, it also provides the location of their natural habitat along with its battle moves and current level. Sweet, hum, maybe I can challenge the regional gym leaders, that'll surely make us stronger Naruto says, his Pokemon agreeing. Well then you should hurry up, the Ever Grande conference is coming up towards the end of year. If you can get all eight badges then you'll be able to compete against the region's strongest trainers Birch explains. Seriously, do I have to sign up or something? Naruto asks excitedly. Yes actually, here follow me the professor leads him to a small area with a white frame and camera. He asks the blonde to stand in front and smile as he flashes the camera. He soon asks Naruto a couple questions like birth date and place, last name, etc. Which surprisingly enough, did not know leaving the professor more certain of the boy's true parentage. Seconds later, his photo printed itself on a card and was handed to the young trainer, this is your trainer card, it not only instates you as a legal trainer it's also an entry pass to any regional league conferences, now since you've got this from me, I've enlisted you onto the rooster, getting the badges will be up to you now Birch said, handing over the card along with at least five extra poke balls. Arigato Naruto bows before slipping the card into his Sharpedo emblem wallet, returning his Pokemon, and leaving with a final goodbye. Birch walked over and hooked up his Extranciever to the communication device, Monado are you there? Good, listen you will not believe who I just saw. Route 102, Naruto held his map and while looking at a compass that came with his survival pack, okay now the first gym should be in. Rustboro City he only glanced at the map once and grimaced, it was gonna be a long walk. He could always ask Altaria to fly him there, but what fun would that be, he wanted to see all of Hoenn but, then again he only had about 5 months until the Ever Grande conference. He would just have to pick up the pace. The sun was getting ready to set, he guessed it would be a good time to set up camp for the night. But before that, maybe he could add a new Pokemon to his team. So off he went through the forest trees in search of a new companion. Hours passed and it was finally dark, Naruto slumped in defeat he had found a shroomish and would have caught it, if he had remembered to get more poke balls. Well so much for getting a new teammate he said but stopped upon hearing a small cry, what was that? He asked himself as he ventured into the wilderness once more. He came across a swarm of ninjask as they repeatedly struck a hollowed hole within a tree. One let out a screech which not only caused Naruto to hold his ear but hear a painful cry as well. Don't know what's going on but I am not about to stand here and let a Pokemon suffer, let's go Bayonet. Bayonet, use Nightshade. Bayonet grins as its eyes glow red and fire an ominous crimson electrical ray from its vision, effectively hitting the majority of the bug swarm. Here they come Naruto pointed out as the ninjask now turned their attention towards the duo, Shadow Sneak, then hit M with Sucker Punch. He commanded, knowing the moonlight gave brightness that shined a perfect shadow. The ghost type sunk into the silhouette and burst out giving each of them a violet-colored fist to their chest, knocking many out with the combo. The ninjask soon buzzed away knowing they couldn't win against the living marionette, that showed them he said getting a chest puff and grin from Bayonet. He walked towards the hole and took a peek, he gasped slightly when he saw a small white Pokemon with blue bowl-cut hair which split midway by two flat red horns down the center. Taking out his Pokédex, Ralts, the feeling Pokémon, Ralts can sense emotions with the horns on its head, due to its timid nature, Ralts will hide if it sense hostility. Naruto looked at the frightened Pokémon, it was badly injured, most likely by the Ninjask, he couldn't just leave it here by itself, checking its status Ralts was only level 2 with its only move being Growl. He reached out a hand which caused it to back up further into a tree, it's okay, I am not gonna hurt you we took care of those nasty ninjask, it's safe now he reassured. Ralts used its horns and detected a rather calm aura around the human, it slowly walked back and cautiously took his hand. Naruto carefully picked up the Pokemon and took it to his camp, 
Don't worry I got just the thing for those injuries, Baynet can you keep watch for the night? He asks. Baynet, net, Baynet, he saluted and sunk into the shadows. Naruto placed the psychic Pokemon down on his roll-up bed before digging through his pack, let's see here, some medical tape in, Nanab and Citri's berry he mashed the two berries together and added in some awakening potion to the mix before slowly and carefully whipping it across Ralt's injuries. It was a special ointment that numbs the help soothe the pain while he wrapped the Pokemon with medical tape. There that should do it he said as he placed his items back into his bag. Ralts poked its small fingers together with keeping her head down, she always thought of humans as scary and would give out many negative emotions which was something her species wasn't too fond of. Naruto felt a small tug on his shirt and looked down to see Ralts holding its arms up, like it was asking to be carried, do you, stay with us for the night? He asked, the Pokemon nodded with a small smile. Our Ralts she said, well, all right then he said. Not much later did the two fall asleep. Ralts clinging tightly to the human. The following day, Naruto had made it to Oldale Town with little to no disturbances at all, it was surprising when the Ralts from the night before followed him all the way. Due to her injuries, Naruto had decided to carry her all the way, hopefully the Pokemon Center wouldn't be too far. Along the way, it became clear that the little psychic Pokemon wanted to travel with him, considering that fact that she let herself get caught. Minutes of walking down the road he came across the local Pokemon Center, Hey Nurse Joy he greeted. Good day, is there anything I can help you with? The Pinkett asked. Hi, this little Ralts here got attacked by a swarm of ninjas. I know she feels better but I don't want to risk it. Oh dear, Ninjask are very hostile to those that invade their hive, your Ralts must have stumbled into them if they acted in such matter, were any of your other Pokemon injured? Nah. Nothing Baynet can't handle, ain't that right? He asked as a golden Cheshire grin materialized along with a pair of red eyes, the ghost type snickered childishly. Nurse Joy Sweat dropped slightly at the Pokemon's antics, well, don't worry well have Ralts up and walking in no time she said, gently taking the small Pokemon who held onto the blonde's shirt. Hey, don't worry Nurse Joy here will make you feel better, my remedies are good but not enough in a long run he explains as he patted her head reassuring the Pokemon as she was taken by Chansey into emergency room. Naruto turns to Baynet who gave him a questionable look, I know how you are with people and Pokemon so try go easy on her with pranks will ya he stated, getting a grin from the Pokemon as it crossed its fingers behind its back. Five hours later, Ralts was returned to the blonde looking more happy than ever, Naruto smiled as the small Pokemon gave him a hug before returning her into her heel ball. Unlike most trainers Naruto preferred to use more advanced poke balls or at least ones with special traits much like capsules he had for his other Pokemon. Corsola's dive ball was designed to work best on Pokemon that lived in the sea, Baynet's dusk ball worked best at night or in dark places, Altaria's luxury ball was built to make Pokemon feel more comfortable thus making them more friendly, Ralt's heal ball would instantly heal her wounds and status upon returning, and Rayquaza's ultra ball was designed to work against more powerful Pokemon. He had ordered in a timer ball, nest ball, repeat ball, quick ball, and one of Kurt's special apricorn poke balls, or more specifically, a friend ball. He had asked that they be delivered to Rustboro City's market under his name. Now with Ralt's fully healed and with the hour slowly approaching midday he wanted to cover as much grounds as he could, so off he went. Petalburg Woods. All right Ralts you ready? Naruto asked as he and his Pokemon faced off against a surskit. The timid Pokemon gave an unsure nod as the bug, water Pokemon used quick attack to nearly ram into Ralts. Surskit continued its assault, missing the psychic by an inch and causing her to panic and retreat back to her trainer. Ralts it's coming back this caused her to run faster, use reflect Ralts turned around and obeyed, creating a bright multicolored barrier which caused Surskit to bounce off of. You did it, Naruto cheered, Ralts opened her eyes behind her blue bowl cut hair and smiled. Surskit stood back on its legs and growled, it blurted out multiple clear bubbles from its mouth. Colliding with the barrier caused it to disperse, now use light screen. Swapping from blue barrier to a golden multi-hexagon glass-like wall. The bubble popped upon impact, you're doing great, now try to hit M with confusion. Ralts held her head as she attempted to preform the move ordered but found out that she still couldn't. Surskit took the chance and tackled her with a quick attack. 
The bug, water type saw an opportunity and fled from the duo. Naruto sighed and walked over to Ralts as she got up. Don't worry, you'll get it eventually. In the meantime we've got to get you an offense move, can't always depend on light screen and reflect he patted her head before taking her up on his shoulders. It had been a few days since the blonde's faithful encounter with the strangely colored Ralts, and like his current team, had attempted to help her learn new moves. Bayonet had dark pulse and shadow claw, Corsola had water pulse and magic coat, Altaria had heat wave and dragon pulse, and Rayquaza had earth power and aqua tail. Naruto was lucky enough to be carrying the two technical machines that would at least help his Pokemon in a long run, thought the two may not have been offense, it made up for with defense. He grabbed his Pokédex and began researching every bit of information on the psychic Pokemon, known moves by tutoring, alright let's try Signal Beam. Eight hours later, Naruto carried Ralts off to a nearby river as she had tired herself out, despite her nature, Ralts showed great amount of determination. Even if she was scared, she was willing to face her fears and stand up for her comrade, a trait that had gotten the respect of her fellow Pokemon. Naruto watched as Ralts scooped up water with her tiny hands and gulped it down. Chu, the two jumped as a thunderbolt struck not far from their location and resulting in a small-scale explosion. Electric type, he thought as he brought out his Pokédex and scanned the still lingering sparks. Talo, the tiny swallow Pokémon. Talo have fantastic speed and aerial abilities. In addition to this, they become more aggressive if they are attacked. When migrating in search for warm climates, it may fly over 180 miles per day. Well, that can't be right, he said as the info showed the Pokemon to be a flying type with no possible way to learn an electric type move, so he tried it once more. Pikachu. The mouse Pokemon. Exclusive to Pikachu is the ability to release electric discharges of varying intensity, at will, through electric sacs in its cheeks. This electric energy can be manipulated into a variety of techniques which are mostly used in battle, but which can be used to roast berries as well. A Pikachu, errant they only found in the Safari Zone, he asked himself as he turned to his released Pokemon, Ralts. She gave a shrug. Meh, you're right it probably belongs to some other trainer. Come on Rustboro City is just a few miles off, we can practice confusion on the way. Ralts, she replied before being taken up in Naruto's arms and continuing deeper into the woods. Meanwhile, one Ash, May, Max, Brock, and Pikachu ran as quickly as their legs could take them. Shortly after capturing the head Talo, the followers retaliated and were now attempting to release their imprisoned leader. You'd think they'd at least leave us alone after beating the ring leader. May shouted as birds began to peck at the group. Max had his eyes closed as he clutched his head in pain, continued running and not realizing that he had just separated himself from the group. Pikachu used Thunderbolt. Ash shouted over the sounds of his skull being pecked at. Pai Ka Chu. The yellow mouse sparked its red cheeks and discharged a bolt of lightning at the flock of birds. The Talo screeched in pain before falling to the ground with swirl eyes. You should have done that from the beginning May groaned getting a light chuckle from the raven-haired trainer. Uh, guys, where's Max? Brock asked. Ash, Pikachu, and May look around to see that her little brother had in fact disappeared. Max, she shouted, the group following suit. With Max. Ow, 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 leave me alone. The seven-year-old continued running as the now smaller flock continued pursuit. Max managed to open his eyes only to find himself running into a tree. He grunted as he found a small red liquid trailing down his head. The Talo got ready to use their wing attack when, signal beam, now. The birds were sent to ground by a multicolored ray. Max turned to his savior, a blonde haired teen along with his psychic Pokemon. The Talo shook off small waves of pain and flew back into the air. Signal beam was an bug type move and Naruto knew that it wouldn't do much damage to the birds, the Talo flew towards the duo using their wing attack. Ready Ralts, use Reflect. He ordered. Ralts, putting up a crystal clear barrier in which the birds slammed themselves into, all right, bring em down hard with thunder punch. He said. Ralts readied her fist as it glows yellow and sparks lightning. Ralts, having all Talo in one place, the lightning was able to chain throughout all birds, knocking them unconscious. Now that's what I like to see, excellent job Ralts picking her and holding her high. Ralts herself beamed at her trainer's words. Max sat speechless, 
He had seen many national battles on television and had only ever seen few trainers preform combos like that. Naruto walked up to the boy, you okay kid? Looks like you took a hard blow to the head he said wiping a bit of blood off his forehead. Why yeah, thanks for saving me. Ah, don't worry about it, now hold still for a moment the blonde brought up his bag and zipped out bandage roll. As he proceeded to clean Max's wounds, so what are you doing all the way out here, and by yourself no less? Oh, I am not alone I am with my older sister and two other friends, we got separated after the Talo started attacking us. I see, well let's see what we can do about finding your sister he said holding out his hand, in which Max took. Ralts you've done good, how about you get some rest he said, getting a nod from his Pokemon, Naruto clicked the button on his heel ball. A pale pink beam shot onto Ralts and returned her to her special poke ball, got a name. He asked, Max, I am from Petalburg City. Nice to meet you Max, I am Naruto from Pacifidlog Town. Max, May shouted, trying to get a response from her little brother. Like all brothers and sisters, they act like they don't care for each other but, in reality they do very dearly. Better get the others and help out too Ash suggested. Come on out Talo. Fortress you as well, Torchic you too. Pikachu dashed over to the three and explained the situation, Talo got upset due to the fact that his old crew would behave in such a matter before taking to the skies in search of the green-clad seven-year-old. Fortress and Torchic team up with their respected trainers and join in the search. Max, where are you? Pika, Naruto had attempted to make a call from his ex transceiver he had punched in Professor Birch's number and was hoping he could locate May's Pokédex from his lab. Calling her in person wouldn't help since Max held the poke nav. Surely enough, there wasn't a strong enough signal for the call to be made. Great, the line won't go through he looked at the sky to see that the sunset, might as well camp out here for the night, don't worry we can continue the search tomorrow he suggested. Max sighed and nodded. For the next five minutes the two had gathered up wood for their campground, all right, come on out Bayonet. Tossing his dusk ball into the air and bringing out his ghost-type Pokemon, this got an odd look from the seven-year-old. Use will o wisp, Bayonet, holding up a single finger, a small blue flame formed and launched it at the pile of wood, setting it ablaze. Now that's what I call a fire, have a Poffin Bayonet reaching into his bag and tossing out a Nanab Berry Poffin. Bayonet unzipped his mouth and quickly swallowed it before any of his malicious energy was unleashed. Max watched as the marionette happily munched on the soft treat, wow, you must have some pretty strong Pokemon he said. You bet they are, Bayonet here just so happens to be my starter Pokemon he explained, only several months and he had already gone and evolved from a Shuppet, he would have evolved sooner if I had him battle with some of the other wild Pokemon Bayonet gave a deadpan stare at his trainer who laughed sheepishly. So what about you Max? Me, no, I don't have any Pokemon, I wish I could, but my parents say I should wait before getting my starter. Well, you don't really need to be an official trainer to have a Pokemon. I know but, my parents, look how are you going to learn to handle a Pokemon, if you, don't, have, a Pokemon he pointed out, Max couldn't argue with that logic. Naruto sighed, before looking at the stars and thinking a, eh, what the hell he got up and dusted his pants. Come on it's still early, let's catch you a starter. Eh, are you sure? Yeah, that way you can at least you can have someone with you if y'all ever get separated again. Max beamed as he too got up and trailed behind the blonde trainer, leaving Bayonet to watch the campsite. Over the next 20 minutes, Naruto and Max trekked around the Petalburg woods, though not far off their campsite. They've spotted several Zigzagoon and a small pack of Puccina, then again there was that same Surskit that beat Ralts earlier that day, Ralts returned herself to her heel ball quickly after she was chosen. Minutes later, Max Naruto whispered while tapping his shoulder, what is it? They peeked through a bush to see a green lizard-like Pokemon. It had dark yellow rings around its eyes along with dark yellow lips and frills, it also had small ridges on its shoulders and a blue zigzag stripe on its midsection and finally a long skinny tail curled in a helix shape. It was currently munching on and Sherry Berry. Naruto checked his decks, Kecleon, the color swap Pokemon. Kecleon often hide by changing its color to match its surroundings in order to avoid being found. However, it cannot change the color of the red zigzag stripe about its midsection. Seems just about right, 
Let's go Ralts. K-E-C. Use signal beam. Ralts held her hands up and fired a multicolored stream on the surprised chameleon. Kecleon was pushed back against a tree, as it got back on its feet, the chameleon staggered, as if it were. All right it's confused, Ralts up close and personal with thunder punch. Ralts, thrusting her tiny fist forward and zapping Kecleon with a high voltage strike, ready max. He said tossing over one of five empty red and white pokeball. Ralts backed off as Kecleon was left roasted with lightning-based scorch marks as its foot twitched uncontrollably. R right he pressed the center button causing it to grow, poke ball, go. Max gave it a toss which ended up bonking Ralts on the head before hitting Kecleon, the ball shot a red beam and sucked the Pokemon inside. It shook three suspenseful times before it finally clicked, Max beamed as he ran and picked up his new and first Pokemon. Ralts tear streams running down her eyes as she held her tiny hands to her head, a comical band-aid on it. Sorry. My aim isn't that good he apologized as Naruto picked up the little psychic type. All right Max, if we've got time tomorrow it'll teach you how to battle he was cut off as the green clad eight year old hugged him, repeatedly thanking him. All right, all right, I get it, come on let's head ba. Ah, said boy perked up. That sounded like Ash, May, and Brock. If I didn't know any better, Bayonet is probably the source of it Naruto deadpanned, personally knowing the Pokemon's nature. He spent no time trailing behind the green-clad boy as he ran back towards the camp as they witnessed several lightning bolts fire from the distance. Near the campsite, few seconds earlier, Max, despite searching all day, May had refused to stop her search for her brother, Ash and Brock had done their part as well but neither were more at it than May was, the three had eventually returned their Pokemon due to their exhaustion. Pika, Ash turned to his starter, what's up Pikachu, Pika, Pika. The yellow mouse pointed at the small light within the darkness of the trees. A fire. Maybe it's Max. Let's check it out. Net. Bayonet stuck his head out of the shadows as he watched a trio of random strangers head towards his trainer's campsite. A Cheshire grin appeared on his face along with his now glowing red eyes, giving him a more sinister look as it snickered back into the shadows. Ash, May, Pikachu, and Brock entered to camp and were greeted by a jack in the box or in this case, a puppet in a bush. Bayonet, ah! They screamed as they fell back. Pikachu took this as an ambush and let out a thunderbolt, Bayonet used its shadow sneak to sink into the electric type's shadow. Pikachu looked confused before Bayonet rose up and flicked his forehead. Net, net, Bayonet. The ghost type levitated a few feet apart from Pikachu. Pika, what is that? May asked, still shaken as she grabbed her Pokédex, Bayonet. The marionette Pokemon. Bayonet generates energy for laying strong curses by sticking pins into its own body. It is said that a dark power will release if their mouths are ever to open. A ghost type. What's it doing here? Brock asked. Chu. Pikachu blazed his thunderbolt, however, Bayonet proved to have a greater advantage under the night sky. The marionette floated up into the air, whilst acting like an actual puppet to snap at non-existing bones in a frightening manner before snapping his glowing red eyes open. Pikachu freezes as he is surrounded by an ominous violet-red aura, the yellow mouse begins to tremble as he felt pain course through his body. Pikachu, Ash called out, as he watched Bayonet charge up a dark orb of malicious energy. Bayonet that's enough, they heard someone call out to towards the ghost type, in an instant the shadow ball was reduced to a cloud of confetti. Bayonet, net, he laughed at the bewildered looks from the group. May, the saw Max dash out of the trees and into his sister's arms, Max. Holding her brother tightly, before her eyes caught the bandages wrapped around his head. What happened? She asked. It's a long story, he replied sheepishly, while keeping his poke ball hidden behind his back. Not that long they turned to see a blonde-haired, black and red-clad teen enter the camp with a blue-haired Ralts in his arms. Bayonet glided over and perched himself on his shoulder, hope Bayonet didn't cause too much trouble. Naruto asked while eyeing the ghost type who only whistled with his head turned. No, no trouble at all the group muttered while glancing at the marionette. For the next 10 minutes Max explained the situation, from the Talo assault up until catching his first Pokemon, May repeatedly thanked Naruto for saving her brother. Pikachu, Kecleon, the chameleon Pokemon replied, having its own conversation with Pikachu and Bayonet. So Ash, 
You thinking about challenging the Rustboro City Gym? Yeah, once I've gotten all eight badges I am heading for the league. You too huh? Well since we're both heading for the Evergrande Conference, why don't we have an early battle? A battle you say? Ash replied with a gleam in his eye, Brock chuckled lightly, traveling with Ash for about two years, the boy still hasn't changed since they've met. You're on. Bayonet won't get lucky this time referring to the puppet's continuous use of Shadow Sneak and Hex. Naruto grinned at the boy's enthusiasm, tomorrow morning he responded, huh? Was all Ash could respond with. Well you did take on a flock of Talo and spent the entire day looking for Max, now that you found him I think we should just call it a day he suggested. He's right, and besides with a night's rest our Pokemon would be back at 100% Brock pointed out. Ash slumped out an okay which left the group with a laugh. Baby mime, don't you cry. Baby mime, dry your eyes. Rest your head close to my heart. Never to part, baby of mine. Little one when you play. Pay no heed what they say. Let your eyes sparkle and shine. Never a tear, baby of mine. If they knew all about you, they'd end up loving you too. All those same people who scold you. What they'd give just for the chance to hold you, from your head to your toes, you're not much, goodness knows, but you're so precious to me, sweet as can be, baby of mine, the quiet snores of a baby filled a lonely ship cabin, a woman with luscious crimson hair held the blonde haired infant close, good night, my little Naru Chan she whispered before kissing the baby's forehead, it was then that several audible booms were heard throughout the cruiser before a nearby explosion forced the woman to shield herself and her child as the spreading flames left the baby crying. Images flashed, the mother held onto a ledge through a large hole, an older blonde-haired man reaching out to her and the baby. More images flashed, the child flailed beneath the cold and dark pressures of the ocean. Not before catching a glance of green wingless dragon, whose runes glowed bright yellow. One last image flashed, the baby crying heavily as it flew through the stormy clouds within the dragon's grasp. Naruto's eyes snapped open, he held onto his chest as he sat up, his breathing was heavy but soon calmed. Just a dream he muttered before looking up into the night sky, or was it? So many questions about his life before Pacifidlog Town were beginning to surface, mainly about his birth parents. Based on what he knows, they definitely didn't abandon him but, an event occurred that had caused their separation only question was, what? The blonde trainer continued to stare at the sky, not being able to go back to sleep. It was about five minutes later when he noticed a peculiar star shine brighter than the rest, it then got brighter, and brighter. What in the name of he muttered before the star shot overhead and into a lake, causing a large splash upon impact. Ash, Brock, May, and Max grunted and turned in their sleep, all except Pikachu whose ears stood up when it heard the unnatural wind change. Pika, noticing the blonde get up from his bed roll and dash into the woods, Pikachu took a glance at his sleeping trainer before curiously following Naruto. Petalburg Woods, Lake, five minutes later. Naruto stopped as he darted out of the trees, he swatted away the leaves and twigs off his clothing before he heard the bushes move. Altaria, I choose you. He went from standing to back laying upon releasing the phoenix from her capsule, Altaria she exclaimed happily. Naruto chuckled sheepishly before noticing Pikachu hop out of the bushes. Pika, Pikachu, what are you doing here? Pika, Pikachu, you were curious about where I was going. Pika, before he could respond the waters behind them exploded upwards, Naruto turned around and looked up alongside both Pokemon as the silhouette of a humanoid figure behind the waters as they slowly dripped down onto the lake. Levitating high above the water's surface was definitely not human, was it a Pokemon? It had skinny legs that came down to a point, its upper legs had a single segmented blue stripe that went down to its knees. Its entire body was orange-red in color, excluding its blue mask-like face and two of four tentacle-like arms. It also had a vertically lined abdomen, as well as trapezoid-shaped ears on the side of its head, and a violet crystalline orb in the center of its chest. Naruto brought out his Pokédex and scanned the mysterious Pokémon before him, no data found. At this the blonde gasped ever so slightly, both at what his device had said and because the Pokemon was now mere inches away from his face. It was needless to say that Naruto was a little creeped out by this unknown Pokemon. It tilted its head ever so slightly, 
almost as if it was trying to read the blonde of any emotion or possible action. Naruto noticed Pikachu's cheeks charging electricity and Altaria glowing an ethereal orb from her chest. He quickly but cautiously held his hands up, prompting them not to fire a thunderbolt or dragon pulse. The orange-skinned alien however sensed the hostility and surprised the three by morphing its body into a completely different form. The lines on its legs were no longer segmented and ran down most of its leg length with a single large spike on each knee and its tentacles no were now whip-like with razor tips. Its trapezoid ears were now triangular and had single spike on the top of its head, most its orange skin was now gone and revealed to have an even more black-lined inner body, with several more surrounding its crystalline orb. Uh oh The Pokémon held its whip-like appendages close to the orb in its chest and formed a multicolored energy ball, closely resembling a plasma ball. Dodge it! Naruto shouts, not needing to be told twice Pikachu and Altaria hit the deck as the attack flew overhead. The trio turned to see the damage caused by the unknown move, it had leveled down many trees and tore open the earth beneath within its blast radius. That move, it wasn't Zap Cannon Naruto thought as he turned to see the Pokémon levitate into the air, the blonde was indeed nervous about facing this mysterious Pokémon but was also felt something else crawl up his spine, it wasn't fear, was it, excitement. You two ready for this? Pika, Altaria. Naruto scanned Pikachu with his Pokédex and brought up his move list, then set the decks to record, all right then, Pikachu Thunderbolt. Altaria Heat Wave, he commanded. Pai Ka Chu, the yellow mouse zapped out a trail of lightning which was followed by winds of flames. They watched as the Pokémon morphed once more, its body now thick and bulky, its legs now wide and flat with a bluish-green spot on its knees. Its once whip-like tentacles were now flat and broad, while its head was seemingly infused with the rest of its body, giving it a helmet-like appearance. The attacks landed, however the Pokémon was left unfazed and without a scratch, so, it's got a defensive mode as well huh, then let's bring out the big guns. Pikachu climb aboard Altaria, when you're close enough blast it with thunder, Altaria double the output with Dragon Pulse. The two Pokémon gave a high in their native tongue before taking to the skies. The Pokémon saw them coming and its body was suddenly surrounded by a violet aura, its eyes glue the same color and stopped Altaria from proceeding. It no psychic, he thought before the phoenix was shot back towards the ground, Altaria. Pikachu, Naruto rushed the two who were steadily getting up from the hard blow. The orange-skinned alien tilted its head slightly, wondering what the blonde-haired trainer was doing. It detected an unknown emotion, radiating off him, worry. It didn't know why but, it interested it rather greatly. You guys okay, Alta, Pikachu, both replied, slightly dizzy from the impact. Let's give it another go then. Different approach though the Pokemon above morphed back to its attack form and was about to ready the same move from before when, Altaria used Sing. Redirecting its impeccable singing voice, the invading Pokemon began to feel slightly droopy. Its eyes were starting to feel heavy, and it was now fighting to stay awake. All right time for phase two, Bayonet come on out. Bayonet. Bayonet use will o wisp. Pikachu hit M with thunder wave. Bayonet raised its tri-pronged fingers into the air and blazed three mystical fire balls to life which he then launched at his newfound opponent, Pikachu followed suit as he sparked out a thin stream of electricity. The Pokemon, despite its sudden drowsiness it managed to shift back into defensive mode and take the hits dead on. The orange alien felt a jolt of electricity pulse throughout its body, making it harder to move its body than it already was, the skin melting sensation wasn't helping much either. Bayonet plant a curse on it Naruto ordered, Bayonet's eyes glow red before taking a pin from his tail and stabbed himself in the chest. The alien felt a sharp pain in its chest which quickly spread onto its arms and legs. The pain soon heightened to the point where it reverted back to its original form, now. Thunderbolt. Dragon Pulse, and Hex. Naruto declared. Seeing the incoming attack, the Pokemon forced its tentacles to its chest and blasted its signature attack. The attacks collided and were quickly overpowered by the multicolored orb, Corsola, come on out and use Mirror Coat. Flinging his dive ball, out popped the living coral. Corsola. Her body became coated in a white reflective color and stood in front of her friends. Once the orb struck, Corsola was struggling to hold her ground as the attack was pushing her back several inches. Pikachu, Bayonet, 
and Altaria rushed to her side and aided help push the orb back with Thunderbolt, Nightshade, and Heat Wave. Naruto noticed the orb getting larger, they won't be able to get away from the blast radius, unless, Corsola, lean back and let it pass over you. Naruto shouted. The living coral gulped but did as commanded, Pikachu and the others stopped their assault and pulled Corsola back for support letting the attack fly overhead. Whoa. Naruto ducked to the side as the attack exploded onto the forest behind them, causing many of the local Pokemon to flee in fright. Boom. Asterisk. W what was that? Mei stated, rubbing her eyes. Don't know, but it sounded close. Guys, where's Pikachu? Ash asked. The others looked around as well. Naruto's gone too Max pointed out, before several more explosions echoed throughout the forest. Let's go. Ash stated as he dashed into the forest. May, Brock, and Max following suit. Naruto kneeled down besides Corsola who was badly injured by a use of Psychic, Bayonet, Pikachu, and Altaria weren't faring well either. The mysterious Pokemon had yet to receive any damage, their only advantage was its paralysis and burn status, sadly Altaria's song wasn't able to put it to sleep. Naruto gripped the Ultra Ball around his neck, no choice then, you guys take a rest, leave the rest to him he stated. Pika. Pikachu was slightly confused on who he was, but the looks on the other Pokemon seemed to be more relieved. Rayquaza, I choose you. Snapping the Ultra Ball off his neck he gave it toss and opened a bright light which shot up into the sky, the beam of light took form into a colossal green, wingless dragon. Rayquaza's runes glowed bright yellow and gave a earth trembling roar, the Pokemon before them felt intimidated by its new opponent and morphed to its fourth and final form. Its body going from orange to sleek gray and now having only a single tentacle on each side of its body, one red the other blue. The back of its head was now elongated to a point and its appendages were narrow, giving it a more agile appearance. It soon sped downwards towards the lake, Rayquaza used extreme speed. Surrounding itself in a white and clear aura, Rayquaza blurred from existence. The Pokemon was suddenly tackled into the water causing a large-scale splash of water. The two exchange blows beneath the dark waters before shooting back up towards the surface. The alien Pokemon let out a loud static-like cry, causing Rayquaza to stop in place, what? Naruto muttered, Rayquaza wasn't moving, it almost looked like it was struggling to do so. Rayquaza growled at its opponent, knowing it had transferred its status problem to him, the Pokemon would have attacked then and there if it hadn't felt painful sensation within its chest, Bayonet's curse must be taking effect. Rayquaza, now's your chance, hit it with Hyper Beam. The green dragon opened its jaws and formed a white, red ball of energy, taking up several smaller orbs into it before blazing out a powerful beam. The alien had only managed to morph halfway into its defense form upon impact, sadly it wasn't enough to shield it from Rayquaza's Hyper Beam and had half of its body obliterated. White flares sparked from its destroyed half as it slowly regenerated, Rayquaza flexed his claws, knowing that he was temporarily relieved from his paralyzing status and with his tail, slammed the alien towards the ground, creating a dust cloud. Naruto and the others shielded their eyes from the dust before he cautiously approached the downed Pokemon. Its eyes were closed, the damage from both Rayquaza's Hyper Beam and Bayonet's Curse must have taken its toll on the Pokemon. He rummaged his bag for one of the four only available Poke Balls he carried, but a certain capsule caught his eyes. It was crimson red in color with a single black dented line around the center. Where did I he smiled, thanks for the birthday present mom, all right then, cherish ball, go. A multicolored beam shot out and absorbed the Pokemon into the capsule, Rayquaza flew down and watched alongside the others as the ball shook. Comma, 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 ding, asterisk, Naruto bent down and picked up the cherish ball, what, are you? He asked. The others gave him a questionable look. Pikachu. They heard Ash call. Naruto quickly returned Rayquaza to his Ultra Ball and reclipped it to his necklace. The group ran out of the trees to see the damage done to the area around them. Pikachu, are you alright? Ash asked the yellow Pokemon. Pika. Hi. What happened? Brock asked. I take it you guys didn't see the meteorite that crashed he received a no from the group. It turned out to be a Pokemon. It seemed passive at first but then attacked us, it took all of us to bring it down Naruto showed them the Cherish Ball. Whoa, wonder what kind of Pokemon was it? Max pondered. I recorded it into my Pokédex, 
but maybe the professor might have more information on it showing the four the various images recorded from the fight. The attack it kept using did a good job of intimidating them. The next day, Rustboro City, Pokemon Center. The five waited in the main lobby while their Pokemon were being rejuvenated, in the meantime they decided to contact Professor Oak. Comma, 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 Ash, how are you doing this fine day? We're doing great. I am just about to challenge the gym once our Pokemon are healed up Naruto tapped his shoulder, oh yeah, hey professor I've got someone here who wants to talk to you Oak nodded and motioned the boy to step forward. When he did, Oak nearly had a heart attack when he saw the blonde, he looks, just like him. It's good to meet the famous Pokemon professor my name's Naruto this caused his heart to skip a beat, and I wanted to talk to you about an unknown Pokemon I captured just yesterday he stated. Unknown Pokemon. Yes, it emerged from a fallen meteorite and put up a good fight, I've recorded most of it into my Pokédex. An unknown Pokémon from outer space. Extraordinary, can you by chance, send me the data he asked? Yes, of course Naruto plugged in his decks to the communication drive and transferred the recorded data. Various images showing the Pokémon's different forms appeared on a nearby screen, he quickly began to analyze the data for anything in particular. About 20 minutes later he came back to the screen, so sorry for the wait, but this is simply amazing, you my boy have discovered a new Pokemon Oak stated excitedly. New Pokemon Ash stated, yes, Ash I've contacted my colleagues within the other regions and none have ever seen a Pokemon like this. Whoa Naruto muttered, you think there could be more out there? May asked, it's possible, this Pokemon might have accidentally entered our planet's atmosphere and crash landed but there is still a chance that more exist in deep areas of space he explained. So, what do we call it? Naruto asked. I believe that right belongs to you Brock pointed out, making everyone look at him, you were the one to capture it so by all means it's his right. You captured it, my boy you must record everything. Think of how much we can learn from this new Pokemon. Alright, alright I'll see what I can do. Great, now the only question is, what are you going to name it? Everyone turned to Naruto who cupped his chin, after several seconds of pondering, he had his answer, Deoxys. The turbines of a Boeing 747 to 400 roared as it soared across the skies, within the first class passenger seats four peculiar people sat together. Two were looking out the window in awe as flocks of Pidgeotto flew just beneath the plane, do you think Nichan has any strong Pokemon? The red-haired girl asked her twin, who shrugged in response, he of course had no idea but sure it couldn't help to assume, after all their supposed long lost brother had captured what seemed to be a unknown yet powerful Pokemon. Next to them sat a blonde haired man and a long crimson haired woman, the two were nervous, enough to actually cause an upchuck. They have done a background check with Professor Birch and even had a blood test to confirm that Hoenn's new trainer was in fact their legitimate child. Flashback, grr. An electric pup rolled on the floor with a Vulpix kit as the two bit their tiny fangs into each other's fur, soon enough a Manetric and Ninetales grabbed both newborns and pulled the two apart. Both twins crawled up to the Pokemon and played with them, the Vulpix enjoyed getting her ear scratched while Electric attempted to playfully bit the hand that was petting it. Vulpix. The Fox Pokemon. When the weather increases in temperature, they will expel flames from their mouths to prevent their bodies from overheating. In the wild, Vulpix will feign an injury to escape predators. Katero what does yours say? The boy flips open his Pokédex. Electric. The lightning Pokémon. The electricity found in Electric's body is obtained from the friction that occurs when it runs at incredible speeds. Sugoi. Minato Namikaze smiled as his children played with the newborn Pokémon, he went back to his PC and continued decrypting data on strange alphabetical Pokémon. The phone rang and was about to make a grab for it, I've got it. He heard his wife from the other room. Hello, Minato are you there? Hey there Birch, yes he's here, still busy with the unknown, markings. Good, you will not believe who I just saw. Mew, I wish, no, no, no I mean, Kashina just listen, I think I just met your son. What are you talking about, Keitero is right here and Minato's still using the PC. Kashina. I met Naruto. Minato managed to decrypt a small portion of the data file when everyone snapped their heads at the sound of plates breaking and a phone hitting the wall. Kashina, Mom, 
Kashina had slumped to the floor upon hearing her deceased first child, Minato rushed to her side, Dad, what's wrong with Mom? Minato held her hand as she breathed quickly and heavily, she was having another panic attack. Kashina, Kashina are you there? One of the twins picks up the phone. Who is it Ray? It's Professor Birch. Naruto Minato heard Kashina whisper, he frowned and took the phone from his daughter, Birch you better have a damn good reason. He's alive. What? Minato, your son Naruto, is alive. End of flashback. Kashina had been having anxiety attacks from recalling the events that led to their separation, Minato remembered it, she had refused to stop crying over their son for weeks and when she finally did, she was almost completely void of happiness, she barely ate nor slept, she would have nightmares about it for the years to come. Minato and the rest of his colleagues had taken most of their time off work to help her through the tragedy. It was about eight years later that they discovered that she was pregnant once more, the twins Rei and Keitaro were born within the year, both in which have filled the void in Kashina's tattered heart. However, mentioning the name of her first child was considered a taboo in the family as it would cause another panic attack. After discovering that Naruto was still alive, the two parents had set up a trip for Hoenn, they of course were nervous about meeting their long-lost child. What if he didn't accept them? What would they say to him? Where have they been for the past 14 years? These were questions that continued to phase through their heads. Mom. Dad. Look. Ray shouted causing both parents to peek out the window. Two jet plane-like Pokemon flew close just several feet away from the plane itself, one was blue and slightly larger than its smaller red counterpart. What kind of Pokemon are they? Keitaro asked. Minato who went sparkly-eyed spoke out. They are the Eon duo. The blue one is Latios and red is Latias, what a rare sight the two then zoomed past the mechanical flying machine and onto a far-off island. Whoa the twins mused, Rustboro City, many spectators mused in excitement and children stared in awe, two trainers stood apart from each other with grins plastered on their faces, this will be a two-on-two -two battle, are both trainers ready? Brock announced. Ready, Ash and Naruto shouted, begin, Talo, I choose you. Ash tossed his Pokeball high into the air, the capsule burst open and out of the white light came the tiny swallow Pokemon. Come on out Ralts, Naruto spun the heel ball on the tip of his finger before giving it a toss, out of the silver pink light came the petite psychic type. Play Pokemon Colosseum Ost, Trainer Battle 1, Ralts, Ash brought out his Pokedex, Ralts, the feeling Pokemon, Ralts can sense emotions with the horns on its head, Due to its timid nature, Ralts will hide if it senses hostility. Why don't you go first? Ash Naruto suggested. Max snapped his head up when the blonde made the suggestion. He remembered the attacks that Ralts had preformed prior to joining the team. With the exception to Signal Beam, Ralts only had short ranged attacks. Well, okay then, Talo, use quick attack. The small bird obeyed orders and lunged itself at Ralts, a silver trail cast behind its wings as it sped through the air. Ralts counter with reflect, Ralts, instantly shooting her tiny arms forward did a multicolored materialized in front of her, Talo opened his wings to reduce his speed but was less than fortunate as he slammed into the barrier. Point blank, Naruto grinned while Ash paled, Talo get out of there, he shouted. Use thunder punch, Ralts, her right fist was encased in lightning, gaining many mixed results from the crowd. The children were in awe while several knowledgeable adults wondered how the psychic type knew that particular move. Talo flew up and narrowly avoided the fist, no you don't, Ralts bring it back down with confusion. Ralts felt unsure but attempted to preform her first psychic move, to her surprise, she felt a power surge course through her body before she glowed a mystical blue aura. Talo stopped dead in his tracks as he too was surrounded in a similar glow and was forced back down into the ground. Talo. Ash cried out, said bird Pokemon struggled under his opponent's grip before he was picked up and flung into a nearby fountain. Just as Taylor was about to hit the water, Ralts lost her control and released the bird of her telekinetic grasp, giving him enough time to evade the stone water geyser. Ralts is pretty strong isn't she may she stated, Max nodded in agreement. Doesn't look like she has complete control over her psychic ability Brock mused, even so, this battle will be a very difficult one for Ash if he's not careful May looked at him. What do you mean? Ralts has an electric type move, Thunder Punch, which is super effective against a basic flying type like Talo for instance, 
The fact that his attacks are physical it raises the chances of Ralts getting him at close range. Ash will just have to think quick, otherwise Naruto will get him again with confusion. Taylo use wing attack. Taylo. His wings shined brightly and zoomed towards Ralts at high speed. Ralts dodge it. Upon hearing those words, she panicked and ran from the bird. Taylo swooped down. Each time he flew past Ralts he almost narrowly strikes her. Ralts use signal beam. Quickly turning she fired in Taylo's general direction. Ralts. Taylo easy maneuvered past the multicolored beam and picked up speed as it charged Ralts, causing her to pick up speed as she fled away from the bird. Sadly, Taylo was slightly faster. Ralts quickly used thunder punch. Giving a fist full of lightning, she gave it a thrust as Taylo was but inches away from her. Taylo dodge it, Ash shouted. Sadly the bird was too close for him to move away. Taylo chirped in pain as bolt after bolt coursed through his body. Unfortunately for Ralts, this didn't stop Taylo's high speed wing attack as he rammed into her. This caused a small electrical explosion. Ralts, Taylo. The two trainers shouted, all spectators leaned in to see the outcome. The dust cloud dispersed, allowing them to see the downed Pokemon, both swirl eyed and slightly burned with static scorch marks. Both Pokemon are unable to battle, the first round ends in a draw. The match will be determined in the next and final round, Brock declared. Many, though wanted to see a winner of the first round, cheered for both Pokemon, great job Taylor, return. Ash recalls his Pokemon in his Poke Ball. Naruto walks over and picks up Ralts, you did great out there, take a rest, you deserve it he said with a caring smile, taking up his heel ball, with a light pink beam, Ralts was returned to her capsule. Naruto glanced back to Ash's group, Brock had an impressed look while Max had one of all, his sister, was that a tint of red on her cheeks. She avoided his gaze, is something wrong May? She heard her brother ask, nothing, nothing's wrong, she quickly responded. All right then Ash, round two. The raven-haired boy grinned, Pikachu you're up. He called his starter Pokemon. Pika, the yellow mouse dashed onto the battlefield with a determined look on his face, Pikachu huh? All right I assume you want a rematch, Bayonet I choose you. Detaching his dusk ball from his belt, he let out his own starter Pokemon. Bayonet, he levitated in the air, eyes glowed red all the while giggling like a toddler, this managed to creep the crowd out. Round 2, begin, Bayonet use will owe wisp. With a Cheshire grin, Bayonet snapped his fingers and allowed six blue fireballs to form from his fingertips. Pikachu dodge it, spending no time disagreeing. Pikachu dashed around the battlefield whilst narrowly avoiding the missile speed fireballs. Pikachu zap him with thunder wave. Chu, blitzing a frail stream of electricity, it managed to push through a fireball and towards his ghostly opponent. Bayonet dodge with shadow sneak. Acknowledging, the marionette sunk into his own shadow and let the bolt pass overhead. The ghost type then rose back up and stretched out its shadow until it connected with Pikachu's, who was looking down in confusion. He was then caught off guard by a jack in the box, Bayonet. Sending and shadowy uppercut from below. Come on Pikachu, use Thunderbolt. Counter with Shadow Ball. Ba. Net. Pika. Chu. Pikachu raged his signature attack, sparks blitzing from his red circular cheeks while Bayonet charged an orb of malicious energy, both fired their respected moves. The specters watched in awe as both attacks fought for dominance, you can do it Pikachu. The mouse increased his electrical output and forced the shadow ball back a few inches, Bayonet fight back with Shadow Barrage. Naruto declared. Shadow Barrage, Brock asked himself, many wondering the same thing. Bayonet's grin spread wider as he stretched out a palm towards his shadow ball and rapidly fired multiple, smaller, yet weaker variant S of the original. The shadow ball grew in size and pushed back into place as Bayonet continued to fire more shadow balls into the ever-growing sphere of destruction. Soon enough the density of both attacks hit maximum power and went unstable, causing the battle's second explosion. It's been fun Ash, but I am bringing out the big guns now. Ash felt a bead of sweat trail down his face, from what both Max and his decks had stated, Bayonet's signature move curse, laid a life-draining hex on an opponent which could only be cancelled if the either user or target is defeated. Knowing that Bayonet was one of Naruto's stronger Pokemon, the battle could be over before it began. Bayonet used Dark Pulsal, 
Everyone gasped and took a step back when Bayonet's eyes glowed red and unzipped his mouth, an orb of spinning cycles materialized in its ragdoll like mouth. Naruto smiled, he didn't get to show off Bayonet's strongest attack, and felt the need to do so. Bayonet, the marionette blasts a beam of violet and black intertwined circles, seeing it shoot forward at an alarming rate, Ash decided to fight back, Pikachu hit him again with Thunderbolt. Static sparks out of his cheek pouch and fired his signature move. Both attacks clashed once more and Pikachu's Thunderbolt was dominated within seconds, wah. Pikachu was blasted back several feet, looking worst for wear. Zipping his mouth shut, Bayonet glided down towards the electric type, surprising nearly everyone present when he helped the yellow mouse up to his feet. Despite his behavior, Bayonet knows when to fight fair from time to time. Bayonet, he sunk down into his own shadow and rose up from within Naruto's, now back on his side of the field. Pikachu took a few steps forward, his lightning pouch sparking, Pikachu. Ash muttered. Naruto smiled, looks like he wants to see this till the end, all right, Bayonet you're ready. Net, he responded with a grinning fist pump, Brock smiled it seemed both trainers and Pokemon shared similar traits. Ash and Pikachu with their determination to never give up, and from what he could see, Naruto and Bayonet to relish the challenge. That's how you want it buddy, let's do it, Pikachu used thunder. Bayonet, dark pulse now. Pikachu expelled an enormous amount of electrical power taking form of a lightning based armor as it shot up into the sky. Bayonet unzipped his mouth and concentrated the unlimited amount of dark energy coursing within his body, into a single point within his mouth. With a battle cry, Pikachu charged the marionette who had opened fired on his opponent. Dark energy crashed against the thunder-based armor, Pikachu grit his teeth in pain. Despite having lightning protect him, Bayonet's dark pulse was strong enough to penetrate through it. He however could not afford to have it slow him down and continued to plow his way through energy beam. Bayonet Naruto warned, the ghost type saw what Pikachu was doing and knew what was gonna happen next, after all, his trainer did help him and his team defeat Rayquaza. Pikachu was only meters away, shadow sneak. Bayonet zipped his mouth shut and sunk into Pikachu's shadow, Pikachu. Ash went wide-eyed as Bayonet rose up, Bayonet, use shadow claw. Bayonet's arm was then coated in a violet outline, black aura which then outstretched and slammed Pikachu to the ground, cancelling his assault and creating a dust cloud. End battle theme sequence. The dust cleared to show Pikachu's unconscious form, winner by knockout, Naruto and Bayonet. Brock announced, the spectators burst into cheers. Now that's how it's done. Naruto high-fived Bayonet who giggled like a toddler. You okay there Pikachu? Ash asked. Pika, Pika, he responded weakly, you did good out there the raven-haired boy complimented. Damn right he did he turned to see Naruto. I've got to admit you actually scared me with that last move he helped Ash up along with Pikachu. It was reckless but, would have definitely taken down Bayonet if it hit said ghost type hovered over to Pikachu who was currently being held by Ash and held up a fist, taking the gesture, Pikachu fist bumped Bayonet. Thanks Ash replied, Naruto raised an eyebrow, for the compliment. He asked, nope, I may have lost, but this will only make us stronger for the next battle. Naruto smiled, that's the spirit Ash. Guys that was awesome, Max shouted as he rushed the two, the way Bayonet used Shadow Barrage and then with Pikachu and his Thunder Armor, then Ralts with her Thunder Punch and how both she and Talo knocked each other out, it was totally wicked. The boy was close to hyperventilating. Max slow down, you're gonna hurt yourself May stated. He is right, though I've never heard of a move called Shadow Barrage could you explain? Brock asked. It's not an actual move, it's more of a combo that me and Bayonet came up with, by having him decrease the amount of power within his original Shadow Ball he can rapidly fire weaker ones instead, hence the name Shadow Barrage. Whoa, that sounds awesome, Ash stated. Well guys, let's head over to Pokemon Center, we are here for our first badge errant we. Naruto and Ash stood with horror struck upon their faces, just outside of a boulder-like compound they stood before the Rustboro Gym. C closed, but why? Ash shouted, causing a scene, Naruto sat in a corner, we traveled so far to not battle, our efforts, were all for nothing, what has this world come to May, Max, and Brock sweat dropped at their antics. You know, we could come back after noon, 
I mean she will be back around that time both trainers snap their attention max. How do you know that? Well, there's a sign right there that tells the hours available. Rustboro City Pokemon Gym. Leader. Roxanne the Rock Loving Honors Student. Available 7 a.m. to 9.30 a.m., 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. Humph, how'd we miss that? Naruto asked. Ah, but I wanna battle now, I can't wait another three hours. Nothing we can do Ash, might as well find something to pass the time Brock stated. He's right, might as well go sightseeing, Max, may you wanna come with? Yeah, May and Max agreed, before taking off. Brock sneaked away to buy more supplies leaving Ash and Pikachu by themselves. Guess it's just the two of us. Pika, one hour later. Okay now to add the final touch, and perfect. Naruto look Ralts evolved. What? Naruto dashed into the store and skid to a stop, into a glacion. May finished, holding up Ralts whose blue hair was now combed to match that of a glacion, along with cosplay ears and tail. R. Ralts. Max laughed while Naruto face vaulted, don't do that he muttered, hoping Ralts really had evolved. However, May's little cosplay gave him an idea that might come in handy for the gym battle, after browsing about the tree left the shop with their stomachs growling. The four stopped by a large tower, or rather the local tourist attraction, the three met up with Brock and soon followed by Ash and Pikachu for lunch. Taking a detour around the city the group visited many more stores but stopped when Ash went overboard on souvenirs, so what time is it now? Ash asked. Checking his extrance I ever, it's, not even close, we've got a good two and a half hours before the gym opens Naruto stated. Ah, uh, I am so bored, I wanna battle the gym leader. Ash complained. Hey me too but what other choice do we have, you know what instead of complaining it, we should be training for the upcoming battle. I mean it's kinda obvious that she uses rock-type Pokemon and the only ones you've got is Pikachu and Talo. Ash flinches, he was right, this was almost exactly like his first gym battle in Kanto. Back then he only had Pikachu, Pidgeotto, and Butterfree, which none could have actually defeated Brock's Onyx in their current level. I can't believe I hadn't thought of that, where am I gonna find a water-type before the battle? Well, you could always teach Pikachu Iron Tail. Iron Tail, but Pikachu isn't a steel type. Pika, he doesn't have to be Ash Brock intervened, yeah there are some moves that can be tutored despite their type Max said. R really, sure, weren't you paying attention during our match? I taught Ralts Thunder Punch and Signal Beam, both electric and bug type moves Ash pondered for a bit, so learning Iron Tail could give us an advantage. Damn right it will, now if you excuse me, we've got some serious training to do. R Ralts. She held on to her trainer as he dashed off and out of the city, but not before bumping into a twin-tail brunette, wearing a dark blue blouse and pink stockings. Oh sorry about that he apologized before continuing his trek, leaving Ash to deal with. Miss Roxanne, did you see that, his Ralts had different colored hair. One of the many children following her pointed out excitedly. The woman herself smiled, though of course she herself had never encountered a shiny Pokemon. Petalburg Woods three miles off Rustboro City. All right Ralts, he'll be bringing out a partner for today's session. Ralts, curious she was, wondering who would join her. Was it Bayonet, Altaria, Corsola, or was it this Rayquaza of the others talked about? Come on out, Deoxys. Unclipping his cherished ball and gave it a toss, out of the multicolored rays shot out the orange-blue DNA Pokemon. Levitating off the ground in its initial form, stared at his new trainer with near emotionless eyes. R. R. Ralts Deoxys turned to the petite psychic type, intimidating her more than she already was. Ralts, meet Deoxys, Deoxys this is Ralts Naruto introduced, Ralts quickly hid behind her trainer while Deoxys rose an invisible eyebrow. Deoxys, I know it's a little sudden, but now that you're part of the team, I would very much appreciate it if you were to cooperate with us, along with the rest of your teammates. The DNA Pokemon tilted his head, while he understood what he was being asked, working together wasn't really something his race performed it was something that very few had attempted. Usually when it does happen their personal missions tend to result in success, if that was true then it couldn't hurt to work together with the same Pokemon that defeated him. Hell, maybe he'll even get a rematch against that green dragon. However, what caught his attention was the name the boy had given him. Duh. 
Ox, YS. His race never really a name to go by, he didn't understand its meaning, but he liked it nonetheless. He floated motionlessly for nearly a minute before nodding his head in agreement, thank you Naruto said with a grateful smile. Since Ralts already knows this, today we'll be challenging the Rustboro City Gym, I plan on teaching the both of you a new move that should help us during the battle, hopefully this will help me learn a little something about you he spoke towards Deoxys. Okay then, Ralts, don't worry he's not gonna hurt you he lightly pushed her towards Deoxys, she gulped and slowly walked over to his side. Stretch out your limbs and get ready, it'll be teaching ya ice punch. Meanwhile, Rustboro City, Pokemon Academy, one hour earlier. Alright Pikachu, that's the way to do it. Ash cheered as his partner electrocuted a Zigzagoon. Zigzagoon is unable to continue, Ash and Pikachu are the victors many of the spectators were impressed by the trainer's victory, but thought he could use some improvement in certain areas. From what he had learned, the instructor of the beginner's class was the none other than the gym leader herself. Sadly due to her job, Roxanne had offered Ash to postpone their battle for two days, of course Ash preferred to have his battle then and there but having remembered what Naruto had told him, Iron Tail would give him the upper hand in their battle. So with two days to train, he set off to do just that, however this also gave him time to battle some of the students from the more advanced classes. Phew, that was fun, great job out there he shook hands with his opponent, you too. Alright Pikachu, let's head out, we've got a perfect iron tail before the match. Pika, the mouse saluted, hours passed for both trainers, it was nightfall and both had failed to realize it. Naruto squeezed several sea trees berries into a fine juice and handed them over to his exhausted Pokemon. He knew Ralts had really pushed herself to learn not one but four different moves, he couldn't have wished for a more dedicated Pokemon. On the other hand, Naruto had some difficulty deducing the move set that Deoxys already had and even so had to explain it to the Pokemon in order for him to understand any given order. Which would explain why he spent the most time with Deoxys once the two had learned Ice Punch. Like he had promised Professor Oak, he had done all he could to gather data on the DNA Pokemon. For instance, Deoxys was a single type psychic Pokemon, had a somewhat serious personality, its pressure ability, and possessed a move unknown to other Pokemon and another that was known to a selected few. Naruto had dubbed them Psycho Boost and Psycho Shift. You both did great. I am proud to know that you two took your training seriously, and I have no doubts that we will win that badge. Guess we stayed out here a little more than I thought we would Naruto spoke whilst looking up at the star-filled skies. Let's head back, Nurse Joy will have you guys fully rested in no time he grabbed his capsules as both Pokemon finished their drinks and returned them. As he walked away, it came to him, wait, how did Deoxys he wondered how his Pokemon was able to drink with that mask-like face, and how does he eat? Another mystery in the Pokemon universe. Poke Legend. All right Pikachu one more time, use Iron Tail. He tossed several stones at Pikachu, his bulb tail glows bright white and flickers for several seconds before attempting to slice apart the stones that came his way. Each managed to bounce off his tail until one successfully cut through, Pikachu and Ash cheered before one of two pieces fell and struck Pikachu's head. You okay? Pika, Pika, hi he rubs his head, Ash sighs and pats his friend, what to do? I mean even if we do Master Iron Tail, Pikachu will be the only one who can dish out any form of damage, I guess we better find another teammate he thought. Come on Pikachu, there's a new member for our team somewhere in that forest, and we're gonna catch him. Pikachu, wondering just WHO would be the lucky Pokemon to join the team. Pokemon Center, two hours later. Don't worry your Pokemon will be back to full strength with just a good night's rest. Thanks Naruto nodded as Chansey took the tray of poke balls containing Ralts and Deoxys, he walked walked over to one of the available telecom. Dialing in Professor Oak's number, he stood by as he awaited a response. Minutes passed and no response, guess it was a little too late at night for anyone to be in the lab. Naruto sighed and hung up, guess he had something else to do tomorrow, it wasn't until he saw Ash walk in rather exhausted, Pikachu in the same condition. What happened to you guys? Caught, a trico, he said seconds before collapsed, is he alright? Nurse Joy asked, Ash, yeah he's fine, do you mind taking his Pokemon? Pikachu looks beat up he picked up the sleeping mouse and poke ball, handed them over to the medic and hefted Ash up and walking towards their respected rooms. 
Naruto opened the door and lightly dropped the boy onto the bed, for someone so short, you're heavy. He panted. The blonde trainer snapped his back muscles and walked out and into May. Hee hee, well, this is kinda awkward he mused as the two bumped each other hard enough to fall to the ground. May's position was on a crawling position overshadowing the blonde below her while he himself had a hand on her waist and another on her leg. My, my, my it's a little late for those kind of activities they turned to see Nurse Joy covering her lips in attempt to calm her chuckle. The two picked each other off the ground with their cheeks blushing up a storm. I it was an accident, nothing happened May sputtered out. Yeah, what she said. Kukuku, okay, if you say so, she replied in a sing-along tone, leaving both flushed pre-teens to their business. Sorry, I should have watched where I was going. Nah don't worry about. Besides I had bad timing on that she smiled as they walked back out to the lobby. So what did guys do? Well, we met the gym leader. Yeah, MPH, she's also the teacher of the Rustboro Pokemon Academy, she's nice, teaching little kids about Pokemon and how to raise them. I remember Max spending most of the time in her class while me, Ash, and Brock attended other classes. Really, which ones? Well, I kinda, sorta, Snuck into the contest 101, I left after the first quiz. Naruto snickered which earned him a pouted glare from the brunette, so you're interested in being a coordinator. Yeah, after watching Janet and her beautifly, I have made my goal to enter and win a competition of my own. Just one, May gave a questioning look. What I mean is, are you just gonna win one, or are ya gonna win em all? Uh, May. Like all if not most trainers our dream is to become the best of the best, a Pokemon master, if we can go the distance so can you. Don't just stop with one, continue on and become the greatest coordinator in the world. Mei smiled, Naruto had successfully motivated her to partake in the national competitions. Well then, I guess I better train up Wurmple for the following contest. You caught a Wurmple, thinking about getting a Beautifly. She only nodded. Well then. It'll be rootin' for ya he said seconds before the lights went out, guess we better hit the hay, come on let's head back with that the two headed back through the halls, unbeknownst that they were walking a little too close to one another. Rustboro City Gym, the following day 7.15am. Waking up earlier than the rest, Naruto had called up Professor Oak and sent the data he had recorded off his training session with Deoxys. After recollecting his Pokemon, he rushed towards the gym, Despite the closed sign he opened the door of the stone walls and walked right in. Hello, anyone here? Sorry, the gym will reopen tomorrow walked in a familiar twin-tailed brunette. What's the occasion? There's much that needs to be done before class starts and I need to get to the academy extra early to finish on time she hefts a bag over her shoulder, before she can walk out. Are, you Roxanne by any chance? Yes, and you're the one who bumped into me. Huh, oh, oh. Hee hee sorry about that but, let's make a deal, if we can have a match here and now, it'll not only help you finish your work but, teach the class if you like. Oh, I couldn't ask you to do that. Hee hee I guess not, but come on at the very least consider it, I mean I do wanna a chance to earn a badge and you've got a lot of work that needs to be done, we split it and get it done quicker. Roxanne sighs and rubs her forehead, you're not giving up on this are you? Uh, I will not. Fine then. Let's have a match she smirked in which was returned with a grin. Since there are no judges for this match, we'll have to keep score for our Pokemon Roxanne stated as she brought out two poke balls from her bag as she dropped it by her side. Both walked over their respected positions before Roxanne flipped a switch, the area before them opened up and rose the rocky arena. This will be a two-on-two -two match, the victor will be declared when all of either trainer's Pokemon are unable to battle. Sounds good to me Roxanne flicked away a strand of hair from her forehead, I never did catch your name. My name is Naruto, and I here challenge you to a Pokemon battle. Well then, Naruto, as official gym leader, I accept your challenge. Play Pokemon Coliseum Ost, vs Battle 2, it'll start things off, come on out Lileap. Roxanne tossed her poke ball. Out popped out purple cup shaped plant with eight petal like pink tentacles protruding from the opening on its upper body where its yellow eyes blinked. Connecting both upper and lower body parts was a yellow colored stem, Lileap the plant waddled closer to the center. Naruto whistled and grabbed his Pokedex, Lileap, the sea lily Pokemon, 
Lileap leads a very simple life for a predator Pokemon. While its body remains immobile at most times it will detach itself from its position and waddle to another using the undersea coral and kelp as camouflage. Lileap is one of few Pokemon that had existed in prehistoric times it read. Whoa, an ancient Pokemon, I am gonna have to ask ya where you got one later. Roxanne chuckled, that's if you win. Very well then, Ralts I choose you. Naruto gives his heel ball a toss and out of the pink rays shot out the blue haired Ralts. My, my, it's the different colored Ralts my students were so fond of, now that's a rare sight. Ralts, she questioned as she saw the living plant in front of her, get ready. The small psychic type nodded and shyly did so. Lileap used acid, the plant raised its tentacles upwards and took aim. Ralts teleport now, Ralts outlined herself in blue before she glows multicolored and disappears before the violet acid lands on her. Use confusion. Lileap was suddenly picked up in a light blue aura and flung into a rock. R. Ralts. She stood above a boulder. All right, confusion one more time. Lileap felt herself get pulled up and aimed her tentacles at the feeling Pokemon. Lileap used Confuse Ray. A violet glow surrounds her body and the eye patterns around her green body fire an ethereal beam. Ralts drop Lileap and dodge it with double team. R. Ralts. Doing as commanded. She created several copies and slips away in an after image. Lileap use in grain. The plant picked herself up and glowed light green, seconds before multiple roots shot from beneath. All copies were dispersed and Ralts was entangled. She struggled as the roots slowly began to squeeze her tiny frame. Lileap, use acid, once more letting her tentacles take aim and shot forth a skin melting acid. No, you don't. Ralts used teleport quickly disappearing. The acid mist once more. Ralts reappeared a few feet away from Lileap, which caused Roxanne to tense. Ralts, use ice punch. Ralts, her fist was engulfed in a light blue, swirling energy. Lileap stop her. The plant redirected her roots and whiplashes them towards her opponent, deflect them with light scream. Utilizing her one free hand she managed to create a yellow hexagon barrier which let the roots bounce off. Once in range, she thrust her frozen fist forward, tore Lileap off her roots, and slammed her into the stone behind them. Lileap creeped forward slowly before ice encased her prehistoric body. Ralts backed away, trying to calm her breath as she continued to stare at Lileap's frozen self. Lileap break yourself out with ancient power. Naruto and Ralts tensed as a silvery light began to materialize within the ice. It continued to grow and grow. Suddenly, it died down until there was nothing but Lileap's ice encased body. Roxanne sighs. Guess this round goes to you taking her poke ball. She returned her rock, grass type. Take a long rest, you deserve it. She spoke as she watched her blonde opponent congratulate his Pokemon. Tutoring is the only way for a Pokemon like Ralts to learn Ice Punch, he's good. I believe we have another round. Huh, oh right, ready for another go? Naruto asks. Ralts glanced back at Roxanne and with slight hesitation, nodded. He smiled and let his partner walk back to the arena, ready when you were he motioned. Nose pass I choose you. Out of the bright light came a Pokemon, closely resembling an Easter Island head. His body, composed of hard, angular, bluish colored rocks and with a single bright red, triangular nose. A nose pass, nose pass. The compass Pokemon. Nose pass magnetic nose is always pointing to the north. If two of these Pokemon meet they cannot turn their faces to each other due to their high magnetism repelling their noses his Pokédex stated. Tisk, a rock type with electric type moves, this won't be easy. Final round, begin, Ralts use double team, Ralts split herself into copies once more, again with the illusions. Very well, nose pass use thunder wave, Roxanne commanded, nose pass, its rocky arms shot up and unleashed a light burst of electricity. Naruto stared in surprise as the clones shook in their place before dispersing, leaving Ralts paralyzed and wide open. Nose pass use power gem. Shit. Ralts teleport now. Naruto shouted as nose pass charged up an orange ball that dramatically grew in size. Sadly, the lightning coursing through Ralts was too intense and couldn't move as the orb was tossed at her. Seconds before it hit, Ralts' eyes glowed beneath her blue hair and small sparks coursed through nose pass stone body. Boom. Asterisk, Ralts, Naruto shouted as stones and dust crashed into the air, it soon cleared to see Ralts' unconscious self. 
Roxanne leaned in to see Ralts as Naruto walked onto the arena and carefully picked up the petite psychic type. Thanks Ralts. You've done great. Take a breather he spoke as he returns her to her heel ball. Looks like you won this round. Looks like it. Guess we end it with this next match Roxanne nodded. Deoxys I choose you. Tossing up his cherished ball. W what in the name of Roxanne muttered, clearly surprised to gaze upon a Pokemon she had never seen before. Deoxys looked at both Roxanne and Nosepass before turning to Naruto and more specifically, the heel ball he held in his hand. Let's start round 3. Naruto spoke. Very well. Nosepass use Rock Blast. The Easter Island head materialized a rock within its grasp before it firing it at the unknown Pokemon, Deoxys, dodge it. Complying. The DNA Pokemon only sidestepped, take him up with Psychic. Nosepass soon found himself being flung up into the air before being brought down hard. Nosepass use Rock Tomb. The Compass Pokemon, despite its body weight, jumped high up and stomped on the ground letting huge stones rise up and encase Deoxys. Roxanne took note that Naruto wasn't the least bit worried for his Pokemon, why is that? She thought. Deoxys, attack form, use Icy Wind. Icy Wind, nose past Rock Tomb suddenly had frozen spots emerge from within before spreading throughout the rocks leaving it a frozen tomb. Cracks began to snap here and there until Deoxys bursts through the top, now in its assault mode, it, changed. Roxanne spoke in surprise. Deoxys bring it back up with Psychic. Obeying Nosepass was taken back up only this time he was held suspended. Nosepass quickly, use Power Gem. Roxanne declared, only to find that her Pokemon couldn't move, what's going on, even under Psychic, Pokemon should be able to attack. She thought. You're wondering why Nosepass can't attack Naruto spoke, catching her attention, before Nosepass hit Ralts with Power Gem, she used her ability, Synchronize. She passed along her paralysis, clever girl. Deoxys, hit him with Ice Punch. The DNA Pokemon pulled in Nosepass towards him as his right tentacles intertwined into a fist and thrusted forward a swirling white, frost fist. Nosepass was quickly frozen solid. End battle theme sequence. Deoxys would have continued his assault on the Pokemon if Naruto hadn't taught him to be passive outside a battle or to show mercy to a defeated opponent. So instead he used Psychic to float the frozen Pokemon over to her trainer. Roxanne couldn't help but smile at the action performed by the Pokemon, thank you she said before returning Nosepass. Deoxys reverted back to his standard form as Naruto walked up to him, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't proud of the two of you, so I won't lie, because you did Deoxys felt a warm feeling surface due to his praise, the violet orb in his chest became blue momentarily before reverting back. He had no clue at what this feeling was but, it felt nice. Congratulations Naruto, as a challenger who has defeated me in a fair battle, I reward you with this she hands out small bronze object, resembling two arrows pointed in the opposite direction with a oval shaped background and a tilted rectangle down the middle, the stone badge. Naruto took the badge with glee as he held it up, yada. He cheered as the badge shined in the light, you've raised your Pokemon well. I only wish our battle could have gone on longer but, you've got a deal to uphold she winked. Right, right, to the academy. He returns Deoxys and rushes out, only seconds before returning, uh, why don't you lead the way cause, I have no idea where we're going Roxanne chuckles, grabs her belongings and motions him to follow. So, tell me more about Deoxys. Splash, asterisk, report, an orange red haired woman demanded, she wore an open blue vest over a black tank top, blue gloves, jeans, and brown boots. On her blue head wrap, a peculiar white arrow shaped embedded on the center. Two grunts who have emerged from the waters below the Petalberg Lake, having similar head wraps, the two wore a black and white striped shirt and blue jeans branding several white hoops down the side. They dried themselves up using towels provided by other members, we found the meteorite, however the energy signal is, low, almost non-existent whatever signatures we picked up are long gone one responded. The woman cupped her chin with a scowl, better hope that damn team magma hadn't gotten here before as she muttered. Is there anything else? Nothing. Just more wet space rock. She grunted in annoyance, very well, take a sample, well attempt to trace it from the base. Hi, Admin Shelley, Sharpedo, let's move. The two saluted and jumped back in the shark infested waters.
Not far from their position, a group wearing a black horn, red hooded poncho over a black tank top along with a pair of black pants held up by a red belt. They also wore a red double-strapped wristband with black gloves and boots. On their poncho, an M closely resembling a volcano was imprinted. Looks like Team Aqua got here a little too late, too bad we haven't had much a success either, report our findings back to base one ordered, as he tossed a meteorite fragment up and down his palm. Rustboro City, Pokemon Academy. All right, that should do it Naruto stated, placing the last of the papers on the medium-sized stack of papers. Thanks, I might have taken longer by myself Roxanne replied as she wiped her forehead, checking the clock, oh my, look at the time, we've got only a few minutes before class starts she muses. Looks like it, anyway I've gotta take Ralts over to the Pokemon Center, I see if I can swing by later the brunette gym leader nodded and awaited for her students to arrive. Phew, that actually lasted longer than I thought. Naruto, turning around to see Max, May, Ash, and Brock walk up to him, what are you doing here so early? I promised to help Roxanne finish grading school work, and Max I must say, you pretty smart for a kid your age said boy scratched the back of his head sheepishly. Really how come? May asked, curious about what led to him making that promise. Well, it actually more of a request, I asked for a gym battle in exchange for my assistance. You two battled already, Ash blurted out, and one two Naruto replied bringing out and popped open a small case, inside containing the stone badge. Ash comically slumped down. He had to wait until the following day for his battle and his blonde friend had already gone and gotten a badge. That is so cool, hey Naruto today Roxanne is having us compete in one on one battles, do ya think you can give me some pointers for my match? Hum, I did promise you that, alright let's head over to the Pokemon Center, we should have enough time to heal up Ralts and get you back here before the match he replied. Right with that the two said their goodbyes and left the academy, prompting Ash, May, and Brock to leave towards their respected yet temporary classes. Okay let's start our lesson, bring out Kecleon. You got it, come on out Kecleon giving his capsule a toss, out pop the green bipedal chameleon, like with any other Pokemon, they all have a level and a specific move set, let's see how strong Kecleon is bringing out his Pokédex, he scanned the Pokemon. And here we go, his current level is at 10 and his move list consists of Astonish, Lick, Thief, Tail Whip, Scratch, Bind, Faint Attack, Fury Swipes, and, whoa, Max aren't you the lucky one. What, what is it? It seems Kecleon also knows Drain Punch and Magic Coat Naruto states, causing the chameleon to puff his chest out in pride. These are you and your Pokemon's strongest assets, can you tell me why? Yup, Drain Punch not only does physical damage but also drains energy and replenishes one's own, while Magic Coat can reflect stasis alignment moves like Leech Seed attract, and thunder wave. You are correct, now why don't we have a practice battle, nothing too serious just so you can get accustomed to battling. Right, Chansey they turned to see the plump, pink medical Pokemon hand over a heel ball, thank you Naruto replied with a small bow. Chansey smiled and bowed back before returning to her partner. Okay let's take this outside the two walked out the door, Naruto clipped Ralt's heel ball to his belt and brought out his dive ball, Corsola come on out giving it a toss. Corsola, cheered the living coral, all right Max, because Kecleon deals mainly with physical attacks it is actually both your advantage and disadvantage, can you tell me why? It'll give both us and our opponent a better chance of attack. Correct again, now what we're gonna do is work on your speed, it'll not only increase Kecleon's mobility but also his evasion, we've got a good half an hour before the battles, let's see if we can squeeze in some C and C in there too. C and C, Kecleon, Max and his Pokemon ask curiously. Combos and counters, now Corsola use Bubble Beam. This put Max on alert. Corsola, Core, spewing out crystal clear bubbles at high speeds, act. Kecleon dodge, following orders the chameleon jumped to the right but was assaulted by a second stream of bubbles, huh. Take note on this Max, when an opponent dodges a long to mid-range move, if one wishes to continue use of the attack he must aim where a Pokemon will end up rather than where it is. K. Kecleon, the swirl-eyed chameleon muttered out, this would be a long 30 minutes. With Ash, alright Pikachu, one more time. Use Iron Tail. Pikachu, 
His bulb-like tail glowed brightly before slamming it onto large boulder, causing it to shatter upon impact. Yes, Pikachu had succeeded in mastering Iron Tail, ready for tomorrow's battle Pikachu. Ash asked. Pika, giving a determined nod. Hey Ash, the beginner battles are about to start he heard May shout, coming, let's go Pikachu. Unbeknownst to them, two figures branding a white suit with a bright red R on it, had been spying on the raven-haired boy and his Pokemon. Jesse, James the two turned to their third member, a talking house cat with cream-colored fur and a glimmering golden oval coin on its forehead, Meowth, we've been waiting here for six hours where'd you go off to? The violet-haired male spoke. What can't a cat enjoy a nap from time to time causing the two to groan? Whatever, is it ready? Yes, once the students have left the building well take the Pokemon these three had been following Ash's group the day before and had overheard about the Academy rental Pokemon. Following the team rocket job description, it was their job to steal as many Pokemon for their organization. School practice yard, 10 minutes later. The battles were already underway. Two children were currently engaged in a one-on-one -on -one match one, using a small white beetle-like Pokemon against a purple and yellow-tipped plush-like Pokemon with crosshair eyes, these Pokemon were Nankata and Whisker. While many children had their eyes glued to the match, few others were fixed on Ash, May, and Brock's Pokemon. Pikachu, Talo, Trico, Torchic, Wurmple, Fortress, and Lotad were enjoying the playtime they were getting, Ash himself along with May were trying to get Kenny a boy with a slight fear of Pokemon to open up and try to pet Pikachu. Besides Kenny another student, Anita had little to no interest in the small creatures, however what did recently take interest in was May's green-clad younger brother, something another student Tommy wasn't too fond of. Roxanne, Naruto, Max good to see that you two could make it. Sorry we're late, gave Max here a private lesson the blonde trainer responded, ruffling up the blue net's hair, I do think he's ready. All right then, just wait for my students to finish their match receiving a nod the duo walked over to their group. And, we're back Naruto said, getting their attention, Max are you ready for your match? A little nervous but, win or lose, me and Kecleon will give it our all Naruto and Ash gave nods in approval. Poliwag, looking down to see the same water type they had found prior to meeting Roxanne, for the time being they played around. Tommy noticed Anita getting a little too close to Max and was about to intervene, would have succeeded had he not accidentally stepped on Pikachu's tail, frying both him and Ash in the process and thus stopping Kenny from getting anywhere near the electric type. So close thought May. A short time later, Wizimer was defeated by Nankata's Fury Swipes, winner by knockout, Chris and Nankata Roxanne announced. Naruto placed a hand on the Blue Net's shoulder, you ready? Giving a nervous nod. Max walked over to the teacher, gym leader. So what do you teach him? Brock asked. Only half an hour but, that's better than nothing I guess, anyway I only had time to teach him a few of the basics, you know a good defense, the best ways to counter an incoming attack, that sort of stuff. Tommy who had picked himself up walked up to Max and had challenged him before Roxanne could select a student. While she agreed, Max was slightly unsure. Tommy seemed more experienced in Pokemon battles and by the looks of it, wouldn't be taking it easy on him anytime soon. Alright you two, select your Pokemon Roxanne held out a tray with six Pokeballs containing random low-level Pokemon. Tommy grabbed one and gave it a toss, out popped an yellow-skinned lizard-like Pokemon with a tube-like mouth, black collar around its neck, and large lumps on its head. This was the fire Pokemon, Magby. Tommy grinned. Fire types were always amongst the strongest classes of Pokemon, even in their pre-evolutionary state they were a force to be reckoned with. And you Max, offering up the tray, don't worry he pulled out his capsule, I got my own this surprise the entire class, and most fell envious, wishing they could own Pokemon as well. Tommy at the moment felt extremely jealous, tisk, just hurry up already he said, already wanting to wipe the floor with the blue net. Pressing the button on the center, the Pokeball expanded before giving it a toss, Kecleon, come on out. Kecleon, the chameleon announced itself upon being released. Its current fully recovered state was their reason for being late, Max had him treated at the Pokemon Center before arrival. The children began to awe and wonder, those who knew, Kecleon were only found in the northeastern region of Hoenn. Ha, you think a normal type has any chance against fire type like Magby? 
Max grinned, I know he can. This battle will be declared until either Pokemon can no longer battle, are you both ready? Ready, the two kids shout, begin. Tommy started first, Magby. Use flamethrower. Taking a deep breath, Magby spewed a sea of flames from its tube-like mouth. Max grimaced. Flamethrower was too strong of an attack for Kecleon to handle so he did what any trainer would do under such situation. Kecleon, dodge it. Following orders, the chameleon evaded to the left with Magby's flamethrower hot on his trail, just like Naruto said, aim at where he's going to be rather than where he is Max thought as Tommy continued the use of the high-powered move. Looking at the surrounding area, Max noticed some rocks close to Kecleon's position, quick use faint attack. Kecleon. Picking up a rock and giving it an accurate toss, Magby stopped its assault. Both Pokemon and Trainer looked around to see that the green chameleon had disappeared, where'd he go? The instant the words left the boy's mouth did Kecleon reappear, giving a hard thrust to the face and sending Magby rolling several feet. Get up Magby, come on we can't let a noob beat us, get back up. This caused Max's group to sweat drop at the insult. Kecleon used Lick. Extending its abnormally long tongue gave Magby and would have given it an extended yet slimy lick if not for Tommy's quick intervention, use Ember, now. From its down position, Magby fired super-heated pellets at the incoming Hydrostat. Kecleon comically rolled on the ground whilst holding his burning tongue while Magby continued its assault, eventually the Ember pellets began to knock against each other before combusting on the chameleon. Whoa, many kids were startled by the small explosion. Do you think Kecleon's okay? May asked. Course he is, I mean you do know about his ability right? Ability. The flames and smoke resided to reveal the once green light scorched chameleon was now red in color, huh? Tommy wondered out loud, clearly confused by the Pokemon's change of appearance. Looks like Max has the advantage here Roxanne mused, why's that? A student asked. Well as you can see, Kecleon's color change ability allows it to change its elemental affinity to match that of the move used against it they all glance at the red chameleon, in this case, Kecleon is now a fire type Pokemon she explained. Brock who overheard, then that means fire based attacks will do little to no damage against Kecleon. Kecleon's ability is what makes it a rather tricky opponent, right now Magby's only available moves are smog and faint attack, even so Max has a trick or two up his sleeve. Magby used smog, taking another deep breath did the live coal Pokemon release thick, gray, toxic fumes from his mouth. Kecleon counter with Max stopped his order upon feeling the ground shake, what's going on, is it an earthquake? Ash shouted, seconds later did a large mechanical wormple plow through the school walls. Wow, didn't know they grew that big Ash stated. That's not a wormple Ash Brock stated as three figures came to play from a now opened hatch cover. Naruto froze in place, he recognized their R emblem. Prepare for trouble, make it double, to protect the world from devastation. To unite all peoples within our nation. To denounce the evils of truth and love. To extend our reach to the stars above. Jesse. James. Team Rocket, blast off at the speed of light. Surrender now, or prepare to fight. Meowth, that's right, great. These guys again. Ash growled. Ever since his visit to the Pokemon Center in Viridian City, these exact individuals have been following him and his group in attempt to steal Pikachu. Unbeknownst to anyone, Naruto's hands tightened into fists. Flashback. Pacifidlog Town. Four years ago. Bubbles popped above the ocean's surface, slowly more and more began to pop before Naruto splashed up from the depths of ocean floor. Corsola. Core. The living coral cheered happily. Yup. Looks like Clamperl and Staryu left more than they usually do, wonder why. The ten-year-old opened his sack to see it filled with many pearls, stardust and pieces. They swam to the closest platform and climbed aboard, upon turning the corner did they quickly hide. Before them stood three unknown assailants, the first was rather short, had white hair and wore a long sleeve grey and green outlined sweater along with a black shirt, white pants, black combat boots, and a green beret. The second figure was hulking in size, had short black hair and wore a similar suit as the first, only difference is the lack in beret. The third and final figure was a pale violet, four ponytailed woman, she wore a kimono of the same color scheme as her other two partners. The one thing that stood out the most was the black and red R on their clothing, 
they were currently confronting Naruto's adoptive father, Faust. Want ask again, where is it? Where's Rayquaza? We've told you already, we don't know. Rayquaza roams the ozone layer even if it came down we wouldn't know its exact location. And I say you're lying, we've gotten reports of a dragon-like Pokemon that had descended around these areas several times before and even more these past few years, Rayquaza is too big of a Pokemon to just pass by unnoticed, now where is it? The shorter one demanded, just then a black-suited individual, branding the same R rushed towards the three. Lieutenants, we've detected a large target over the radar, it's heading north as we speak the three glance at one another before walking over to the edge of the floating village. Taking a pair of binoculars the woman looked to the north, she caught a glimpse of a shadow heading towards the sky pillar. It's heading for the tower, I think we've found our target the other two lieutenants smirked and got on their armored boat. Set a course the hulking one ordered. Naruto grimaced, we've got a worn Rayquaza, Corsola let's go. Corsola. The two dived back into the water, Naruto held onto his Pokemon as she sped through the water and towards their hangout. Naruto returned Corsola back into her dive ball upon arrival, looking back at the coast from the entrance, Team Rocket had just made port and dashed in. Altaria, he called out, seconds later did the cloud-feathered phoenix fly down from her nest. She would have tackled him if she hadn't noticed the panic look in her trainer's eyes. Altaria, I need you to fly me to the roof, quick we don't have much time. Altaria was confused but, did so anyway. The three lieutenants walked in along with several TR grunts carrying sets of high-tech equipment, the short one noticed Altaria fly upwards with what seemed to be a blonde-haired kid on its back. Looks like we're going up. The colossal green dragon flew amongst the clouds in a circular pattern, looking for an area where there would be less rocks to lay on. After about a month of non-stop flying it was finally time for him to return to his resting place. As he dove down he saw Naruto and Altaria fly out a tattered hole alongside a wall and towards the roof. Rayquaza, you have to get out of here. Said Dragon was confused by the child's words, there's bad men on their way to get you, you can't stay here you have to go, now. Naruto pleaded. Rayquaza's growled and turned to the staircase connecting to the lower levels, he caught the scent of several unknown individuals getting closer. Don't worry about us, just go. While he admired the blonde's will to protect him, Rayquaza was clearly not comfortable with leaving the boy to fend off the incoming feet. Rayquaza please just, what a majestic sight stopping, Naruto turned slowly to meet the eyes of the three lieutenants. Who are you? What do you want with Rayquaza? Tisk, beat it kid, grown ups got stuff to do. I won't let you take him. This got a laugh out of them, ha. Huh? Even with that Altaria of yours, it won't be enough to stop all of us. A grunt shouted. Naruto frowned. Sure he wasn't experienced nor even a trainer yet, he however would not let these guys take Rayquaza. Altaria used dragon breath. Opening her beak, she began to form a clear orb of spiraling energy seconds before firing a transparent beam of energy with white rings surrounding it. Hit the deck. The grunts scattered as Altaria's dragon-based attack scorched through the roof's surface, the lieutenants however were unfazed. Can never count on the lower-ranking members for nothing, very well, ill play with you the short one stepped forward, come on out Steelix. Out of the Mons capsule popped out a 30-foot-long silvery-gray snake, its body composed of many rock-like sections along with its massive head and jaws. Bring M in with Sandstorm. Giving a rugged growl, it stood up high and spun its spiked body in reverse, in a matter of seconds did a massive sand twister form on the rooftop, the high wind pressure made it difficult for Altaria to fly away. Follow up with stone edge, two white rings intersect with one another around Steelix spinning form, the rings then form into sharp stones and launch themselves into the dust devil turning it into a lethal attack. However, Team Rocket wouldn't have expected Rayquaza to interfere, a bright red and white orb formed in his mouth and fired a high-powered hyper beam. Steelix was blasted off its tail and several feet away, cancelling its combo in the process, seems like Rayquaza chose to stay, good the woman spoke as she turned to the grunts, set them up, now. Referring to the equipment they have brought up. Orn, car, begin operation. Tisk, since when do we take orders from you sir? The moment Rayquaza took down your strongest Pokemon, now quit wasting time, Persian, Starmie, Banit, await orders. 
R popped a white panther-like Pokemon with a single red oval jewel on its forehead. Second in line was a violet sea star with hexagon ruby in its center with a golden star guard around it. Third was an all-to-familiar ghost-type marionette. My turn the hulking man known as Orm stated, tossing up his own capsules, Jumpluff, Shuckle, Tropius, joined the fray. First in line was a small plush blue Pokemon with three thick dandelions on both hands and head, the second was a red and white shelled yellow turtle, and the third appeared to be a brown and green skinned, long necked dinosaur with large green leaves attached to its back and some bananas dangling from its chin. Fine then, Fortress, Skarmory come on out, Steelix get your ass up and join the fight Steelix forced itself up and slithered up to the razor steel bird and hard shelled insect. Rayquaza roars as it cloaks itself in a misty white aura, which soon disappeared in a blur, Shuckle, Steelix, Starmie, Harden now. Their bodies glowed a silvery white aura as their bodies they raised their defenses for the inevitable attack. Rayquaza, utilizing his extreme speed, tackled Steelix onto the other Pokemon and scrapped them along the ground, he then slammed them hard with a powerful strike of his tail. The dust cleared to reveal an unconscious Steelix, a gem pulsing Starmie, and an inch between conscious and unconscious Shuckle. Hey, didn't earn the title of legendary Pokemon for nothing or mused, Jumpluff used Triplex Powder. The grass flying type flew up into the air and spun in a twister fashion while spewing wave after wave of poison, sleep powder, and stun spore. The sky high Pokemon points its tail and creates a twister, easily overpowering the combo and slamming Jumpluff against hard ground. Starmie, Bayonet, use Psychic. Both Pokemon glowed a dark violet aura which they soon engulfed their opponent in. Rayquaza growled in attempt to overpower the Sea Star and Marionette, Jumpluff, Triplex Powder, one more time. Orm commanded. Altaria use Dragon Breath, Corsola use Ancient Power. Corsola, now passenger seat flying got in front and fired a spiraling silver orb of prehistoric power, following suit did Altaria unleash her transparent beam of dragon energy. This stopped Starmie and Bayonet's use of Psychic as they evaded the attacks, Rayquaza, who was now freed from the supernatural force readied another hyper beam. Sir, the emitters are ready, waiting for orders. A grunt stated. Well don't just stand there, turn them on now. Car ordered, a second grunt punched the startup screen and activated ten relay dishes, each emitting a powerful ultrasonic pulse. Rayquaza instantly stopped his charging hyper beam and roared in pain, Rayquaza. Naruto shouted, got one for you too kid car smirked, snapping his fingers one emitter was redirected at Altaria. Ah! Naruto held his ears, Altaria fell to the ground, both she and Corsola shuddered in pain as their bodies refused to move under the sonic waves. Rayquaza overheard Naruto cry of agony and despite the increasing pain, it charged its hyperbeam a third time. Tisk, increase output to 60% doing as commanded, the output was increased to said amount. Rayquaza refused to to give in and charged as much power as he could, increased to 70%, 80, 90 Rayquaza fell to the ground, his hyper beam was slowly fading away. I think now would be a good time to capture it, wouldn't you agree Sird suggested. You are completely right pulling out a pitch black swirled metallic poke ball, dark ball, welcome to the team Rayquaza. He gave it a toss. Mere inches away, the capsule was suddenly destroyed by an unseen shadow ball, what? He shouted. Bayonet. Naruto's starter joined the fray and began spamming shadow balls at the team rocket members. Banit. You've got to destroy their machines. He heard his trainer's pained shout and took notice of the ten pulse emitters and charged up a large shadow ball. No you don't. Tropius used leaf storm. Raising its leaf wings it began to flap as hundreds upon thousands of glowing leaves sprouted out, all began to spin a twister-like formation before raising them upon Bayonet. The ghost type flew up to avoid but was tackled back into place by Skarmory's steel wing, B. Bayonet. He clenched his zippable teeth as the leaves cut into his body. Fortress used Zap Cannon, now taking Bayonet out of the skies with a white and red sparked plasma ball. Finish it, Persian, Bayonet used Shadow Claw obeying orders, both Pokemon slammed their glowing violet, black appendages at Bayonet's down self. Bayonet, Naruto shouted. As he watched the rocket grunts place a metallic band around his starter, he weakly turned his head to see Altaria and Corsola, still suffering from the continued pulse waves. Car, Orm, Sird walk up once more towards Rayquaza, bringing out another dark ball, 
No more interruptions, Sird stated. Rayquaza, no, Bayonet, Altaria, Corsola, someone, help. He thought, tears threatening to fall. It was then when a yellow, orange beam raised across the rooftops, destroying six out of ten emitters, what fucking now? Carr snarled. They looked up to see an orange-scaled winged dragon with two curved antennas along with a single horn on its head, it was a dragonite. From its shoulders did a red wild-haired man in a regal black and red suit jump down, with a much displeased look on his face. You, what are you doing here? Carr demanded. What's it look like? Stopping you from capturing one of the strongest dragon type Pokemon due to the active emitter aimed at Naruto and his Pokemon, he was only able to catch a glance at his savior, he gasped, it was the Kanto region champion, Lance. Regroup. The three ordered, Bayonet, Persian, Starmie, Fortress, Shuckle, Jumpluff Tropius, Skarmory, and an awakened Steelix stood before the dragon tamer. The grunts sent out their own Pokemon as well, mainly Golbats and Weezing. Smirking Lance gave out his order, Dragonite, use Thunderbolt. From its antenna, the orange dragon sparked lightning and blasted away at the remaining pulse emitters. Shielding their eyes from the explosion, did they fail to realize that Rayquaza had just been released? Salamence, Charizard, Aerodactyl come on out. Out of his capsules came a prehistoric gray-winged rock flying type, a winged orange flaming tailed horned dragon, and a winged blue and red quadrupedal dragon. Have at him. Car ordered, Charizard, Salamence Flamethrower, Dragonite, Aerodactyl use Hyper Beam. Flames and energy blasts soon spread throughout the rooftops. Lance noticed the blonde-haired ten-year-old and rushed to his side, Kid, are you alright? He watched as Altaria and Corsola nudged at their trainer. Bayonet they heard him mutter, is he, alright Lance looked around to see the downed ghost type, leaving the blonde he gently lifted the boy's starter and brought it to him. Bayonet Naruto muttered, placing a hand on him. Sir, our Pokemon can't take much more, what are your orders? Before they could respond, they noticed that the four Pokemon had stopped their assault and had flew back to their tamer's side. Why'd they stop? Surd thought. If I were you guys, I'd start running Lance stated in a dark tone. Grr. They froze and slowly turned to see an enraged Rayquaza. It was one thing to attack attack and weaken him with hypersonic weapons but, to directly harm the ten-year-old and the Pokemon he had befriended, they had just crossed the line. Rayquaza's runes glowed bright yellow and gave a thunderous roar causing the glow to explode, the grunts backed away as the once green-scaled dragon was now bright gold with his runes shining red. Because to anger a legendary Pokemon, is a very dangerous thing. Naruto fell unconscious upon watching the dragon begin its outrage on Team Rocket. Eyes fluttered open but, quickly shut, Naruto groaned as he held his head, he felt the aftershock of the hypersonic pulses pounding in his head. Whoa, hey take it easy he felt a hand on his shoulder, looking up to see Lance there along with his Dragonite, Altaria and Corsola carefully snuggled against their trainer. Rayquaza cracked his eyes open at Lance's small outburst. Thank Arceus you guys are okay it was then that he remembered, wait, where's Bayonet? Naruto looked around frantically. Calm down kid. Your Pokemon's fine lance motion to the resting ghost type, wrapped in several bandages, I've already applied some hyper potion but, taking heavy damage the best course of action is to refrain from battling for the next few days lance recommended. Naruto nodded in agreement, Bayonet would have to lay off battles and pranks for a while. Who are those guys, what did they want with Rayquaza? They are called Team Rocket, sadly they are one of many organizations in the Pokemon world that pursuit in theft and experimentation by stealing then selling rare and strong Pokemon they gained funds for their twisted research. Is that what they wanted with Rayquaza? Just to sell him for profit? Doubt that, they either wanted a Pokemon strong enough to win over their battles and make thefts more easier or to try and clone him like they did with Mew that got Naruto's attention, they, cloned Mew. That was impossible, cloning a normal Pokemon maybe but, a legendary being like Mew was just hard believe. It'll be more difficult to track them down if the other organizations come to play, each have their own goals that we cannot simply ignore, we of the elite four are doing what we can to stop them he stated before getting up from his rocky seat. Where are you going? I am meeting up with a friend of mine, hopefully hell have another lead climbing aboard Dragonite, it flapped its wings and prepared to take off. You know kid, what you did today was, well, stupid Naruto deadpanned, instead of requesting for help, 
You came up here alone. Two of your Pokemon were incapacitated and another was seriously injured. Furthermore those weapons could have killed you if they had raised waves any higher Naruto looked down in shame, for both nearly killing himself and for putting his Pokemon in harm's way. However, if it weren't for you, Team Rocket would have indeed captured Rayquaza, while choice of action was poor, it's the outcome that has gained you my respect, maybe someday, when you're ready, we'll have a battle of our own. Dragonite gave a roar and took to the skies, Naruto stared at the champion's retreating self and smiled, you can count on that he said, holding a fist out. End of flashback. They're taking the academy Pokemon. Roxanne shouted, snapping Naruto out of his thoughts. Pikachu was currently grasped within an iron claw along with Kecleon and several other Pokemon. Max and Tommy had grudgingly teamed up with Magby and Poliwag. Both their flamethrower and water guns seemed to have little effect on the mechanical Wurmple. Pikachu used Thunderbolt, Ash shouted, Pikachu. In attempt to zap his way out, Pikachu discharged as much electrical as possible. Sadly the the claw had been designed as a lightning conductor which only increased the machine's power. The rocket trio laughed at the Pokemon's attempts, oh how they would get the Pikachu they had long been after for. We'd like to play some more but, we've got an appointment to attend to knowing the meaning to those words Naruto brought out his cherished ball. Deoxys come on out, everyone stared bewildered at the DNA Pokemon floating in mid-air in his standard form did he analyze the situation. Two white-suited humans on board a mechanical Pokemon holding many poke balls, while several other Pokemon along with the Pikachu from before were suspended by claws, Deoxys, use icy wind. Naruto declared. Swinging his tentacles towards his crystalline core, a snow-white and azure-blue swirl appeared before being fired at the Wurmple. Ack, cold, it's cold. Team Rocket shivered as the wind nearly blew them off their feet, the gears froze solid and quickly shut down its controls. The captured Pokemon were able to break out of the frozen claws and back to their trainers. Pikachu, Trico, Torchic, Foratris, Lotad, Kecleon. Damn it, after all we went through to catch those six, no matter, Seviper go. You two Cacnea. Both Violet Spear-tailed Snake and Living Barrel Cactus popped out of their capsules and confronted the unknown Pokemon before them. Seviper used Poison Tail, dashing forward with a Violet Glowing Tail. Cacnea, Pin Missile, raising its stubby yet black spiked arms, did it fire a barrage of arrow-tipped needles. Deoxys, Defense Mode, obeying, did the DNA Pokemon morph into its tank-like form. Cacnea's pin missile merely bounced its solid body while sending a bone-chilling shudder up Seviper's skeleton as its tail made impact. Deoxys was not amused. The attacks done by Naruto's Pokemon actually made him feel pain in this form compared to these two. Use Psychic, eyes glowing violet, were the two Pokemon flung back to their masters, causing them to lose their grip on the poke balls. Deoxys saw this and used Psychic to float them back to the students, Ack. Not the poke balls, Meowth shouted. Now let's finish this, Deoxys attack mode, use Psycho Boost. Morphing into its trademark assault form getting many odd looks from those present. Placing its whip-like tentacles towards its crystalline core, did it charge its signature move. Within seconds did Deoxys let loose his multicolored orb, Team Rocket screamed comically as it made impact, destroying their mechanical wormple and sending them flying high into the sky. W what kind of Pokemon was that? Jesse asked. I dunno, I've never seen anything like it have you Meowth. James responded. Nope but, I do know one thing they all nodded, Team Rocket's blasting off again. They shouted as they flew into the distance, shining a star in place. After returning the poke balls to the academy did the children bum rush Deoxys, many declaring how cool and strong he was while other questioned Naruto and where to get one. Naruto sadly couldn't answer that as Deoxys was the only known one to enter their world, as he watched as Pikachu introduced him to the other Pokemon Ash and his group walked up to him. The only thoughts that came to him were that of which Lance had spoken of before. There were other organizations within the Pokemon world, many with their own goals, did that mean Hoenn had other groups besides Team Rocket? Pick, 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 asterisk. Few an elder man in an excavation's outfit dropped the pickaxe and whipped his brow, we're almost in, Onyx come on out. Popping open his poke ball did a boulder composed snake slithered out. I've gotten the wall weak enough for you to plow through it he explained, 
the rock snake gave a nod and crashed through the walls of a hidden chamber. The man had gotten his hands on a rather distinct map that lead deep into an underground ruin. You did it he spoke. Gryu Onyx warned as it backed away from the entrance, what is it? What's wrong? Ice began to form around the entrance and freeze solid the rocks around it. Question mark. An ominous gust of frozen wind continued past them and froze the nearby rock pillars and water pools surrounding them. The two looked gobsmacked before turning back to the entrance. Let's take a look carefully stepping onto the slippery grounds and into the cavern, he brought out a flashlight and looked around. Stopping when the light shined upon multiple glowing blue eyes and numerous growls were heard. Uh oh, Rustboro City, Harbor, the following day. Oh isn't she just adorable Lydia spoke through the x transceiver complimenting Naruto's petite psychic type. R. Ralts the shiny Pokemon shyly kept her head down. Sorry mom, Ralts here's still a little timid when it comes to meeting new people. Nothing to worry about, most Ralts are naturally timid in nature but, they'll usually grow out of it once they evolve Faust stated. Hmm, evolving wouldn't just make her stronger it should help her open up to the rest of the team, I mean, she's already scared of Bayonet and she thinks that if she gets too close to Altaria, she'll tackle her like she does me. Then there's Rayquaza, who she thinks will eat her if she stares at him for too long he thought. The only one she seems to get along with is Corsola and Deoxys he continued while gently petting Ralt's blue hair. Already having been informed of the new Pokemon their foster child had captured, from the data that was given, it was in very much powerful alley. So, any more good news? Oh right, check, this out. Showing both parents his newly acquired gym badge, what's that? The stone badge. Ah, you make us so proud wiping away an invisible tear, so I assume you'll be heading towards Duford Town for the second gym. Faust asked. That's the plan. Well be careful on the way there. Route 105 is a hot spot so be sure to wear lots of sunscreen, wear light clothing, drink lots of water Lydia went on. Hee <laughs> hee, don't worry son. Lydia's just doing her job as a mother causing the blonde trainer to sweat drop. Hey Naruto, oops, looks I am needed elsewhere, I'll call you when I get the chance. Okay, see you later son. Bye Naru-chan. Naruto groaned as he rolled his eyes with a faint blush on his face, he ended the video call and slid the slot back into its watch-like state. What's up, look at what I got. Ash dramatically rose his arm up to show one of few stone badges, holding it high and in front of the sun for a background shadow effect. All right Ash, knew you could do it. You too Pikachu. Pika. For the next 10 minutes the five discussed the battle between Ash and Roxanne, while he deadpanned at the fact that he had captured a Trico, a Pokemon that should have given the advantage, held no grass type moves. While Ash was focused on having Pikachu learn Iron Tail, the boy had forgotten to check up Gecko's stats and move list. While Trico went down first, Pikachu had taken down both of Roxanne's Pokemon, Naruto was in fact impressed that the yellow mouse had recharged his strength by absorbing the electrical power from one of Nosepass's zap cannon. Do you really have to go? I mean we could always travel together May asked. It's a nice offer but, we've all got different goals on our travel, you want to become a coordinator, Brock wants to become a breeder, and both me and Ash want to become Pokemon masters, sorry May but, like other trainers we've got to get the seven other badges if we want to compete in the nationals. May nodded with a sigh, I guess you're right in reality, she wished the blonde to be there when she competed in her first contest. Don't worry too much about it May, I am sure we'll see Naruto again someday Brock mused. You can count on that Naruto agreed. With a nod, they took a step back as the blonde trainer released his flying dragon type. With a chirp Altaria tackled Naruto to the wooden floors, the group chuckled, Ash found it ironic that he had a grass-type Pokemon from Johto with almost the exact same amount of affection. R. Ralts, oops, sorry Ralts Naruto apologized as she was smothered in between the two with comical swirl eyes. Returning her back into her heel ball and climbing aboard the cloud-feathered phoenix, hey Ash getting the Kanto trainer's attention, make sure to train up your Pokemon, I wanna have even more fun on our rematch. Ash grinned, you got it. Okay Altaria, let's go flapping her wings, she gained momentum before taking off into the skies. Later guys, see ya. They all waved their temporary goodbyes, now let's find ourselves a boat. Duford Town same time, 
Here it comes a spike blue haired surfer declares as a rather huge wave approaches the coastline, now. Hariyama use arm thrust. A plump sumo like Pokemon readied its large orange palms as they glow bright white, Hariyama. Striking at the center of the wave and cancelling its cycle upon plowing through it. Good job Hariyama clapping its hands together it gave a bow at the sea, it always found the ongoing mass of water a worthy opponent. Brawly Senpei. That was amazing, you've got to teach us how to do that. A raven-haired bowl-cut boy in a jungle green athletic tracksuit branding a white pokeball on each shoulder stood in awe along with both his Pokemon. The first was a brown humanoid creature with cream-colored segmented arms and legs, along with three fingers and claws, black rings around its eyes and a yellow coloration on its ankles and soles, this Pokemon was known as a Hitmonlee. The second was in fact the first evolutionary stage of Hariyama, with a yellow bulky body, it had a black chest area and two round hands that closely resembled black gloves. It also had two red circles on its cheeks just below its slit-like eyes, and a knot on its head, this Pokemon was known as a Makuhita. Sorry Lee but, until you can beat me in battle it just ain't gonna happen the surfer responded. Lee was a young optimistic trainer who dreamed of becoming a fighting type specialist and to someday battle against the elite four Bruno and Marshall. Ah come on Brawly Senpei, don't be like that getting a sigh from the gym leader, as much as he hated being interrupted during his training sessions, Lee wouldn't stop until he gets what he wants, he was a good kid though kind of a handful at times. Alright you wanna train, fine, let's head to the granite cave returning Hariyama to its pokeball, he heard Lee give a cheerful shout and rushed towards the cave with both his Pokemon trailing behind him, a smile formed on Brawly's face, don't ever change Lee he muttered before following suit. Seven hours later, Duford Island, south. Altaria chirped happily as she pecked into a mago berry. Naruto gulped down a bottle of water upon feeding the rest of his Pokemon. Corsola and Ralts dug into a drash berry while Bayonet and Rayquaza munched on Enigma berries. Deoxys ate several of the common berries until he found his taste buds for the lychee berries. For the DNA Pokemon, it was a completely new food experience compared to the stuff his race ate. Tasteless yet nutritional foods couldn't compare to the edible meals found in the Pokemon world. A few minutes later, a chilly breeze phased through the area, hum. Turning to the source, small snowflakes floated from the mouth of a nearby cave, what was that about? His Pokemon looking in his general direction. Bayonet, Net, the marionette pondered, Deoxys gave an unsure vibe while Corsola and Ralts shared confused looks. Rayquaza remains impassive as Altaria shivered a bit from the cold, it's probably nothing, let's head back to the Pokemon Center, the gym leader should be back by now having arrived at midday Naruto checked up on the gym to see the available time. While it was open for battle, the leader himself had gone out to train his Pokemon due to the lack of trainers there to challenge him. In the meantime, he decided to explore around the island, coming across few wild Pokemon and berries, after several hours of hiking and sightseeing, they decided to take a lunch break near the mountainside. Returning all but, Bayonet and Ralts to their respected poke balls, Bayonet. Net, Net he hovered around his trainer feeling more relaxed than he does within his dusk ball. RRR Ralts sinking backing up deeper into her trainer's chest as Bayonet got up in front of her, Bayonet, speaking of the delicious berries they munched on. Sadly with the shadow effect of the sun gave the marionette a crazed, killer doll look and made her tremble in fright. However Bayonet remained oblivious to the petite psychic type's fear of him and ruffled her hair thinking she agreed with him. Naruto sweat dropped at the scene before nearly tripping over at the sudden rumble of the mountain, RR Ralts. She wondered still slightly shaken by Bayonet's presence. Cracks appeared alongside the wall and was suddenly blasted open as a four-armed boulder grappled against a horned cocoon-like Pokemon. It's a graveler. Naruto spoke in surprise before it pushed back its opponent with all its might. The Pokemon's eyes glowed blue and formed charged a frozen orb in its mouth. Reaching for his Pokédex, Naruto scanned the ice-covered rock, Glalie, the face Pokemon, while Glalie tend to be mischievous, they are considered one of few most loyal Pokemon. Colonies are known to defend their territory with the most harshest of blizzards. A Glalie, but, I thought they only live up in snowy mountains or frozen caves. He muttered until noticing the incoming attack. Ice Beam hit the deck, Bayonet flew up high while Naruto took cover behind on the outer walls of the mountain. 
They watched as a crystal blue ray blitzed out the large hole, freezing the ground and part of the walls surrounding it. The trio took a peek to see the graveler had been frozen solid, whoa, instant freeze, usually it would take several seconds before completely freezing an opponent Ralts and Bayonet gave their trainer a confused look. This isn't a low-level Glalie he gave a stern look with his response. Bayonet, maybe, it does make more sense that for it to be a wild Pokemon, come on let's see if there's a trainer nearby. Hitmonlee use high jump kick, Machop use brick break, slamming a set of Glalie against a wall with a powerful drop kick and a glowing white fist. Three hours of training was interrupted by an ambush, courtesy of Granite Cave's newest residents. Where are all of these Glalie coming from? Brawley pondered, he had lived in Duford Town for most of his life, trained with the cave more than anyone else, yet he has never encountered the ice type before. Brawley Senpei, there's more coming this way, what should we do? Lee asked. Use what you've learned Lee, Pokemon don't just suddenly appear for no apparent reason, be sure to evade Ice Beam and Blizzard, we're getting to the bottom of this. Hmm. If we can beat all these Glalie without getting hit then it'll be one step closer to becoming a specialist. Challenge accepted. Charging head first with Hitmonlee at the incoming Glalie, Lee wait. Attempting to stop the boy from fighting a pointless battle. Ralts. Yeah. Don't see anyone either Naruto replied, having trekked to the lower levels the trio have yet to find any forms of human life, only frozen statues of the Pokemon who have unluckily had a run in with the ice type. Ma Wiles. Geodudes, Zubats, Nosepass, and Onyx all were encased in cold ice. Bayonet, you've found something. Net, with a nod, he motioned his trainer to follow, taking a steep route down to a crevice the battle shouts of Pokemon were heard the closer they crept. They could also feel the chilly wind pouring from their general direction, what, the hell? Coming into view of a half-frozen area, many Aaron and Sableye fasted off against several dozen Glalie. Aaron. The iron armor Pokemon, to make its body, Aaron feeds on iron ore that it digs from mountains, occasionally hunger may drive it to descend from its natural habitat to eat other forms of metal, bridges, rails, road signs, etc. Sableye. The darkness Pokemon. Sableye are naturally friendly Pokemon who feast on gemstones and raw minerals, old tales say that if one were to look into their diamond eyes, the Pokemon will steal one's soul. Bayonet. The marionette pointed out. The Glalie were clearly at an advantage, while Aaron and Sableye were resistant to ice-based attacks it didn't mean they could be frozen solid. Aaron were close-ranged fighters while the Sableye did what they could with Dark Pulse. It wasn't until the Glalie prompted to fire blizzards that Naruto interfered, Ralts put up a light scream, Bayonet used Night Shade. A golden hexagon barrier appeared in front of the struggling Pokemon, while Bayonet's blitz of dark energy caused the Glalie to redirect their attacks alongside the walls. The resident Pokemon backed up in surprise at the sudden appearance of these three newcomers, Ralts tried to round them up with confusion lowering the barrier for a split second, Ralts did what she was told. Grabbing hold of the Glalie she flung them against each other until they were all in one place, Bayonet. Waste M with Shadow Blitz. With his mouth unzipped Bayonet coated himself in menacing violet aura before harshly ramming the Glalie against a wall and crushing the ice on impact. The conscious face Pokemon forced themselves off each other and rose back up, before Naruto could command another attack, the Sableye blow a gust of icy wind. The attack landed and successfully reduced their speed enough for the Aeron to charge ahead with their iron the super effective steel based attacks, the Glalie tumbled down hard. While the Aeron and Sableye cheered, Naruto took the time to ponder, no trainers and more than one Glalie, don't think they're from a crime syndicate otherwise their members would be here to overview the capture process he thought to himself. Bayonet, Ralts he spoke, stopping the marionette's victory dance with the frightened psychic type. Let's go, we've got to find the source of the Glalie and put a stop to it, they're already causing enough damage as it is. The two nodded and joined their trainer deeper into the cave, a pair of Aaron and Sableye looked at one another before taking off after them. Brawly Senpei, are you sure we're going the right way? Pay closer attention Lee, the Glalie that we've been facing up until now are only scouts, they're eliminating any possible threat to their colony before expanding it he explained, as Machop and Makuhita broke the encased Pokemon from their frozen prisons, so what you're saying is, prompting Brawly to continue, the colder the air is the closer we are to the colony he replies. Very well then, Hitmonlee, 
Makuhita. Search the area for any signs of cold. The two Pokemon saluted and followed their trainer deeper into the cave, and there he goes again. Let's go Machop. Better make sure he doesn't hurt himself speaking towards his teammate as it broke him a while free with its fist. Lee continued dashing forward. We're getting closer. I can feel it he said with a grin, not noticing that the breeze was the result of his and his team's running. Maku the chibi sumo stated upon sighting several glaily up ahead, behind the rocks he ordered, changing course and behind the indicated boulders. Okay so here's the plan. Ralts. Placing up a light screen to temporarily blockade the barrage of ice beams, Bayonet hopped overhead and flung several shadow balls. While the Glalie were blown away by the impact of the shadow spheres, Ralts dropped her barrier and held the group in place with confusion, now Bayonet, use Sucker Punch. Naruto directed. With fists glowing violet, Bayonet flew up and towards the downed Glalie and unleashed a flurry of punches, each strike sinking them deeper into the ground. With a final strike, the Glalie were knocked out with several bruises and cracks along their cocoon-like bodies. Good job you two, onward. Now, Hitmonlee use high jump kick. Makuhita follow up with body slam. Hitmonlee, net, taking notice of the fighting type as he phased through the marionette and crashed onto the ground below with a large dust cloud. Maku Hita, looking back to see a Makuhita attempt a body slam who unfortunately phased through Bayonet as well. The Chibi Sumo crashed onto Hitmonlee and created an even larger dust cloud, Naruto, Ralts, and Bayonet sweat dropped at the scene. Hitmonlee, Makuhita, Lee blurted out as he rushed over to his downed Pokemon. Makuhita crawled out of the small crater with little to no damage while leaving Hitmonlee a twitching mess. You know Lee, you really need to stop rushing ahead, I know that you enjoy a challenge but, if it's against a ghost type then you should just call it quits both trainers turning to see Brawly as he lazily walked up to his fellow fighter. Hi, Senpei Lee responded with a crestfallen look, Brawly then turned to the newcomer. Sorry about that, we were investigating the recent appearance of Glalie and Lee here must be mistaken you for one. I it's okay, I am actually here for the same reason, had to stop a struggle between Aaron, Sableye, and Glalie to get by. Good job on your end, don't want any more Pokemon much less travelers to end up frozen as well. So what do we do from here? Not getting anywhere unless we deal with the source. The two continued to discuss the issue concerning the Glalie when Ralts felt a small yet warm breeze hit the back of her head, she turned to come face to face with a pair of diamond eyes and razor sharp teeth, saw, with a shriek, Ralts glomped her trainer in fright. Ralts, what's wrong he wondered before she pointed at the newcomers. And Aaron and Sableye, Lee blinked as he, Bayonet, and Makuhita helped up Hitmonlee. Aaron, Ron, Ron, Aaron, saw, Sableye. I think they're trying to tell us something Lee spoke, Brawly grinned, my best guess is that you know where the Glalie came from the two Pokemon replied with a nod. Well then, by all means, lead the way said Naruto. Eren gave a grunt and prompted the group to follow them, trailing deeper into a darker more colder area. Winds breezed by causing a frosty crust to form around rocks and covering the frozen Pokemon in light coats of snow. During their trek, Lee took the time to properly apologize for mistaking the bayonet for a Glalie. Naruto while aware of the trainer's fighting spirit, decided he would accept his apology if he agreed to a battle, in which case he wholeheartedly agreed, bayonet and Hitmonlee seemed to like the idea. Ralts, she shivered, from both the cold and from the sudden feeling of angered emotions. They were getting close, no doubt the colony would attack on sight, up ahead. Lee pointed out to the many frozen pools ahead of them, However what caught their attention was the ice encased onyx and excavationist, behind them was a large opening leading to a snowy cavern. Asking for bayonets will o wisp, the marionette melted the ice around the captives. The procedure lasted about three minutes to scorch without harming either Pokemon or civilian, once finished the two dropped down gasping heavily for air. Brawly checked up on the man before hefting him over his shoulders, this guy has been frozen for too long and needs medical attention. I don't want to have to leave you two alone but, I've got to get him to the clinic, do whatever you can to stop the Glalie he says. Before taking off he catches sight of the poke ball within the shivering Mon's hand, taking the hint, he returned Onyx to his capsule and took off with Machop at his side. Lee and Naruto shared a glance and trekked into the snowy cavern. Bayonet, Makuhita, Eren, Hitmonlee, and Sableye followed suit, 
Ralts would have caught up with them if she hadn't noticed a shriveled up, dampened map on the cold floors. Taking a look, she gazed upon what looked like a route that led to an ancient civilization. What caught her eyes was that the image contained several horn dots surrounding a ruined castle along with an encrypted message that she couldn't understand, she doubted even her trainer could. Ralts, come on she heard her trainer speak and promptly followed. Dropped water pellets echoed throughout the lowest levels of the cave, along their walls were faint paintings of people and their Pokémon. Heading down a tattered stairwell the eight cautiously crept down as to not echo any sounds that might attract unwanted attention. Makuhita, you said it Lee whispered, having captured Makuhita on word, he could tell that the Chibi Sumo alongside Eren and Sableye had never been to this part of the cavern, nor any Pokémon for that matter. Check out these markings Naruto muttered, placing a hand across the frozen walls. What does it mean? Don't know, all of this is gibberish to me but, it's almost as if the Glalie were. Ralts gave a sudden yelp causing the group to jump, she shakily pointed across towards the pillar between the stairwell, what? The they flinched at the sight of a frozen mummy within a hollowed out, pieces of its decayed skin and an eye appeared to be intact. Oh man, that's a bad way to go Lee spoke. Naruto swallowed the lump in his throat, let's keep moving, don't wanna end up like him now do we? With that said they all continued downwards until they reached the end of the stairwell. What they gazed upon only made them gasp in awe, a shimmering ruined castle of ice surrounded by numerous spiked barricades of the same element. Near the top of the structure did a colony of Glalie encircled the building, each on the lookout for intruders that were foolish enough to approach their home. Gla, taking notice of the two humans and six Pokémon, the Glalie took defense and blocked the entrance to the ruins. Not good stated Naruto as they were quickly surrounded, Hitmonlee, Makuhita, Eren, get ready Lee uttered. Bayonet, Ralts, Sableye, make an opening. Ralts gulped while Bayonet and Sableye gave a menacing grin, without a second thought the two spammed Shadow Balls and Night Shade. Those that missed were redirected back at their opponent by a rebound given by Ralts light screen, while the Glalie were generally surprised by this Lee commanded his own team. Hitmonlee, Blaze Kick. Makuhita give Eren a toss and hit M with Iron Head. Regaining their composure the Glalie fired a trial of ice beams. Hitmonlee sparked his foot ablaze and gave a flurry of kicks, the impact against the ice rays were able to keep them at bay enough for Makuhita to launch the Iron Armor Pokemon. Eren slammed its glowing white helmet-like head on its opponent, surely enough, the colony witnessed the event unfold and began their assault. Go! The two trainers split into their teams, avoiding incoming ice rays and gusts of frozen wind. Naruto were sitting ducks out here, what do we do? Lee shouted, doing everything to avoid the ice beams. Said blonde bit his lower lip, whatever these Glalie were defending it wasn't worth becoming a frozen mummy, no doubt they'll be after us if we even try to escape, unless, Lee we have to scatter them. Naruto shouted, and how, are we, gonna do, that? He replied in between jumps. Naruto dodged to the right and tripped over a pile of frozen rocks, he grunted as a visible red spot appeared on his right leg, he shook the pain away, we have to cause a cave in, have your team weaken the walls, well get the ceiling Lee gave an unsure respond, are you sure about that, it's a risky move, not unless you mind getting crushed hoping there was another way, that wouldn't harm themselves or their teams. We don't have that many options and our Pokemon can't handle an entire colony now are you in or not? Tisk, alright, I am in, Altaria, Corsola, come on out. Giving his luxury and dive ball a toss, out popped the cloud feathered phoenix and living coral, give us cover fire with heat wave and rock blast. With a chirp and a cheer the two moved up front, materializing large rocks and flapping gusts of flames. The Glalie maneuvered around the attacks, countering with their own frost-based attacks, Bayonet, Dark Pulse, Sableye, Nightshade, Ralts, Signal Beam, unzipping his mouth Bayonet unleashed his dark energy in the form of a ray of entangled black-violet circles, followed by a black lightning bolt from Sableye, and a multicolored beam from Ralts. Each blasted across the ceiling, shredding across the frozen rocks. Eren, Metal Claw, Makuhita, Arm Thrust, Hitmonlee, Mega Kick, with arms and legs glowing white and blue, the trio blitzed across the surrounding walls causing fissures to quickly climb towards the ceiling. Altaria shot like a bullet past the Glalie, with each change in course she released more gusts of scorching flames. The face Pokemon naturally gave a chase after the Phoenix, Glaw. 
Opening their slot-like mouths they fired another blue electrical sparks, inkizing mist areas in ice. Altaria flipped back and flapped another heat wave, directly blowing the Glalie away and onto others. Corsola struggled a bit herself, hopping from stone to stone to avoid the ice beams directed at her. She sent earthly cannonballs at every opening she had, unlike Altaria, Bayonet, or any of her other teammates, her bulky body and high defense made her the least mobile of the group. Glaw, an ice beam scaled the frozen grounds towards her. Corsola took a deep breath, letting her cheeks inflate with water and blast herself into the air by with a water pulse. Corsola, she called on top of her frozen pedestal, Altaria swooped in allowing the living coral onto her back. Alta, la, giving acknowledgement, the two performed a drive and shoot tactic, Corsola decided to use something stronger and more widespread. Out of her lips did she let loose silver spheres of prehistoric power. The Glalie dodged left and right, however those hit set off explosions big enough to take down two or three at once. Altaria continued flying and nearly stopped when a small hand-sized rock nearly crashed down on her blue thin feathered head. Taking notice of the large fissures along the ceiling and walls she called out to her trainer, Naruto noticed the duo's predicament, Altaria. I need you to fire your dragon pulse up at the ceiling. She glanced back at the incoming wave of Glalie before turning back to her trainer. She hadn't a clue as to what he was up to but, at least hoped it worked. Gathering power from her dragon affinity she launched a majestic glowing light green orb at her target. Everyone get ready to run! He shouts, getting their attention as Altaria's dragon pulse made impact. Blah! The earth started to shake, the fissures deepened and large boulders began to erupt from the from every direction close to the stairwell. Go, taking the hint, Lee, Aaron, Hitmonlee, Makuhita, and Sableye made a mad dash up the steps. Naruto quickly returned Altaria and Corsola to their poke balls, Bayonet. Ralts, the two shouted, desperately wanting their trainer to hurry as more rocks came tumbling down. It was then that Naruto caught the sight of a small oval-shaped object and an incoming boulder that caused him to change course. Gravity took affect and was close to crushing the blonde trainer. Ralts, immediately used confusion to suspend the frozen rock, Bayonet bolted forward as Ralts easily struggled to keep it up. Naruto blinked upon seeing the inch-close rock, from his prone position and wounded kneecap made it difficult to stand back up. Bayonet luckily tackled Naruto into his own shadow which then extended onto Ralts, she let the stone drop after Bayonet rose back up with their trainer. Ralts fell to her knees, exhausted from after her full use of signal beam and confusion. Naruto took her into her arms and forced himself up to see Lee and the others rush back down, what happened? He asked. The tunnel collapsed, it's too thick to plow our way through he replied. Bayonet gave a worried look, while he could easily phase through walls, the others couldn't. Rocks fell more harsher, much like an avalanche, what do we do? Lee asked. Bidding his lower lip, what can they do? Their only escape route is shut and none of the Pokemon had the skills to dig their way out. Naruto felt a tug on his shirt, glancing down, Ralts gave him a small reassuring smile, Ralts, are you sure you can do this? She mustered up a nod. Lee looked confused, do what? Everyone get close, this is a huge gamble we're about to make gathering around as the rocks began to pile up and blockade the surrounding area. Ralts, use teleport, gritting her small teeth. Ralts was slowly consumed in a multicolored glow, I know you're tired but, you've got to do this, don't give up Ralts, whatever you do, don't give up her glow began to shine brighter and brighter, Lee felt a rock hit the top of his head, ack, uh, Naruto a large rock began to crumble down on their location. Come on, you've got it, just a little more he muttered, Ralts was seriously pushing past her limits, her body screamed for her to stop, she couldn't, wouldn't, ever, give, up. Eyes snapped open, Ralts. Everything went white. Duford Town, outside of Pokemon Center. How long will it take to get here? The Rangers should arrive within the hour, they'll do what they can. Thank you Brawley ended the call, he had informed the Pokemon Rangers of the problem concerning the Glalie and have dispatched whatever groups available to help gather and relocate them. Putting away his poke gear, he would have proceeded back into Granite Cave if not for the sudden flash of light. Naruto. Lee, Bayonet, Hitmonlee, Eren, Makuhita, and Sableye materialized with bots of dust and snow on their clothes and skin. 
W. We made it. Lee asked. Everyone looked around, saw, Sableye and Aaron weren't sure what to make of the situation, as they have never left the cave before. Wait where's Rawl he froze, in fact everyone close enough to see had done so as well. Her body was glowing a crystal blue color which began to grow in size, the glow soon popped revealing an entirely new Pokemon. Her one long dress, while still white, was now shorter much resembling a tutu. Her blue hair reached down to her shoulders and away from her face, she also had two red horns on each side of her head, much resembling hairpins. She was also much taller than her previous form, she was about as tall as Bayonet if not slightly bigger. She, she evolved Lee muttered. Naruto brought out his Pokédex, Kirlia, the emotion Pokémon. Kirlia uses the horns on her head to amplify its psychic powers, during this occurrence reality becomes warped and future events can be seen. Bringing a smile to his face, Naruto hugged his partner, congratulations Ralts, you really pulled through he thought. Whoa, you guys look like you've come on out of a war zone Brawly stated. Brawly Senpei, it was incredible, you should have been there, we took a passageway that led to some ruins, and then the Glalie had us cornered, and then we all triple tag teamed and knocked them down senseless, and then Brawly shoved an Oron berry into his mouth. I get it Lee you can stop now, what matters is that you all made it out in one piece. Then Lee's mind clicked and bit the berry, oh yeah, that reminds me, Naruto, what was that thing you were carrying? All glancing at the blonde, Bayonet sat on his shoulder, wanting to know why his friend would dash off and nearly get himself killed, again. Naruto laughed sheepishly before showing them the oval object, an egg. Said Brawly, said egg was pale yellow in color with a black and orange outlined arrow trailing down the middle. Yeah, it was about to get crushed so, I kinda, acted without thinking he replied, everyone smiled knowing they wouldn't let something as such happen to an unborn Pokemon. The group picked themselves up and walked into the center, after battling countless Glalie, both Pokemon and trainers were both needed time to recover their heat and stamina. Naruto took one last glance at the Granite Mountain, wondering just what it was the face Pokemon were guarding. Granite Cave, Frozen Ruins Safely secured within the semi-collapsed walls of the cave, the Glalie surrounded what appeared to be a chunk of carved ice. The stone radiated with an abnormal frost-like energy, the Glalie's eyes glowed blue for a split second before the light dimmed out. Little Root Town, okay, make yourselves at home while I grab the files Birch spoke before entering his lab. Making way towards an empty table, Minato and Kashina sat their luggage by the chairs and took a seat. While the twins, Ray and Kay, unlike their parents were out in the back field, playing with the lab's Pokemon. A short time afterwards did Birch walk back in with a mildly thick folder, containing several documents on their firstborn child. This is everything I've got, medical records, background information, registered Pokemon he listed out. Both parents scanned through each file, learning all they could from each report taken in the past 14 years. It wasn't until Kashina came across Naruto's trainer I. D photo that she became mesmerized, Minato dropped his current sheet of paper and leaned in against his wife. He looks just like you she spoke, her blonde husband could only nod in agreement. Is there anything else? asked Minato. Not from me, if you want to learn more it's best you talk to his foster parents down in Pacifidlog town. Both parents shared a glance before nodding, do you have their number? He asked. Duford Town, Coast, salt waters cycled beneath the ocean and formed small tides along the surface, impacting against the coast and rising into the air in a splash. Children and teenagers sat alongside the water-carved boulders, both cheering on the two trainers whose battle raged on. Shortly after the events that transpired within the frozen cavern, Naruto and Lee had their Pokémon transmitted into the center for immediate care. Out of everyone in the group, only Bayonet, Hitmonlee, and the newly evolved Kirlia had to remain at rest for an extended time. Sableye and Eren were taken in by Nurse Joy and now aided her alongside Chansey. After retrieving their teammates, Brawly and the Pokemon Rangers had focused on retrieving and relocating the Glalie, having to wait even longer for his gym battle, the two trainers decided to kill time with two-on-two -two Pokemon battle. Play Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness Aust, Normal Battle, Corsola, Spike Cannon, the coral's body glowed a bright white and fired sharp bullet-like spikes from her horns. Hitmonlee, high jump kick, 
Evading the incoming projectiles with a high jump to the sky, Hitmonlee readied a high-powered leg thrust. Iron defense, now, glowing from white to silver metal, the impact from the kick was reduced, follow up with water pulse. At point blank, Hitmonlee was blasted back by an orb of water that quickly exploded into a tidal wave. The fighting type let the current take him until they sunk into the sands and into a complete stop, you all right? Lee asked. Hitmonlee rose up and shook its head several times in attempt to calm its confused state, Hitmonlee, he responded, giving himself a hard slap and snapping his senses to a mediocre level. Corsola, use rock blast. Core, Sola, materializing a rather large boulder and launching it at surprising speeds, Hitmonlee, counter with brick break Lee quickly declared, despite its slightly disoriented line of sight, the kicking Pokemon was able to acknowledge his trainer's orders. With legs glowing white, Hitmonlee struck twice, with the force of the first the boulder was instantly stopped, the second destroyed it as well as sent chunks of stone hurling back at its original sender. Corsola, dodge it with water pulse. Spewing the stream variation of said attack, Corsola boosted herself away from the flying chunks. Well played Naruto but, we're just getting started, Hitmonlee used focus energy. Hitmonlee stomped its legs on the sands and focused its inner energy throughout his body, outlining him in a blue aura. Through this, he was able to regain his senses and snap out of confusion. Be careful Corsola, any of his attacks could do serious damage if we're not careful, you ready? Corsola, pick up speed with water pulse. Naruto commanded. Taking in as a deep breath of air, Corsola launched herself towards several areas surrounding her opponent increasing her speed with each burst of water. Hitmonlee continued to channel all of his focused energy while waiting for orders, don't worry Hitmonlee, just keep it up and wait for an opening Lee thought, while keeping a close eye on the now blurred coral. Now, Hitmonlee used thunder kick, moving to the left with a heel burst full of electricity, Hitmonlee sent the kick flying as Corsola rushed in. Naruto grinned and extended his index finger, fly. Corsola gave a last second stream of water which launched herself skyward and allowing Hitmonlee kick large quantities of sand away. All right, let's hit M with power gem the living coral stopped her boost and charged a glowing orange orb, which dramatically grew in size. Hitmonlee, get ready Lee warned. The fighting type back flipped several feet before applying pressure to its spring-like legs. Corsola, firing the now human-sized orb at the fighting type, high jump kick, now. Hitmonlee released the build-up pressure and jumped high into the sky, narrowly avoiding the energy-based cannonball. Hitmonlee, Naruto went wide-eyed, Corsola, endure it now. He shouted as Corsola took the critical hit and was sent crashing down into the sands below. All right Hitmonlee, cheered Lee, rushing towards his down teammate, Corsola, are you okay? He asked in a worrisome tone. Eyes fluttered open to reveal a light blue aura outlining her eye. Corsola's endure was successful. At a girl giving her room to stand, down but not out, Corsola used recover following orders, her rock hard body shined a reflecting gold color as wounds began to heal. We can't let her get back back to full strength, Hitmonlee used thunder kick. Naruto backed up even further as he watched the fighting type dash towards Corsola, electrical sparks blitzing to life with each step. Corsola noticed her opponent getting closer. She gazed over to her trainer who gave her a reassuring nod. Just as Hitmonlee was mere feet away, Corsola, use light screen. Disabling her health recovering move, the living coral set up a yellow hexagon barrier which nearly caved in under the kick's force. This however caused Hitmonlee to stumble back, now your chance, use iron charge. Declared the blonde trainer, Corsola boosted herself with water pulse and tackled her opponent, but not before hardening her body with iron defense. Hitmonlee was forced back, arching forward while clutching his abdomen. Corsola, finish M with earth power. Hitmonlee, get out of there. Corsola, her body expelled a golden aura before raising her front legs up and slamming them back down. The sand split apart as fissures dug around the sand surrounding Hitmonlee. Soon a golden glow erupted from said fissures and engulfed the Hitmonlee in a ground-based explosion. Hitmonlee. Lee shouted as he watched his Pokemon crash down with heavy scorch marks and swirl eyes. The spectators applauded both trainers, witnessing a spectacular battle that few could ever win against. In the meantime, Naruto and Lee attended to their teammates, Corsola, you did it. Said Naruto, 
as the living coral jumped into her trainer's arms, cheering for her and her partner's victory. We did the best we could Hitmonlee, but I guess it wasn't enough, guess you know what that means Hitmonlee gave a weak nod and a thumbs up, more training. Shouted Lee with fiery determination in his eyes. Brawly whipped the sweat off his brow as he and the Pokemon Rangers had finished loading up the remaining Blaylee into several modified containers. The ice-type Pokemon were scheduled to be transported to a protected resort in the northern areas of Sinnoh. Thanks for assist, it might have taken us longer bring M in on our own. No sweat, just make sure they don't start harming any of the local Pokemon. Will do, alright team let's wrap this up, Ben, Summer, lower the hooks. You got, two brunette pre-teens branding a red ranger vest and goggles, blue white attire, yellow scarf, and a wristwatch capture styler. The two lowered four hooks from the hovering helicopters, before lowering themselves onto the containers, making sure all were hooked on tight, all set. With that they climbed aboard the tossed ladder as the mechanical birds took off and into the horizon. Brawley cracked his neck, man, gathering those Blaley was even tougher than I thought, either way, tis was a good workout, now, where's my challenger he mused. Kirlia, thunder punch, Makuhita, counter with force palm. Both attacks collided, Makuhita's palm technique barely keeping the ballerina's lightning-induced fist away. Makuhita, hit her with arm thrust. Dodge with double team, splitting into three images, the chibi sumo's arm phased right through and allowing Kirlia to gain a distance with her multiplying clones. Makuhita rapidly glanced in all directions in attempt to find his opponent, Lee grew nervous knowing full well that double team was one of the most trickiest moves in Pokemon history. Kirlia used signal beam, I knew it, Lee mentally shouted, witnessing all illusions place their hands on their heads and from their horns, fired a multicolored ray. Well-trained Pokemon who had the ability to preform the technique, were taught how to manipulate their illusions to mirror the user's movements, Kirlia was one of them. Makuhita lift yourself up with whirlwind. Rapidly thrusting his palms below, strong wind's currents began to form and boost the chibi sumo into the air, long enough for the signal beams to phase through the spiraling winds, all except one. There she is, Makuhita, increase the flow and use body slam. Makuhita, increasing the speed of his arm's thrusts, the whirlwind carried him higher into the air before dispersing and allowing Makuhita to preform a high altitude body slam. As the fighting type let gravity do its work, Naruto and Kirlia could only stare at the chibi sumo's descending self. Not needing to be told, Kirlia only walked a few feet away for Makuhita to land face first on the warm sands, this got a sweat drop from both trainers and spectators. Makuhita, you okay, Maku, was his response, body twitching and head spinning. Wobbling back up to his feet, Makuhita got back into stance, looks like that one fall took the most out of him. Lee, can Makuhita still fight? Asked Naruto. The green-clad fighter glanced at his teammate, while slightly dazed gave a nod, Lee smiled, you bet he can. Makuhita let's finish this match, use focus energy. He responded. Makuhita, steam exhausted out of the fighting type's nose, building up pressure much like Hitmonlee. Kirlia gave an unsure glance to her trainer, he's putting everything he's got into his next attack, get ready if it hits, then this battle could end up a close one she gulps and nods. A light breeze passes, go! The trainers shouted. Both Pokemon charged one another. Makuhita, used dynamic punch. Pulling back an arm, his fistless fist glowed red. What? Naruto was completely taken off guard by this, dynamic punch was the strongest of the fist-based attacks and for Makuhita to know it would mean Lee had either taught it to him or was born with it. Kirlia, Move it with confusion targeting the incoming fist, Kirlia's eyes glowed mystic blue while emitting an equal colored aura, Makuhita's trump card was forced away by an invisible force, Makuhita. Lee shouted. There's your opening, Kirlia, hit M with ice punch. End battle theme sequence, pulling back her own fist, the psychic type engulfed it in a swirling misty blue energy and gave it a thrust, Makuhita was frozen within seconds. The audience cheered and applauded for another the second battle of the day, all right. That's how it's done, good job Kirlia Naruto praised, petting her head between her two horns. Kirlia, she responded, enjoying her trainer's touch. Lee gave a relaxed sigh, may not have won, but at least you went down fighting, you make me proud. He shouts, 
crying anime tears of joy as he hugged Makuhita's frozen self. While finding the moment slightly disturbing, Naruto walked up to the duo, that a great match Lee, you did scare me a couple times when you used focus energy, and dynamic punch was something I seriously didn't expect, keep training and taking challenges and you'll definitely become a fighting specialist in no time he responded. Lee shook the comical tears off his face, thanks Naruto, I am sure if Makuhita wasn't frozen head be just as ecstatic as I am. Unbeknownst to the two, Brawley had arrived in time to witness the battles and smiled at the blonde's show in sportsmanship, it's gonna be fun battling you kid he muttered. Evening, this stuff, is really good, what is it? Naruto spoke between bites, in his hand was an unwrapped, almond-coated chocolate bar. It's a rage candy bar, these things are popular over in Mahogany Town, almost impossible to get a hold of. Really, how come? Any shops selling them are sold out minutes after they become available Lee replies before taking a bite of his own bar. Wrapping up his snack, Naruto unzipped his bag and carefully placed it next to the overgrown egg. Having it confirmed by the local gym leader, the still-developing Pokemon was indeed a snowrunt, Glolly's first evolutionary stage. Alright guys, let's have some last-minute training. Let's go, Kirlia, Bayonet, giving his heel and dusk ball a toss. Both Pokemon stretched their limbs and took a deep breath of fresh air, net. He mused, turning to Kirlia while letting the sun shadow his figure, he gave a Cheshire grin to his teammate. KKK Kirlia, she trembled at the sight of the red-eyed, razor-toothed puppet and rushed over to her trainer's side. Bayonet pulled a Noctowl and shrugged at Lee and his Pokemon in confusion, they in turn were disturbed that the ghost type could spin his head in a 360 formation when a human can't. They now understood why Kirlia held a fear for him. Bayonet, stop scaring Lee. I I wasn't scared, just creeped out. Yeah, he tends to leave that impression on people he turns to his ghostly companion. Come, we're gonna need your willow wisp. Net, Kirlia, both Pokemon wondering what kind of training their friend would put them through. The following day, pacing down the rocky pathway across the ocean's surface, Naruto and Lee trekked towards a stone fortress-like island, locally known as the Duford Town Gym. Are you ready? Brawly Senpei is no pushover the bowl-cut teen asked. Relax Lee, I didn't train my team for nothing he calmly replied. Soon the two entered the stone gym and continued down the corridors, droplets of water and wind currents were heard throughout the open gaps of the gym. Upon reaching the center, they spotted Brawly in a meditative position on the farthest side of the battle stage. You're a real wildcard, you know that right the blue-haired surfer picked himself up and dusted his shorts, caught a bit your battle yesterday, I must say I am impressed, not many trainers can battle the way you do Naruto scratched his head sheepishly. Honestly, it's gotten me pretty damn psyched for this match bringing out a poke ball. Three on three, no substitutions, do you accept these conditions? Naruto grinned and swiped out his luxury ball, hi, was his response, all right then. As official gym leader, I accept your challenge. Play Pokemon Coliseum Ost, vs Battle 2. Lee, do you mind refing? Yosh, it'll be my pleasure, Brawly Senpei. He quickly replied before trotting over to the right hand side of the field. Are both trainers ready? Ready, they both shouted. Begin, Machoke, I choose you. Giving his capsule a toss and out popped an adult sized, gray skinned, bipedal Pokemon. With a bodybuilder's structure, it carried several dark red vertical stripes up and down both arms, three light brown ridges on its reptilian head, and a pair of black shorts with a golden belt with a single red P on the buckle. Machoke, Brawly Senpei, did Machop evolve? Last night actually. Naruto instantly went for his Pokédex, Machoke, the superpower Pokémon. Machoke's muscles are said to be hard steel and is capable of lifting extremely heavy objects with a single finger. Despite its immense strength, it is naturally modest and often helps people in manual labor glancing over at said Pokemon, Machoke flexed its muscles and cracked its knuckles, signifying its combat readiness. Okay, Altaria, let's win this. Releasing his cloud-feathered phoenix, who promptly tackled him. Brawly chuckled at the scene, the bird had a sincere affection for her trainer, as do most Pokemon who are well taken care of. Managing to gently pry the phoenix off, Naruto and Altaria got into their respected positions as they awaited for Brawly to start the match. Bulk up, Machoke, he commanded, 
Machoke glowed red as flexes his muscles, increasing his attack and defense capabilities. Starting off with a stat boost, alright, two can play at that game, Altaria used Dragon Dance. Cloud Feathered Bird twirled up into the sky, her body becoming consumed in a fiery blue aura. Let's go, Aerial Ace. Reaching the open ceiling, Altaria torpedoed herself in a shroud of white streaks, Machoke, brace for impact. Brawly ordered. Just as Altaria zoomed in, Machoke took the impact and was pushed back several feet, however managed to hold the phoenix in a vice grip. Oh crap, thought the blonde trainer. Submission, now. Altaria, cotton guard, quickly allowing her feathers to poof out like a large pillow, Machoke grapples his target with both legs and wildly slams phoenix around the stage, causing minimal damage due to her cushion-like defense. Take him high, Altaria. While struggling to release her wings, Altaria began pecking Machoke's head, said fighting type felt extreme pain from the bird's sharpened beak, loosing his grip on the flying dragon type. Forcing her wings out of the grapple, Altaria flew up, taking the fighting type with her. Machoke, don't let go. Use superpower, Brawly shouted. Working through the pain, Machoke's body glowed a bright red and used one arm to hold on to Altaria while revving back the other. That move can bring Altaria down if it lands Naruto thought in slight panic. Altaria, shake him off. Not needing to be told twice, the phoenix began to spin rapidly, forcing Machoke's arm to sway. Altaria began crashing the buffed out Pokemon against the stone walls in attempt to remove him from her. Flying from wall to wall, Machoke felt his world go blurry from the super effective hits given from the flight based attacks, with momentum. Machoke swung himself with the following change of course and slammed a superpowered fist into Altaria. Altaria, Machoke. The two trainers gasped as both came tumbling down in a large dust cloud. Naruto was greatly worried for his Pokemon, the amount of strength behind superpower was enough to take down an opponent with a single hit. Soon enough the dust cleared and both Pokemon were struggling to stand, come on Altaria you can do it. Naruto called out. Altaria chirped weakly as she managed to bring herself back up, flinching ever so visibly from the pain inflicted upon her. Bulk up Machoke. The two turned to the fighting type who had managed to pull himself to one knee glowed red, allowing his muscle mass to increase ever so slightly. Ready, Ma, choke, let's go, thunder punch, Machoke. Blitzing a fist full of lightning, he limped charged his opponent. Naruto glanced at Altaria. Her wings had taken severe damage from the fall and was currently grounded. However, he would most certainly not let his teammate take a super effective hit, Altaria, use Dragon Breath. Blast version, Naruto commanded. Taking a deep breath, Altaria gathered as much draconic energy as possible before spewing a large transparent violet fire ball. Machoke, dodge it, Brawly shouted, however was too close to evade and Machoke was struck across the stage and slammed against a wall. Machoke, Brawly shouted as his Pokemon fell to the ground and into unconsciousness. Machoke is unable to battle, Altaria wins. Lee proclaimed, Brawly sighed and returned Machoke to his Poke Ball. He glanced over at the blonde trainer who was attending his Pokemon, I wish you could rest Altaria, I really do, but we've got to pull through for this next round, are you ready? He asked. Altaria, not willing to let her trainer down, gave a nod and a weak chirp in response. Naruto backed up and back to his position, let the second round, begin. Lee stated. Hariyama, I choose you. Brawly tossed his second poke ball and releasing the evolutionary stage of Makuhita. Hariyama. The arm thrust Pokemon, when its body tenses, its muscles become as hard as stone and can build power by stomping the ground below its feet. When its strength has reached maximum efficiency, it can be powerful enough to stop a running train with a single thrust the Pokédex played its information. Not another powerhouse Naruto thought, Altaria gaining her attention, let's give em everything we've got he stated with her chirping weakly in agreement. Hariyama, use belly drum. Hariyama, body glowing red, the sumo Pokémon slapped his large hands against his belly, while causing damage to himself, it effectively rose its base attack power. Now Hariyama, Use Force Palm. Clapping its hands together, each shined bright white before charging the downed phoenix. Altaria, counter with Dragon Pulse. This caught the gym leader's attention, she knows that move. He thought in surprise, 
wondering just how strong the cloud-feathered flying dragon type really was. Hariyama block it. The sumo Pokemon thrusted his white palms forward as Altaria unleashed a stream of pulsing, turquoise draconic energy. Hariyama grunted as he felt himself be forced back several feet, even in her weakened state, she still has the strength to fight back thought the surfer, Hariyama, bulk up and push back he ordered. Like Machoke, Hariyama glowed bright red and slowly forced through the bluish-green flames. Altaria, Naruto muttered, knowing full well that Hariyama would eventually her and finish what Machoke couldn't, maximum power. Naruto shouted, placing the last of her strength in her blazing flames, Hariyama was now fighting to stay in place, keep it up, use force thirst. Brawly ordered. The sumo's palms shined brighter and like his original arm thrust, he sent a multiple strikes against the draconic stream, Altaria Naruto warned, brace yourself he stated as Hariyama stepped out of the flames, ready to force palm, and slammed Altaria into the ground, creating spiderweb cracks beneath her. All three trainers stood silent upon witnessing Altaria's unconscious form, Altaria is unable to battle, Hariyama wins. Lee announced. You did good Altaria, now rest up, you deserve it returning the phoenix to her luxury ball. Round 3, begin, let's take M down Bayonet. Swapping the luxury ball for his dusk ball, Naruto gives it a toss, releasing his starter. Bayonet, giving his trademark grin and childish laughter, this got a nervous look from the gym leader. While Bayonet did a marvelous job of installing a slight ominous feeling for the surfer, Hariyama was the one Pokemon on his team that did not possess the anti-ghost type move, making this round nearly impossible to win. Glancing at his partner, Hariyama was emitting steam from his overweight body, was also covered in scorch marks and currently breathing for extra fatigue. Forcing himself through Altaria's full-powered dragon pulse was definitely not the brightest move, Bayonet, use Sucker Punch. Snapping out his thoughts by his opponent's voice, Brawly turned back to see the marionettes slam both tri-pronged fists together and engulf them in a violet aura. Bayonet's grin widened and bolted through the air and posing to strike, Hariyama, counter with thunder punch. Clenching his orange palms and engulfing them in a high volt electricity. Meters away from clashing, Bayonet, use shadow sneak. Naruto ordered, swapping from charge to dive, Bayonet sunk into Hariyama's profile. As a confused Hariyama thrusted a fist full of lightning, the ghost type rose up and nailed the sumo with his sucker punch, causing him to stumble back by the force behind the fist. There's an opening, nightshade, now, bonnet, eyes blitzing black, the marionette unleashed a dark electrical ray, Hariyama. Brawly shouted as his Pokemon was forced to his hands and knees under the assault, Bayonet, take him down with shadow ball. Hearing his trainer's command, Bayonet's grin spread to near psychotic levels as he cupped both his palms together to form the malicious orb, seconds before flinging it. Hariyama, dodge it, barely catching his partner's words, the sumo rolled away as sphere shot past him. Yes, Brawly fist pumped, not getting away that easily Naruto muttered as Bayonet suddenly appeared behind the fighting type. No way the gym leader spoke in disbelief, Bayonet had caught his own shadow ball and had focused more energy to it giving it an unstable look. Before he could declare an evasion, Bayonet had already plunged his shadow ball against Hariyama, thus causing a small-scale explosion. Both trainers waited for the dust to settle before catching the sight of an unconscious fighting type and a victory-posing ghost type. Hariyama is unable to battle, Bayonet wins. Lee declares. Yash, that's how it's done Bayonet, give me three. High-fiving the three-fingered ghost. Your bayonet they heard Brawly speak, it's one of your stronger Pokemon isn't he? He asked. Naruto only smiled, you could say that was his reply. I've battled many trainers in the past but none of their Pokemon have ever been able to show the amount of speed and power that he possesses, it gives me chills just thinking about it, it's really got my blood pumping. He said with a grin, in which Naruto returned. Hariyama, return, shooting the transparent beam from the capsule. Hariyama was safely returned to his poke ball. Round 4. Begin, Lee declared. Metacham, join the fray. Giving his third and final poke ball a toss, out popped a bipedal, humanoid Pokemon that strongly resembled a yoga practitioner. Its head was covered by a red headpiece with three bulb like extensions, while also wearing a pair of puffy red pants with large yellow spit on the knees along with yellow bands on its hips. 
Naruto brought out his Pokédex for the third time. Medicham, the Meditate Pokémon, through the power of meditation and fasting, Medicham has developed a sixth sense, allowing it use of psychonetic powers the handheld encyclopedia stated. A fighting, psychic type, this won't be easy Naruto thought as he read Troth the entry, Bayonet, burn her with willow wisp The marionette spent no time creating the mystic blue fireballs. Bayonet, the ghost type launched himself into the air before letting his wisps fall like meteorites, Medicham, detect it now. Brawley commanded, Medicham acknowledged, with glowing green eyes she effortlessly evaded the incoming fireballs. While maneuvering around the hell storm, Medicham gave Bayonet a smug look, effectively pissing him off. Bayonet then doubled the amount of fireballs launched. Medicham, use calm mind the yoga Pokemon took a leap to the side and focused her internal energy, clearing all thoughts and allowing her body to relax. Bayonet lashed them to the right hearing his trainer's command, Bayonet manipulated the airborne wisps towards the meditating Pokemon. Medicham dodge and use foresight. Foresight. Naruto thought in surprise as Medicham followed her orders, jumping back and creates a light blue veil which then expanded throughout the room. This placed the young trainer on the edge, Foresight removes a ghost spectral ability, leaving them vulnerable to both fighting and normal type moves. Not gonna lie, that was a smart move Naruto spoke. Playing fair wasn't part of the rules, besides, Medicham can't just dodge and use confusion the entire round Brawley explained. Hum. I see your point, all right then, let's play rough Naruto replies with a dark grin, Bayonet mimicking his trainer, I probably should nt have told him that thought the blue haired gym leader. Bayonet, plant a curse on Medicham. With a golden Cheshire grin, Bayonet plucked a pin from his bushy tail, Medicham. Stop him with confusion, Brawly countered. The yoga Pokemon rose a palm and with eyes glowing blue, instantly captured Bayonet with an unseen force. Ain't happening. Bayonet zap her with night shade. While immobile from Medicham's force grip, Bayonet was able to lay his eyes on her and unleash the black electrical rays. Dodge it, she heard her trainer shout, dropping her grip and jumping back, allowing the rays blitz to cross the stage, Bayonet had already sunk the pin into his chest. Now we're both at a handicap Naruto mused. Brawley grinned knowing he was right, while Bayonet could be harmed by normal means now. Medicham was now cursed by a life-draining supernatural phenomenon. As a fighter, he himself relished a challenge. Works for me, Medicham use high jump kick and follow up with ice punch. Bayonet, dodge and counter with shadow claw. Net, Bayonet, he responded, engulfing his right hand in a dark violet energy. Medicham crouched before jumping up to Bayonet's level, her fist swirling blue in a frozen haze. She delivered the first kick which was easily swatted away by the ghost type, then, with a quick backlash she nailed Bayonet with, a non-frozen fist. Brawley stood confused, what happened? He wondered as Medicham was slammed onto the stage by an extended shadow claw. Sorry, but Bayonet fights better when he's not frozen. This got the surfer thinking, how could the marionette stop an attack without physically touching Medicham? His mind then clicked in a look of surprise, figured it out. Naruto spoke, with Lee looking confused as ever. It's Bayonet's hidden ability isn't it? Naruto chuckled sheepishly, guilty as charged, Bayonet's got a cursed body, an ability that disables any move in your Pokemon's arsenal, which Bayonet was able to accomplish upon dodging that first kick he explained. I thought as much, cursed body can only be activated by touch, you and Bayonet make an excellent team. I thank you for the compliment. However I do believe it's time we win this match, Bayonet used Dark Pulse. Unzipping his mouth, the ghost type unleashed his strongest attack, Medicham, used Detect. Brawly quickly commanded, wobbling back to herself up, Medicham attempted to preform the move requested, however found that she couldn't as an intense pain pulsed throughout her body, Bayonet's curse was taking effect, she was blasted back down by a black and violet beam of intertwined circles. Me, Dickum. She twitched, hastily attempting to pick herself up, only to gain many more painful throbs from her curse, it was soon too much for her and fell unconscious. Medicham is unable to battle, Bayonet wins. End battle theme sequence. Both Naruto and Bayonet jumped up and gave another high five in victory, we did it. He shouted. Bayonet, net, Bayonet, he flew around in victory. Brawly smiled as he returned Medicham to her poke ball, Bayonet was a real trickster always unpredictable, 
never knowing what he will do next, just like his trainer. Watching Naruto celebrate, with Lee complimenting him on what he called an amazing battle, Naruto he called out, gaining the blonde's attention. Battling you was just about the most fun I've had in months, I can honestly say I hope we can do battle again. The blonde trainer cupped his hands behind his head, you've got it he replied, getting a chuckle from the gym leader. Now, for defeating me in battle, it is my honor as gym leader to present to you with this reaching into his pocket, he brought out a small case. Inside was a small badge that closely resembled a blue boxing glove with a large orange thumb, the knuckle badge. The sun shined from the ceiling's opening, allowing the badge to shine brightly within the blonde's hand, yada. He cheered as he held it high. Brawley checked his wrist watch and his smile grew into a grin, the tides should be going high in another 20 minutes, after attending our Pokemon or either of you two up for some surfing. Naruto and Lee shared a glance before shouting out, Yosh! Route 108, all right men, hoist her up order to ship captain. Following orders, one of the crew members hopped onto the controls and operated the boat's crane while the others readied their hook poles. Soon a net rose from the salt waters carrying many flopping Magikarp and Remoraid. Captain I think we've hit the mother load a sailor exclaimed as he and the crew used their poles to close the net's opening as the crane reeled it in. Before it could fully be brought out of the water, two blurs zoomed by, one white and blue, the other red and blue. The wind trailing behind them alongside the weight of all the captured fish was enough to sway the net and tear it off the crane's hook. Hey, what the hell, shouted the captain, as their catch was regretfully returned to the ocean. Sorry, was all that was heard from afar. Flying close to the water's surface was Naruto, Altaria, and Deoxys. Having won their second gym and taking the time to relax for a few days, the blonde trainer decided it was time to head out towards Marvel City and their third gym badge. Route 119 Weather Institute. Cast form. A small yet large-headed Pokemon that strangely resembled a plain gray cloud. Its outburst gained the attention of its trainer and head of the Weather Institute. Cast form. Something wrong. The petite cloud Pokemon hovered over to several monitors and active equipment. Cast form. It motioned. Bart followed and noticed a sudden change in weather within the southern oceanic area. Whoa, taking seat and focusing half of the equipment on the aquatic route, hmm, this rain can't be natural, the readings are completely off, it's gotta be a rain dance, even so it could only cover a small area and this takes up half the route, unless, oh my god the meteorologist bolted from his chair and towards a nearby intercom. Ryan, alert Slateport City and Duford Town have them bring in any fishing and passenger boats out at sea. Wait, what's going on? Gyarados, with Naruto, dark clouds rolled in as heavy rains dropped, here I thought the day would be sunny, we've got to get out of this rain thought Naruto, his body and clothes dripping wet aboard Altaria. Deoxys, fly ahead, see if you can find shelter. The red and blue alien gave a nod in a morphed in his speed form before taking off at mock speed. Naruto and Altaria continued their trek across ocean, making sure to keep a minimum distance from any possible thunderclouds and growing tidal waves. It wasn't until the salt waters began to sway in different directions that gave the blonde trainer an unnerved feeling. Suddenly, from the depths of the now dark waters, shot a pair of blue serpentine, dragon-like Pokemon. Whoa! shouted Naruto as Altaria arched back and away from the water snakes. One roared and sunk its fangs onto its fellow Gyarados, the snakes crashed around on the water's surface biting onto each other's scales. A third snake shot out of the water and tackled the two back underwater. Altaria, let's get out of here, shouted Naruto, he knew how dangerous Gyarados could be if enraged, and there were currently three engaged, none of which seemed to care for their surroundings. One rose from the water whilst charging an orange orb in its gaping jaws, Hyper Beam. Altaria shifted her wings and increased her speed while avoiding the incoming ray of destruction. The water, flying type continued to fire its strongest attack, obliterating anything in its path. Three others soon joined the fray and fired both Hyper Beam and Hydro Pump. Duck, ordered Naruto, the phoenix acknowledged and dove to avoid an incoming ray. Both had their backs turned to see if any more were being fired in their general direction, time slowed down as a fifth Garayados rose before them. With growl it charged up a hyper beam, oh crap thought the blonde in panic. Before the ray could be fired, the sea serpent was struck down by an unseen plasma ball. 
Gyarados roared in pain as the waters exploded into the air, sending it deep into the abyss. Thanks for the save Deoxys spoke Naruto, grateful that the DNA Pokemon had come to their aid in time. Deoxys gave a nod and pointed one of his tentacles over to the north, lead the way motioned Naruto. Leading away from the rampaging Gyarados, the trio found themselves in front of a shipwreck, its metal rusted, its hull breached, and several tattered openings were seen across the abandoned ship. As the three prepared to dock, Naruto caught a glimpse at the worn title. The S. S. Cactus was its name, and it all but brought forth an unknown nostalgic feeling up the blonde's spine. Burr, it's amazing how cold you actually are when you're out of the storm, Altaria can you dry up my clothes with heat wave? He asked. Not certain it was an all too good idea, Altaria raised her wings and flapped a gust of small flames. Allowing himself to get hit, Naruto quickly patted away the flames, leaving his attire somewhat dry and steamy. It'll do, thanks Altaria, you two Deoxys the phoenix chirped happily, while Deoxys stared at his trainer in bewilderment. Where humans resistant to fire? The trio turned to the rather dark corridor leading deeper into the wrecking, doesn't look like the storm will let up anytime soon and I rather not tango with all those Garayados, come, let's do some exploring reaching into his belt he removed his dusk ball and brought out bayonet. The ghost type only had to look once at the dark staircase for him to grin manically, bayonet, give us light with flash. Spoke Naruto. Net, bayonet, he acknowledged, raising both hands and materializing a small white orb which hovered over the four, greatly illuminating the area. Look at this place, looks yet doesn't seem that old does it? Asked Naruto, examining the walls, tattered paintings and fallen furniture. Net, chirp, zizidits, they all agreed. As they proceeded down into main hall, Naruto gripped his head as his surroundings seemed to revert back to its original state. The wet shredded walls and broken wooded doors flickered between fancy walls and chandelier hallway lights, Naru chan cooed a woman's voice. Naruto snapped his head to the right, there stood a beautiful red-haired woman seconds before her image flashed to reveal himself staring at a broken mirror. Net, getting his attention, why yeah, I just, thought I saw, he replied as he placed a hand on the snapped glass. Arriving into the main hall, the four rested near the stairs, gazing onto what was left of the cruiser. Naruto furrowed his eyebrows in deep thought, the woman he had seen earlier was no doubt his mother, he had also seen blurred images of his father and other unknown assailants. Net, chirp, Naruto sighed, I don't know guys, it's this strange feeling I've got, it's almost like I've been here before he got up from his seat and stepped onto the glass shattered floors. Ever since we passed that hallway, I've started seeing things, things that aren't there, my head aches every time I think about it, do you think it's possible that I am just trying to remember something? Bayonet and Altaria gave their trainer an unsure response while Deoxys grew curious of these visions his trainer was experiencing. Levitating over to Naruto, he morphed his tentacles into arms and motioned the blonde to take it, the three were confused by the action but was slowly taken. Eyes glowed bright violet as glass, wood, and metal rose from the ground and sunken floors, attaching themselves to their original place and giving the once tattered ship and regal look. Little by little the hall filled with near-solid images of both people and Pokemon. Naruto and his team couldn't help but feel awed by what Deoxys had brought forth. Naru-chan Slowly turning his head, he froze upon seeing two individuals who stood out amongst the rest, his parents. Holding a small bundle in her arms, Kashina cooed at the blonde's younger self, using a handkerchief to wipe the drool off the infant's mouth. Congratulations you two stated one Samuel Oak. Ah, so cute, giggled Araya Juniper. What's his name? asked Birch. Naruto. Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze Minato proudly replied. Naruto stood in silence, Namikaze, my surname, he muttered before flinching as a black-suited man with a black beard and rough short hair phased through him. Naruto watched as he passed along a small hand-held device to another, this one wearing a black and blue suit with a bandana wrapped around his arm, what caught the blonde's eye was the arrow-shaped emblem embedded on it. Minato, glad you could make it. Mr. Stone, Ms. Namikaze, if you don't mind me borrowing your husband for a moment. Our colleagues would like discuss the meteorite he discovered. By all means, I've got little Naruto here to keep me occupied, isn't that right? Her caring smile and motherly tone earned her a bubbly laugh from her child. 
This is amazing. Deoxys the red and blue alien glanced at his trainer. Thank you his almost always hardened expression, softened. Hey, watch it. The four turned their attention over a pair of individuals, both dressed formally however only one carried an ocean blue bandana similar to the black suited man. He bent over to quickly grasp and hide an object within his jacket, this made the blonde's eyes widen, that was a detonator. He thought. Time sped up as everyone began to move at a rapid pace, is Naru-chan sleepy? Okay, let's put you to bed spoke Kashina, if Minato asks, let him now I went back to our room with a nod from the professors, she carried her child back to their cabin. As everyone continued to speed up, Naruto came to realize that everything he and his team were witnessing was based off his memory as an infant. The rapidly progressing sequence became obvious that his younger self wasn't awake to experience it, the memory became blurry almost diminishing, until the first explosion hit. The memory cleared to show trainers and their Pokemon doing battle with many individuals of white and blue, Manatric use Thunder Wave. Naruto watched his father as his four-legged companion chain linked several Mightyena, Golbat, and Crodont in a paralyzing bolt of lightning. Exeggutor, Hypnosis, Superior, round them up with Leaf Tornado. Naruto watched as his father looked around desperately for something, or rather someone, Minato, there after the meteorite shouted stone motioning towards the glass-encased space rock. The black-suited man stood before it with his rather large crawdont as he ordered it to smash the glass. Manatric, charge up ordered Minato, Manatric growled and quickly began to gather mass amounts of electrical energy, aim at the meteorite and use charge beam. Giving a roar, sparks began to emit off the yellow wolf's body, he opened his jaws and fired a concentrated ray of lightning. As the man prepared to grasp the stone he quickly noticed the incoming attack and jumped away, allowing the blow to obliterate the rock into nothingness. You, goddamned bastard! Gritting his teeth in anger at losing the objective, Matt, Amber, the objectives lost, call a full retreat, we're sending this boat into the abyss speaking into an earpiece. Without warning, the grunts returned their Pokemon and quickly ran as their leader brought out a detonator, sayonara he said as he pressed the side trigger not seconds later were explosives heard and felt. Wood was shredded as metal was blasted, water began to fill the hull at an alarming rate. The guests returned their Pokemon and made a dash for the lifeboats. Oak, Kashina, where is she? She went back to the room, hurry. Don't know how much longer the ship's going to last. Manatric, let's go. The two bolted up the stairs and towards the first class cabins, Naruto raced after his father with his team following suit. A nearby explosion was heard and the cruiser began to rock as flames began to spread, smoke started to escape into the hallway making it slightly difficult to see. Suddenly, a baby's cry was heard from a nearby room, Kashina. The elder blonde shouted. Minato, in here, Manatric, use wild charge, he ordered. Shrouding himself in a lightning-based armor, Manatric plowed through the door and into the room. Naruto watched helplessly as the cabin began to detach itself due to its weakened state, his mother and father dashed for each other as the room fell to the ocean depths. Holding on to the edge, Minato, take Naruto, I can't hold him much longer. The elder blonde reached out, desperate to save their child, Manatric held onto his master's shirt, in aid as he reached further, sadly, it was all in vain. Naruto the memory sequence ended as both heartbroken parents disappeared along with the growing flames, leaving only the opening view to the now calming storm. Naruto dropped to his knees as tears flowed freely down his cheeks, after eight long years, he finally knew how his separation came to be. He felt his arm move as Altaria snuggled underneath it, Bayonet placed a hand on his shoulder, Net, Net, Bayonet he said in comfort. Deoxys, not knowing how to help in such situations, followed Bayonet's lead and placed a hand on his other shoulder. Not seconds later did Corsola and Kirlia pop out of their poke balls, sensing his sorrow, the two nuzzled against the blonde, hoping to do what they could to comfort him. Naruto wiped his still falling tears, T thanks guys his voice raspy from his water drops. Four hours later, Naruto opened his eyes and gave a yawn, having grown physically tired from his grief, he and his Pokemon had rested on one of the less moistened beds. He smiled as his team with the exception of Deoxys, snuggled closely to him, freeing his hand from Altaria's feathers he gently shook his team awake before leading them back towards deck. The rain had nearly stopped pouring, 
dribbling few drops across the sea. The calm waters and light breeze gave hint that the Garayados have subsided their rage for the time being. Glancing up at the gray skies, Mom, Dad, wherever you are, I know we'll meet again someday, and I can only hope you'll be there to see me compete in the Nationals he thought with a smile. Come on guys, to Slateport City, his team cheered. Question mark. Sir, permission to speak? An aqua grunt asked. Granted a familiar black-suited man responded, now wearing his bandana overhead and an aqua emblem necklace. We've yet to find any trace of the meteorite's cosmic energy, however our radar picked up something rather interesting. Interesting you say, how so? We've detected an ominous wavelength near the Duford Islands, the readings are immense, sir I believe we've found one of the keystones. This made their leader's eyes widen in surprise, let's see the sheets the grunt handed over the printed reports, watching alongside the admins as their leader quickly skimmed through the papers. No doubt Team Magma would have caught on as well, Amber, Shelley, Matt, the three of you will take a team and secure the keystone, it must and fall into their hands do whatever you must to retrieve it, failure is not an option, do I make myself clear? Yes, Commander Archie, as for you he glanced at the grunt, ready a boat, there's something in Slateport I must see for myself. Slateport City, three days later, a little higher, a bit more, perfect, declared one of three contest judges, having watched Bayonet and Altaria lift and attach flower bouquets around the pillars and higher walls of the stadium. Looking good you guys the judge turned to see Naruto and Corsola as they came in carrying beautifully crafted vases blooming with exotic flowers, these are the last of them, where would do you want em? He asked. By the steps, if you please. Naruto nodded and placed both vases besides the five step stairs that led up towards stage, thank you so much for the help, we weren't expecting to get a third shipment and with everyone so busy with the first two, we didn't think we could get this all done on time exclaimed the judge. It's nothing, could always use the extra zenny. The man gave a chuckle, yes, well, thanks anyway, you can pick up your earnings in the main lobby he explained. Giving a nod, Naruto motioned his team to follow before leaving the building with an envelope containing 4500 zenny. Come on guys, lunch is on me he said, earning a cheer from his team. The contests were only a few days away and Naruto was looking forward to watching Mei compete for the first time. He was also looking forward to browsing the marketplace, with their fresh foods and ripe berries made at the ideal place to resupply. There was also several merchants selling trainer equipment like poke balls, vitamin drinks, and TMs, specialized movesets that could be taught to specific Pokemon. Half an hour later, Naruto and most of his team found themselves enjoying a bit of the local seafood, along with some freshly squeezed lemonade and Kalo's imported puffs. Hmm, where's everybody going? He spoke, spotting many civilians rush towards the beach. Oh, haven't you heard? Every Tuesdays and Thursdays the town square and beach areas are cleared out for public Pokemon battles a waitress replied. You don't say, spoke Naruto, glancing at his Pokemon who in return gave a determined look, sounds like fun. Slateport town square momentarily, Girafarig, use Psybeam, Lino one, dodge and use Mud Slap, Meryl, hit him hard with rollout. Louder, stop her with supersonic. Naruto watched left and right as pairs competed in both single and double battles, wow, this is almost like those battle spots in the Pokemon leagues he muttered. Kirlia, she mused from her trainer's shoulder. Oi, you with the Kirlia. Naruto snapped his attention to the source, a dark-haired teen with red twin fang markings on his cheeks wearing a grey hooded sweater, jeans, and shoes. Sitting next to him was a young Growlithe, an orange pup with tiger strip markings around its body, haven't seen you before, you a tourist? Or a trainer? He asked. Naruto grinned, yeah, I am a trainer he responded. The teen gave a chuckle, well that's good he brought out a poke ball, what do you say, y'all up for a battle? He asked, hey, I am always up for a challenge his response caught the attention of nearby trainers and viewers and made room for the two. Name's Kiba by the way. Naruto he responded. Good to know, now, Akamaru, show him what you're made of. His Growlithe gave a bark in response and dashed onto the battlefield. Naruto gave Kirlia a glance, think you can handle it? He asked. With slight hesitation, she gave a nod, hopped down, and took the stage. Play Pokemon Coliseum Ost, vs Battle 1. 
Akamaru, start off with take down. With a bark, the Growlithe took a running start, the Growlithe picked up speed and prepared a full body tackle. Kirlia, use reflect, raising arms, Kirlia formed a multicolored barrier which the orange pup had sadly crashed against, follow up with thunder punch. He ordered. Oh crap, dodge and use flamethrower. Akamaru regained his barring enough to notice the incoming fistful of lightning, taking his master's words into consideration, he jumped back and out of range before spewing a stream of flames. Double team, quick, splitting image, Kirlia created multiple illusions of herself. Navigating through each clone undetected, she successfully evaded the incoming flames. Hiding her we, Akamaru sniff her out with odor sleuth. With his nose glowing green, the young Growlithe took a whiff at both the air and ground before giving a low growl, take her out with flame burst. Ordered Kiba. Akamaru took a deep breath and spewed an average-sized fireball, which suddenly combusted in mid-flight, sending multiple blazing orbs hurling past the illusions and towards the ballerina. Light screen now, taking arms up once more, the psychic fairy type materialized glowing yellow, hexagon-styled barrier. As the petite ballerina blocked explosive flames, Kiba took the chance to strike, Akamaru pick up speed with agility, then hit her hard with flame wheel. He declared. Arf! Dashing circles around the emotion Pokemon, the Growlithe quickly reached high speeds, leapt into the air, and set himself ablaze while spinning in a wheel-like fashion. Kirlia, counter with fire punch, Naruto exclaimed, fisting her palm, the blue-haired ballerina engulfed her clenched hand on fire. This got odd reactions from the audience as a non-fighting type Pokemon is almost never seen using such moves. With quick reaction, Kirlia nailed Akamaru's less blazing side, forcing him off course and spiraling across the ground. Akamaru, are you okay? The pup shook his head and gave a bark in acknowledgement, a boy, now use howl. He ordered. The Growlithe pup took a deep breath before giving a howl to the skies above, effectively increasing its attack power. Kirlia gulped and took a few steps back as the tiger-striped pup gave an intimidating growl, Kirlia she heard her trainer speak, you don't have to be scared, you're much stronger now and I know you can win this he spoke. Kirlia stared at her blonde master, his confidence in her sparked her determination and led her back into position. Kirlia, that's the spirit, eyes in front shouted Kiba, Akamaru used flame wheel the Growlithe dashed forward cloaking himself in flames as he begun to roll rapidly towards his opponent. Kirlia, stop him with confusion, Naruto declared. Kirlia, with eyes glowing blue and her body giving off a faint yet similar colored aura, she focused her aim at the pup's less flame-coated sides and struck with a telekinetic force. This caused a counterbalance and forced Akamaru to force cancel his attack and stumble onto the grounds below, switching to offense, you ready? Asked Naruto. Receiving a nod from his blue-haired companion, the two started their assault, Kirlia used double team. Splitting image, the psychic fairy type created more illusionary clones. Ain't fooling us with that cheap trick, come on Akamaru use odor sleuth. The Growlithe gave a bark and proceeded to sniff out the emotion Pokemon, Kirlia use mystical leaf. Naruto retaliated. Are you an idiot, everyone knows that fire beats grass Kiba exclaimed. Naruto all but grinned throughout the process, all illusions raised their palms high, momentarily allowing them to glow a forest green hue before flinging forward a swarm of magical leaf shuriken. Akamaru, burn em all with flamethrower. As the Growlithe opened its jaws, the leaves struck, leaving an explosive result upon impact, what? Kiba shouted in utter confusion. It was quite simple to someone who was paying close attention. Mythical Leaf was the outcome of lacing Magical Leaf with a concentrated telekinetic force, preferably with confusion or psychic. Once more Kirlia, use Mystical Leaf. Dodge it Akamaru. Try as he might, the Growlithe pup had extreme difficulty dodging the explosive leaves, on account of not being able to distinguish the real projectiles from the fakes. Damn, come on boy, take em all out with flamethrower. Kiba ordered. Akamaru continued dodging and quickly spewed a stream of flames towards his surroundings. Kirlia jumped back, doing as told, the ballerina managed to escape the torch range of the growing fire. I see em, Akamaru used flamethrower, one more time. Ain't happening, Kirlia reel him in with confusion. As fire built up within the pup's jaws he suddenly found himself pulled in by an unseen force, once he was dragged out of the wall of smoke. 
he came face to face with Kirlia who currently had a lightning-coated fist revved up, Thunder Punch. Naruto's voice echoed throughout the square. End battle theme sequence. Akamaru was nailed in the face and slammed onto the ground, unleashing a several bolts of lightning upon impact. The audience remained silent before bursting out in cheers, Ah man, and we were on a winning streak groaned Kiba. High five Kirlia, I knew you could do it. Unbeknownst to the celebrating duo, a pair of eyes locked upon them with interest, out of all the trainers currently battling none seemed to possess the same level of tactical knowledge as the black, red clad blonde. Interesting, he spoke, before retreating into the crowd of people. Slateport Beach, four hours later, an enormous audience cheered as they witnessed the final battle of the day, Naruto and Bayonet took stage against a random trainer and his Raiden. Bayonet, use Shadow Ball, Raiden, Metal Burst, Nightshade, Rock Blast, Naruto grinned as the attacks collided, creating a dense smoke scream, Bayonet, use Willow Wisp. The marionette gave a childish laugh as he whipped multiple ghostly blue fireballs at the drill Pokemon. Raiden, use Dig, its drill-like horn spun rapidly before jamming it into the ground below, using its arms to burrow more rapidly, the fireballs safely slew overhead and doused themselves with the warm sands. Bayonet drag him out with Shadow Claw, Naruto ordered, with arms glowing dark violet Bayonet giggled maniacally before plunging them into the ground. Everyone neared as Bayonet wiggled his sand-sunk arms, minutes later he stopped with a jaw-splitting grin, Bayonet, he shouted as the Raiden was blasted from its underground tunnels and taken high into the air by the marionette's extended shadowy limbs. Raiden, the trainer shouted in despair, Bayonet, finish him with Shadow Ball. Bayonet allowed his extended limbs to wrap around the rock type before slamming him back down, his dark appendages dispersed allowing the ghost to rev up the orb of destruction. Bayonet, firing his shadow ball at breakneck speeds, the end result was a sand rising explosion leaving a knocked out Raiden in its wake. Yash, Naruto shouted as he high-fived his teammate, the crowds cheered for both parties as they headed for the beach shack. You're good, did ya know that? Kiba. The brunette grinned and offered a bottle of soda pop to the blonde trainer and marionette, after leaving Akamaru to rest at the Pokemon Center, I got a chance to see some of your battles, so I'll say it again, you're good he exclaimed. If I wanna make it to the Pokemon League then I am gonna have to continue to better myself and my team. Pokemon League, so you've already got badges? Yup, gonna make it three once we get to Marvel, which reminds me, how will it take to get there? On foot. About two or three days, why? A friend of mine is competing for the first time, I want to be there when she does he gives a sigh, looks like the badge will have to wait. Looks that way, half an hour later, Naruto and Kiba find themselves returning to the Pokemon Center, Bayonet lazily slung himself over his trainer's shoulders in exhaustion. Naruto handed four of his six poke balls over to Nurse Joy while Kiba reclaimed Akamaru, alright, I've gotta head back home, see ya tomorrow he said. Later then, heading into his room, he carefully placed his pack on the bed alongside his two remaining poke balls, I am amazed you didn't come out exhausted like the others, you're really something else errant you Deoxys he complimented. The cherished ball shook momentarily as the center button glowed white in response, maybe someday we'll get to battle without worry, won't we Rayquaza? The ultra ball gave a similar reply. Well let's rest up. We've got some training and hopefully more battling to do tomorrow said Naruto, placing both capsules on the nightstand, he took the egg from his pack and used the covers to keep it warm. Just as he laid himself to rest, he felt a light tap on the egg's shell, this pasted a wide grin on the blonde's lips, its first kick, that closes the second cycle. He thought with a grin. Normally it should have taken longer for an egg to hatch, the blonde could only deduce that the egg had been laid some time ago and had been kept under maintenance by either its birth parents or the colony itself. He placed all thoughts aside and allowed his own exhaustion to send him to sleep. Route 110 the following day. Come on you guys, keep it up. Use secret power. Net, Kirlia, Zizidits, Bayonet, Kirlia, and Deoxys gave a pink aura before extending their right arms, each glowed forest green and grew multiple thorns. Technical Machine Number 43, aka Secret Power was a damage dealing move that had a chance to deal a secondary status effect that varied on the environmental terrain, for the three Pokemon, Secret Power had taken the form of a poisonous needle arm. Corsola, Rock Blast once more, 
Corsola, Cor, she cheerfully replied before materializing an average size boulder and firing it at her teammates. One by one, the three took turns obliterating the incoming rocks, taking time to get accustomed to their newly learned technique. Naruto continued to supervise his team's progress when he felt a strange chill crawl up his spine, like someone, or something, was watching him. Bayonet, Zizidits, watching as both Marionette and Alien alert their trainer in the form of a pointed finger, Naruto turned to meet eyes with a quadruped, white-furred Pokemon. It had a ruff around its neck and chest and a tuft on the top of its head adorned with a single dark blue oval. It also had a rather feline face with almond-shaped red eyes, a scythe-like tail, and a sickle-like horn on the side of its head. Its broad feet stood equipped with three claws each, with spikes protrude from the heels of its hind legs and elbows of its front legs. It stood above a large rock, carefully observing the trainer as he brought out his Pokédex. Absol, the disaster Pokémon. Absol are known to live in mountains far from civilization and rarely ventures down from its alpine home. Using its horn, an Absol is able to sense even subtle changes in the sky and the land to predict when a natural disaster will occur and will try to warn people when one is approaching. Absol he muttered, the dark-faced wolf continued to observe him before it caught sight of an incoming stream of glowing yellow shuriken. Hey, what? Naruto exclaimed in surprise as the Absol quickly dodged the incoming sea of swift stars, Skarmory, use steel wing. He heard as a razor winged, armored bird sped by with its appendages glowing white. Duck, shouted Naruto, prompting his team to drop down, the white-furred wolf growled at the newcomers, it ducked under the armored bird and gave a hard slash at its open underbelly, before bolting back into the forest. Don't let it get away. The Skarmory gave an ear-piercing shriek and zoomed after the white wolf. Naruto stood bewildered at what happened, attacking a Pokemon that showed no signs of hostility and with moves that would have harmed his party as well. A good trainer would have confronted a wild Pokemon out in the open and wouldn't have endangered another trainer and their Pokemon upon doing so. He came to realize that the Absol was currently being hunted by either a poacher or a careless trainer. Is everyone all right? asking to see if anyone was harmed during the swift waves. Net, Kirlia, Corsola, Zizidits. Good, now let's save a Pokemon, Altaria come on out. Raising his luxury ball, out popped his cloud-feathered phoenix, who nearly tackled him if he hadn't stopped her then and there. Altaria, you and Deoxys are the fastest, find that Skarmory and its trainer, distract them long enough for the Absol to escape, now let's move. Morphing into its speed form, Deoxys zoomed through the forest trees with Altaria following close behind. Skarmory, use air cutter. With a squawk, the metallic bird flapped several visible blue arcs of wind, each managing to leave deep slash marks with each passing tree. Utilizing the bark of the trees to boost its speed, Absol was able to outmaneuver the incoming gusts, Houndour, use ember. Feeling a scorching pain on its left hind leg, the fire pellets began to combust eventually leading to trip face first into the dirt. Corner it you to the voice belonging to a raven-haired teen, whose bangs nearly reached his chin and back hair closely resembling a ducklet's tail, he currently wore a dark-themed attire. The boy brought out a great ball as the Absol limped back up, Houndour, Fire Fang. Skarmory, Steel Wing, he ordered. With blazing fangs and glowing wings, the two rushed forward with the intent of incapacitating their target. The Absol hastily performed detect and would have attempted to dodge had a red and blue blur hadn't collided with the armored bird. What? Even the dark-furred hound stopped in surprise before being tackled by an Altaria. The Absol who was confused by the sudden skirmish, took the opportunity to flee the area, damn it. It's getting away, hurry up you two, shouted the teen. Slightly dazed from their assault, the two would have continued the chase had Altaria not used heat wave to cut their path. Skarmory, Air Cutter, Houndour, Ember, Deoxys sped before his teammate, morphed into his defense form, taking to blows in her place. He shifted into his attack form and blew the two away with an icy wind, the team braced himself as the winds froze the surrounding trees and leaving snow on his attire. What, is that, he muttered, bewildered at the sight of an unknown Pokemon. Good job you two came the voice of their trainer. The Absol should be at a fair distance by now spoke Naruto as he came into view. You, do you have any idea what you've done the teen retorted in anger, two years, two years I've been after that Absol, 
Had your Pokemon not interfered I would have finally caught it. Then maybe you should NT have shot at us, I get that you want such a rare Pokemon at your disposal, but the way you recklessly pursued it, you wouldn't have just harmed my team but other wild Pokemon. Not my problem, it should be the two turn to the newcomer, whose appearance made Naruto gape in surprise, why you're, he stuttered. Uchiha Itachi, at your service the newcomer introduced, much like the young teen he too possessed raven black hair with long bangs and a ponytail, he had a black themed attire with ash-like patterns trailing down his pants. Naruto could only nod at his response, Sasuke he addressed the team, go home, you've done enough hearing the disappointment in his tone, Sasuke returned his team and headed back with a growl. I apologize for my brother's actions. Brother, yes, he's hot-headed and impatient, he harshly trains his team and always expects quick improvement, much like our father, as his brother it's my job to support him, however, I do believe that Absol is better off in the wild than it would be with him. As harsh as it would sound coming from an elder sibling, any Pokemon who was or would be mistreated weren't deserved to be kept and would most certainly be more fitting for them to be stay in the wild. So, what's one of the Kalos Elite Four doing here in Hoenn? Asked Naruto, with Altaria and Deoxys standing beside him in curiosity. Hehe, I didn't think anyone would notice, well, aside from visiting my family, there's a certain issue involving two criminal syndicates that's gotten our attention. This got Naruto's attention, too. Does one carry black and blue uniforms? He asked. Itachi gave the blonde a surprised look, you're familiar with Team Aqua? He asked. I've had an encounter several years ago but, that's about it. I see, well, if you see anything that links to Team Aqua or Magma, give us a call he said before handing a note with his contact number. Yes sir. Just as they started to part ways, oh and by the way, I caught a few of your matches the other day, if you're free for later, we can have a battle of our own he said, before continuing back towards Slateport. Naruto stood frozen in astonishment, Elite Four are known throughout as the strongest trainers in the world, to be challenged by one was considered an honor amongst many trainers. Sir yes sir, he saluted, unbeknownst to the trainer and his Pokemon, the Absol was curiously observing the trio with much interest. All right everyone listen up cause I'll only explain it once. Our latest intel shows high anomaly readings pinpointing directly to the Duford Islands, the boss is convinced that it may be one of three keystones. Keystones, artifacts that are said to open doors to ancient tombs, he who possesses a key presumes control over its slumbering entity, legend states that he who carries all three can open the fourth and final lock, and gain the power to move continents replied the orange-haired aqua admin earning many looks of awe from the lesser ranking members. This won't be a simple retrieval operation, these readings are too visibly abnormal to go unnoticed by any of Hoenn's anomalous branch groups, no doubt they'll send Pokemon Rangers to investigate, and Team Magma would have caught wind of this as well explained Amber. Which makes it all the more reason to arrive as soon as possible, Matt how far are we from the islands? 10 minutes tops, well we deploy in 5, now gear up, the lot of you ordered the Shelly, leaving the grunts to scurry about in search for their equipment. The three admins went topside to the yacht's second level, where they gazed upon the slowly approaching island, knowing full well of the consequences should they fail in their mission. Slateport City, Sasuke, could you call in your father and brother, tell them lunch is ready? Came the voice of one Makoto Uchiha. Said raven-haired teen gave a frustrated sigh before answering, I clearly not in the mood to speak with anyone. He had lost the Absol yet again and this time due to the interference of some no-name trainer, and to top it off his brother was rather dissatisfied with his actions. How so? He was doing his job as a trainer, to capture and tame wild Pokemon. As he walked out of their compound and up a trail, he came across their personal battlefield, where both Fugaku and Itachi were currently engaged in a one-on-one -on -one battle. Curious to see how it would turn out. Sasuke leaned by a tree as his father had chosen his strongest Pokemon to the field, Arcanine, a quadruped horse-sized canine with an orange pelt and jagged tiger stripes, and the evolutionary stage of Growlithe. His brother on the other hand had chosen his much slower Magcargo, a limbless snail whose body consisted almost entirely of bright red magma while on its back, carried its grey spherical shell, composed of hardened but brittle magma. Arcanine, extreme speed, Magcargo, Blind him with smog. Rushing in at speeds matching a running train, 
Arcanine wasn't able to escape its tunnel path to escape the toxic fumes. Inhaling the violet clouds, the tiger-tripped canine crashed into the ground while using its paw to rub the burning sensation that had traveled up its nostrils. Arcanine, fire blast, snarling at the magma slug, the fire type exhaled a roaring fireball that instantly took form of a fire kanji. Counter with lava plume, mag cargo followed as instructed and spewed a wave of hazardous smog and blazing fire. Overpowering the single cannon shot, the volcanic storm consumed the fire type. The flames soon diminished and surprisingly enough, Arcanine was shown to be physically fine while its fur had been scorched ever so lightly. I hope you haven't forgotten Arcanine's flash fire. Hardly, Mag Cargo bury him with rock slide, Itachi declared, prompting the magma snail to summon white rings around and high above itself. Seconds later, large boulders began to fall from ripples of energy and crash upon the stage below. Arcanine, strike him down with extreme speed. With a snarl, the fire type engulfed itself in a blurred white aura and charged its motionless opponent, narrowly avoiding the falling rocks in the process. Block with Harden, the magma snail coated itself in a flash of light effectively morphing its liquid body and brittle shell into tough steel. Not a millisecond later did Arcanine collide with the steel-coated Pokémon, leaving a small yet visible crack on the snail's shell and dazing the fire type. Magcargo, finish him with ancient power. Opening its toothless mouth, Magcargo fired at point blank a spiraling silver orb of prehistoric power, tearing up the earth beneath them and launching Arcanine several feet away into unconsciousness. Well done, Itachi. You've certainly proven that even a once weak Slugma could take down one of the fastest Pokemon in the world. He was never weak, just simply underestimated, exclaimed Itachi as he gently rubbed his hand against Magcargo's heated shell. The magma slug greatly enjoyed its master's touch, despite it being impossible to touch his skin. Fugaku couldn't help but agree, in the past he discarded the slugma evolutionary chain due to their relatively low speed and overall attack power. Not to mention that the lava Pokémon were amongst the least desirable, seeing as how a simple walk in the park could set it ablaze. Now, after his eldest son had proven their combat efficiency, was beginning to have second thoughts on the matter. Returning Arcanine to its premier ball, the two were finally able to notice their one-man audience, Sasuke, is there something on your mind? Asked the elder Uchiha, effectively snapping the boy from his awestruck state. And no, it's nothing, mom just wanted to tell you that lunch was ready. Ah yes, I am feeling quite famished after that battle, let's finish this at a later time. We're going to have to cut it short then, there's a trainer I met earlier today that's caught my attention. A trainer you say, well I certainly hope he or she is strong enough to at least provide a challenge for you. Itachi held back a groan at his father's response, being an Elite Four did not mean he was unbeatable. As strong and skilled as they were, Elite Fours have in fact lost battles to common trainers before, though it was always a rare case. I've witnessed his capabilities firsthand, the boy is no pushover. Sasuke narrowed his eyes towards his elder brother, this trainer, who is he? He asked. You should know little brother, he did stop your little hunt. All thoughts quickly turned to the blonde-haired trainer he had the great displeasure to come across, him. Why the hell would you waste your time on someone like him? Retorted the young Uchiha. Itachi smirked at his brother's outburst, clearly upset over his most recent encounter. If you must know, the boy is actually quite the tactician. He specializes in counters and battles using a mixture of offense and status ailment a trainer like that is a rare find and one must never give up the opportunity for a battle he explained. Tisk, he can't be that great. Well if you think otherwise, then maybe you should take the first round. That's not a bad idea added Fugaku, if this trainer is as good as you state him to be, then a battle with your brother should be more than enough to prove his caliber, what say you Sasuke, will you meet this trainer on the battlefield? He asked. Father, it'll be my genuine pleasure. Southern Beach. Come on Corsola, we've got this. Cheered Naruto, as both trainer and Pokemon zoomed across the water's surface. Other pairs weren't making things easy as their water-type partners held quick mobility within their aquatic territory, all eager to win the race. The water chariot race was one of many popular sports around the globe, in order to participate, a trainer is required to enter a water Pokemon or one that was taught the third hidden machine, Surf. 
The event was commonly a three-lap race with standard sporting rules. Any attacks declared on other participants as well as unauthorized entrees would result in immediate disqualification. While the current race wasn't a sponsored event, it was a very good way to earn extra zeni. Naruto along with Kiba and several other trainers staked a thousand each for a single lap win around the nearby islets. W-I-N-G-U-L warned one of many participants as they quickly approached a flock of floating seagulls. Startled by the incoming trainers, the flock scattered in attempt off the water's surface in an attempt to reach the skies. Leaning back, Naruto hinted Corsola to dive down and reduce speed, allowing the birds to pass overhead and leaving several unlucky trainers to come in physical contact with them. Nice trick exclaimed Kiba as he and his dark-scaled Luminion gained momentum to hop over the startled birds. Without the need to reduce speed, the duo easily took first place, but you've gotta be fast if you wanna win. Oh it's on now, Corsola, speed up with rock polish. Corsola, she cheered, allowing her body to be engulfed in a light blue aura before torpedoing herself across the ocean's surface. The sight of the incoming coral caused the wild-haired brunette to panic, Luminion, speed it up a little, he wearily suggested, knowing that his deep-sea partner possessed the natural speed but lacked a stat ailment to increase it. Cedra, Mantine, Gorbis, use agility. Oh that's just not fair exclaimed Kiba as the speeding trainers bypassed the duo almost instantly. The five blitzed through the first few islets and quickly scuttled through the rest, those desperate to win began to overuse their Pokemon's stat ailment, resulting in off-course collisions and forced dismounting. After making it past the last islet and losing seven of the ten trainers participating, the remaining three charged the beach shores with the intent on taking the lead and winning the collected 10,000 zeni. Sorry kids, but first place is mine. Cedra boost up with agility. Briefly giving off a bright glow, the blue-scaled seahorse zoomed past the duo and quickly neared the shore. Oi Kiba, you can swim right? Asked Naruto. Yeah, why? Cause I am gonna have to apologize for what's about to happen, Corsola. Launch with water pulse. Diving below the waters, the living coral resurfaced with a rocketing stream of water, carrying herself into the air and allowing her trainer to ride falling water. Sadly the force behind the uprising splash created a multi-directional wave, which promptly sent the brunette spiraling into the blue. And like that the race has grinned the leading contestant, seconds before Corsola and Naruto splash landed in front of them and skidding onto the sandy shores, lost he muttered, bearing a look of disbelief. Hee hee, victory, Corsola, the two weakly exclaimed. A good forty minutes later, all ten trainers and Pokemon found themselves at the beach hut enjoying cold bottle of soda pop and sizzling hot plate of grilled meat and veg kebabs. While everyone reluctantly paid the blonde his earnings, the boy was a good sport and used said zenny to buy lunch for the participants, earning the much appreciated thanks in return. So how long have you had it for? Asked Kiba, referring to the blonde's overgrown, light yellow poke egg. About five days now. The Duford nurse Joy stated that it had just entered the second state of its development. Midway to hatching huh, any idea what little bundle will be coming out the oven? It's a snow run, thought the color scheme made it obvious. Hey, not everyone is an expert in Pokemon reproduction, if I want to know about breeding then my sister is the go-to encyclopedia. Your sister's a breeder, yeah, Hannah's a natural at that stuff, ya know she was the one that gave me Akamaru. Big mistake on her part the two trainers frowned and turned to the newcomer, one egg and it was given to the runt of the litter, what a waste. What do you want Sasuke? Growled Kiba, nothing to do with you, him on the other hand would want nothing more than to humiliate you in the worst way possible. Oh, and would this plot of humiliation have anything to do with what happened earlier in the woods? By a slight majority, however, this mostly pertains to my elder brother. He seems to think highly of you and for him to even consider challenging some common trainer is a pretty big deal to our family, if you are as formidable as my brother claims you to be, then you should have no issue proving it responded the Uchiha, taking snatching and expanding one of his poke balls. Naruto gave a stern look before replacing it with a grin, if that's what you want then fine, let's battle. Corsola, let's go, he exclaimed, leaping off the bar counter and into her trainer's arms. The three trailed farther away from the shack and apart from each other. Battle, shouted Kiba, gaining the attention of nearby civilians, tourists, and trainers, hinting them to clear out and keep a distance. So, 
How do we plan on doing this? First to three wins, no substitutions. All right then, let's dance. Corsola, take the stage. Corsola, Skarmory, tear him to shreds, declared Sasuke, tossing up his capsule and releasing his steel armored bird of prey. Play Pokemon Colosseum Ost, Cypher Peon Battle Theme. This guy, huh? Let's see what old Dex has to say, spoke Naruto with his Pokedex in hand. Skarmory, the armor bird Pokemon, nesting within thorn bushes, the continuous scratches it gains will eventually harden into an iron like state. Its hollowed wings can allow Skarmory to reach speeds up to 180 miles per hour and can be used as blades. Let's not waste time, take her down with steel wing. With a ravenous caw, the bird's steel plated wings shined brightly as it rushed the four legged coral. Corsola, brace yourself with iron defense. Corsola, quickly morphing her body into a dark gray iron, both metal coated Pokemon collided, echoing a loud clang upon impact. Skarmory, break her defense with metal sound. Taking a deep breath, the steel plated bird gave a horrendous shriek, forcing both trainers and spectators to cover their ears. Naruto grunted as he kept his outer organ blocked and a watchful eye on his teammate, Corsola was shivering as she was continuously bombarded by ear-piercing vibrations. Once her temporary defense had dropped, Sasuke took the chance to strike. Skarmory, get up close and personal with Aerial Ace. Corsola, boost up with Water Pulse. Shaking her head and accumulating her senses, the living coral propelled herself up and towards the sky in time to avoid a high-speed blitz. Can't escape now, circle around and hit her again with steel wing. Performing a 180 turn, Skarmory shot itself after its falling opponent with wings of razor steel. Corsola however, had her eyes set on her trainer who had given her the go to charge up her next attack, once within range, she spun towards her target, now Corsola, nail him with ancient power. Declared Naruto. Having a no second to react the Skarmory had accidentally placed a break stop to its flight and was shot at point blank by a spiraling silver orb of prehistoric power. The steel plated bird was pushed several feet back before the initial explosion had it falling out of the sky, this however only lasted several seconds as the bird spread its wings and glided back towards the ground. Corsola on the other hand had spewed a jet of water towards the warm sands, reducing her fall as upon descending. Let's see you dodge this. Skarmory used swift, ordered Sasuke. Angrily shrieking at the damage inflicted to his armor, Skarmory followed as commanded and fired wave after wave of bright yellow stars. Corsola, rock blast now. Kor, so law, materializing a boulder as large as herself, she promptly launched a stone, dispersing the incoming stars within its path. Dodge and use flash cannon. Speed up with rock polish. Not needing to be told twice. Corsola expelled a light blue aura and shot across the sandy arena at minimal speeds. While water-type Pokémon were both natural and swift swimmers, their speed on land differed greatly than when in water, Corsola was no exception as she had difficulty dodging a ray of silver energy. Spectators shielded their eyes as the beam razzed the beach and picked up sand clouds. More clouds began to arise and soon neither trainer could see the battle taking place, Skarmory, that's enough. Ordered Sasuke. Confirming orders, the rays that echoed had ceased fire, leaving the audience leaning in for the results. Once the sand had fallen, everyone was left confused as the four-legged coral had apparently disappeared. Sasuke narrowed his eyes at the lumps of sand scattered across the field, you could run, I'd give you that, but you sure as hell can't hide, Skarmory used gust. Declared the Uchiha, completely missing the grin plastered on the blonde's face. Now. Hit M with Power Gem. Just as Skarmory began to flap its metallic wings, Corsola popped out from the first pile with a fully charged orange sphere. Sasuke paled and was forced to shield his line of sight as his Pokemon was engulfed in an energy based explosion. Dropping his arm only seconds later to bear witness Skarmory's unconscious form. That's one spoke Naruto as Corsola trotted back to her trainer with the crowds cheering soon afterwards. So it seems growled Sasuke as he returned Skarmory back into his capture capsule and swapping out for another, put her down, Electabuzz. Tossing and releasing his second Pokemon. A bipedal monkey-like creature with yellow fur with black bolt markings across and around its body, complete with a stripped tail, a pair of three claw-toed feet, thick forearms, sharp fangs, and a set of twin bulbous antennae. 
Electabuzz gave an intimidating roar as lightning discharged from its fur. And Electabuzz huh, muttered Naruto as he brought out his Pokédex. Electabuzz. The electric Pokémon. Electabuzz is capable of storing vast amounts of electrical energy within its body for extended periods of time. Electabuzz are extremely irritable and aggressive Pokémon and are prone to spirited competition. Just as the entry had finished, Electabuzz was already charging head first with a fist full of lightning, whoa crap. Corsola dodged with rock polish. Giving her overall speed a second boost, Corsola was able to evade the quick jab. Hey, why not give a heads up before starting? Less talking, more fighting. Electabuzz, use shock wave. Giving a primal roar, the yellow furred monkey fired a jagged wave of high voltage lighting at his target. Corsola, use rock blast then follow up with iron defense. Corsola, spinning back to face her opponent, she summoned a boulder and shot it directly into the path of the incoming lighting. The density of the spinning stone was thick enough to successfully block the electrical surge, giving the dual type an opening to morph her body into solid steel. Electabuzz snarled and discharged a higher and less uncontrolled watt of electrical energy which quickly blasted through the stone shield and electrocuted the iron-cloaked coral. Sparks zapped across her body as the electrical surge came to a halt. Corsola was left shuddering in pain as her temporary defense came to an end. Seems like iron defense can't protect you from everything, and by the looks of things, it's given me an advantage over this fight smirked Sasuke, instantly taking notice of Corsola's paralysis. And I think you should do some insight before you start making assumptions, Corsola use refresh. Without delay, Corsola expelled a reflective crystalline glow from her immobile self, the process would take no more than a few seconds to fully cure a Pokemon of from a non-volatile status condition. Sasuke for one, would not allow an advantage go to waste, Electabuzz, Thunder Punch now. He ordered. Slamming both knuckles together, Electabuzz engulfed both fists in a raging storm of electricity and made a mad dash towards the recovering coral. Wait for it, wait for it, now. Tackle him Corsola. Bolting from her position, Corsola ducked under a downward swing and hit dead center of her target's chest. Electabuzz doubled over the impact, unfortunately the yellow monkey stood his ground and grabbed a hold of Corsola by the horns. Lightning expelled from his fur as he prepared to electrocute his opponent. You are not getting away this time, Electabuzz used Thunder Punch. No you don't, Corsola used Spike Cannon. Revving back a lightning-coated fist, Electabuzz struck first, inflicting heavy damage towards the living coral. This however, wasn't enough to stop the barrage of glowing white missiles and was promptly knocked onto his back. Corsola, are you okay? Cor, so la, she weakly responded. Electabuzz, finish her now. He heard Sasuke declare while keeping an eye on the rising electric type. Use recover, declared Naruto. Corsola was unsure. On one hand she would indeed heal battle damage but on the other hand it would leave her vulnerable and Electabuzz wasn't a naturally slow Pokemon. Chances are she would have absolutely no time to heal any major wounds before getting hit a second time. However, she trusted her trainer wholeheartedly and began the healing process. Like hell you are, Electabuzz, use shock wave. The tailed primate screeched furiously as he shot a jagged wave of electricity its somewhat uncontrolled pattern had unconsciously given his opponents their window of opportunity. Corsola, sidestep left and use secret power. Shining a hue of pink aura, Corsola dodged the stream of lightning and fired three shots of pressurized mud. Blind in its rage, Electabuzz wasn't able to process his trainer's orders to move away and was promptly nailed by a super effective strike via mud shot. The tiger monkey snarled as he forcefully picked himself off the sand, however any attempts to fight would be proven futile by the now charging coral. Now Corsola, finish him with earth power. Outlined in a golden glow, Corsola trusted her frontal legs deep into the sand, causing many cracks and fissures began to snap and sink the granular material surrounding her opponent, it was soon followed by a rift of golden energy which quickly erupted in a blinding flash. Once the light subsided, Electabuzz was spotted immobile under small piles of sand. That's too announced Kiba. The crowds continued to cheer while Sasuke returned Electabuzz with a disapproving scowl, Corsola, can you keep going? Asked Naruto, as his companion had taken serious damage during the battle, it was only natural for a trainer to worry for his Pokemon. Cor, so la, it was clear that she was under no condition to compete in the third and final round, 
unfortunately the rules accepted had restricted team swapping and would be forced to battle again. Well use recover the first chance we get, let's try and focus on keeping a distance okay. Giving a weakened nod, the two awaited their opponent's last Pokemon. Son of a bitch new ID attack him, with Electabuzz lost in his fury there was no way he was going to stop to dodge thought the Uchiha with a scowl. Clipping the capture capsule to his waist, he swapped out for a dusk ball, much to the Naruto's surprise. Turn the tables, Deuceclops. Materializing from the dark violet rays came a dark gray mummified Cyclops. Its armless hands twitched as its head and shoulder wisp growths flowed alongside the ocean wind, and his three tooth like projections crackled as its single eye glowed a malicious red. Deuceclops. The beacon Pokemon, it is said that within its hollowed body, lies an everlasting black hole that can consume anything it comes in contact with. Deuceclops typically live in thick forests and can use its large hands to hypnotize victims into servitude read the entry. Naruto knew it was best not to tangle with a Deuceclops, they were uncommon within the sky pillar and whenever they made an appearance, the local Pokemon knew that for their own safety, to stay clear of the single-eyed ghost types. Get ready, here he comes, warned Naruto. Granite Cave. Is it just me or is it getting colder? No, we're definitely on the right track responded Shelly. Gazing down at their feet, one would notice the thin layers of ice coating the underground terrain, creating audible snaps and cracks with each step. As the team of aqua grunts and admins trailed down the frozen paths, they soon came to a halt as their boots splashed against an extended puddle of water. Matt reached down and fingerless gloves in the crystal clear liquid, it's warm he spoke, causing his fellow admins to snarl. Move, now, ordered Amber, taking off in a full-out sprint, Team Aqua arrived at a melted archway that appeared to have been forcefully dug and drilled through. Following the half-destroyed staircase and tribal drawings, the blue-clad criminals raced past the hot winds and through the single ice and rock-shattered passageway, eventually arriving within a frozen battlefield. Several Glalie laid motionless on the ground as others pushed back their oppressors with rays of cold energy. Houndoom raised the air and frost-covered ceiling in flames as their trainers plowed through the ice types and deeper into the icicle-coated palace. Blaze, shouted Shelly, effectively gaining the attention of Team Magma. Said Admin smirked as his eyes landed at the source of the call, well, 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 if it isn't little shellfish, fancy meeting you here he spoke. And you know why, the stone will go to Archie, so you all better stay the hell out of our way. Ya see, that right there is something we're gonna have to disagree with. Take M down, ordered Matt, tossing a poke ball along with rest of the team. Quadruped, black and gray furred hyenas, along with large blue bats with gaping jaws, an overgrown bipedal blue platypus and red crayfish materialized from the ejected rays. Team Magma followed suit, releasing similar Pokemon as well as occasional fire, rock, and ground types. Camera up, Houndoom, use flamethrower. Crawdont, use Scald. Opening their pincers, the star-crowned crayfish ejected a stream of boiling water to counteract the incoming waves of fire. The mighty Enna and Houndoom rapidly bit and clawed in attempt to tear each other to shreds while the Golbat struck with wing attack and air slash. Graveler use Rollout, Golduck, stop them with confusion. The four armed boulders were stopped in mid-roll and flung back towards their teammates. As the admins handled each other, Team Aqua came to realize that one had gone missing, damn it, Matt helped clear a path, Shelly you go after Blaze, don't let him reach the keystone. Shouted Amber. Got it, Crawdont, speed up with Aqua Jet and nail M with Crabhammer. Declared the muscular admin. Encasing its body in water, the crayfish torpedoed past the other Pokemon and slammed a brightly shining pincer onto a camera. The force of impact was able to knock down the volcanic two-humped camel along with a fire-breathing houndoom. Not to lose an opportunity, Shelly dashed across the war zone and deeper into the aged palace. Courtney, cut her off. Ninetales, burn her to cinders with Inferno. She ordered, prompting the multi-tailed Pokemon to exhale a scorching hot stream of mythical blue flames. The melting fires would have reached the admin had the Ninetales not been frozen by the many remaining Glalie. Raising the field with ice beams, both opposing teams turned their attention to the face Pokemon. And then there's these guys mutter Amber. Corsola muttered Naruto, gritting his teeth in anger as Deuceclops continued to beat down on his already unconscious companion. 
he brought up his dive ball and quickly returned her to the safety of her capsule, which in turn caused the beacon Pokemon to turn its attention towards the blonde trainer. She was already beaten, there was no need continue afterwards, exclaimed Naruto. Hum, I don't think he cares. Deuceclops, that's playin' dirty Sasuke retorted Kiba. Tisk, like I care what you think, now hurry and chose your next Pokemon, Deuceclops is getting impatient. Naruto growled, so that's how it's gonna be, fine then, let's see how you handle a trickster, Bayonet I choose you, he declared, sending his own dusk ball sailing across the air. In a dark flash came the black-skinned marionette, chuckling childishly upon his release, the child-sized ghost returned a psychotic grin to match the menacing stare it received from the Deuceclops. Deuceclops, use Shadow Punch. Engulfing its limbless hands in a black aura, the mummy-wrapped Cyclops thrusted both forward, sending a pair of overgrown shadow-hazed fists at his opponent. However to his shock and confusion, Bayonet had disappeared from his position, what? exclaimed Sasuke bearing a similar reaction. You left yourself wide open, Bayonet hit him hard with sucker punch. Bursting from the shadow of the unwary Deuceclops, the marionette struck with a violet fog-coated fist. Stumbling back under the force of impact, Deuceclops levitated back into position with a pounding headache and a look that promised pain. Deuceclops, use Nightshade, Bayonet, zoom in and use Will O Wisp. Unleashing a trail of black lightning from both palms, Deuceclops motioned his hands to follow the speeding marionette. Bayonet however was more skilled in aerial combat and easily maneuvered around the bolts, eventually pelting his target with small wisp-like fireballs. Damn it! Deuceclops flash him with confused ray. With its body and one eye glowing violet, Deuceclops shined a sinister light upon his opponent, causing Bayonet to fly about in a disoriented fashion. Bayonet, got him, plant a curse on it. Not wasting time, the Deuceclops expelled a menacing aura that encased the confused ghost in a pair of sinister hands, leaving the Deuceclops rather winded at the end of the procedure. Sasuke smirked as his opponent was now on a timer, if his Pokemon couldn't bring down the bayonet, then the life-draining curse would do the job. Now, strike with Shadow Ball. Cupping both hands together, an orb of dark energy began to generate at a rather slow rate. Sasuke grew irritated, Shadow Ball takes seconds not minutes to charge, so why was his Pokemon taking its time to do so? It wasn't until he noticed the small flames coating his partner's overgrown hands that he came to a realization. He had already forgotten about the burn inflicted by Bayonet's Will-O-Wisp. This left him with the same disadvantage as his opponent, should the ailment grow too severe then his Pokemon could very well collapse from the scorching pain. When time came, Deuceclops had his Shadow Ball fully charged and ready to fire. Unfortunately, Bringing up the attack wasn't the difficult part, it was hitting the target. Bayonet would not stop moving and continued to fly in an uncoordinated pattern, dropping his attack succession rate to 20, if not at best 30%. Bayonet soon began to slow down, many including Sasuke thought the curse was taking affect and decided to take the shot, Deuceclops, attack now. He declared, completely missing the readjusted gleam in the Pokemon's eye. Bayonet, dodge and use Hex. What? Allowing his Will-O-Wisp to buy time, Bayonet had successfully snapped out of his confusion. He then performed an aerial somersault over the incoming Shadow Ball and struck his fellow ghost type with an ominous spell. Eyes glowed red as Deuceclops was outlined in a black aura, it hollered in pain as the flames lightly coating its body dramatically grew in size. Whoa, what's happening to Deuceclops? asked Kiba. Hex is a move exclusive to ghost type Pokemon and a selected few it actually doubles the amount of damage inflicted if the target possesses a status condition, this makes it favorable to those who can inflict burns and poison effects replied a nearby trainer. Bayonet continued on the offensive but suddenly came to a halt as an excruciating pain coursed through his small stature, leaving him open for a counterattack. Deuceclops used Shadow Sneak, diving into his own shadow to avoid further assault, Deuceclops then extended his untouchable body towards his struggling opponent. Bayonet, you have to relax if you keep struggling the effects will only extend. Taking his trainer's advice, Bayonet gritted his teeth as the curse drained a portion of his life energy. The pain was unbearable but only lasted a few seconds, now quickly, strike below with sucker punch and finish him with dark pulse. Declared Naruto. Dropping down with a pulled back violet coated fist, 
Dusclops rose with a palm strike but was slammed onto the sands by the marionette's quicker punch. Bayonet rose back up, creating a distance between the two before opening his zipper-like mouth and unleashing a tangled circular wave of dark power. End battle sequence. The impact erupted a sand cloud that blocked the results from the viewers. The particles soon resided, leaving an unconscious ghost Pokemon in its wake. The crowd spent no time sending cheers and applause for the winners, Bayonet grinned and laughed childishly as he performed various victory poses for crowd. Luck, that's all it was, luck though Sasuke with a sneer. Returning Dusclops to his dusk ball, the raven-haired boy trailed away from the beach without a word. An exhaled puff of steam fumed with every breathe, the temperatures within the frozen palace had dropped exponentially and continued to drop the deeper they traveled in. Blaze had brought out his Flareon and Houndoom to take down the Glalie defending the passageway. Their flames pushed back the horde and eventually arrived at the center chamber, where a single chunk of carved ice stood perfectly on its frozen pedestal. Courtney, Tabitha, the objective is secure get ready to tunnel out. Like hell you are, hum, didn't think you'd notice, well not like it matters now. Armaldo joined the fray. Tossing a poke ball, Blaze had sent out his strongest Pokemon to the frozen field. A bipedal mantis shrimp, shielded with thick grayish blue plates with an accents of yellow, black, white, and red. Its oblong eyes protrude from the sides of its head and a pair of wing-like appendages extended from its long thick neck, along with smaller spike trailing down its spine and a pair of back fins on its tail. Vaporeon, Crawdont, take him down. Much like Flareon, Vaporeon possessed a near-mirror appearance to the white flare-coated fox, the only difference was its opposing blue skin and fish-like attributes. Flareon use flamethrower, Armaldo bulldoze them with rock blast. Nine Vaporeon counter with water pulse, Crawdon shatter it with crabhammer. Fire and water met in a short clash before Vaporeon's element gained the upper hand, however was quickly countered by a spiraling chunk of stone. The bubble jet Pokemon jumped back as Crawdon rushed in front and smashed to part the incoming projectile with its glowing claw. Armaldo turn M to seafood with crush claw. Flareon, keep M away with shadow ball, ordered Tabitha as he proceeded towards the keystone. Shelly and her team were forced to back away from the Flareon's barrage of dark energy, this also left her Crawdon in a struggle against Armaldo's superior strength. Damn it, Crawdon stand your ground with Harden. Vaporeon wiped them out with muddy water, ordered the Aqua Admin. Snapping his attention towards his opponent, Blaze was forced to act quickly before the water type had a chance to flood the chamber. Armaldo, harden up as well. Flareon, tackle Vaporeon with Flare Blitz. Both taller Pokemon proceeded to harden their already thickened body plates, while Flareon coated itself in a protective fiery armor as it bolted towards its target. Unfortunately, the fire type did not possess the speed necessary to reach its opponent and was pushed back by a wave of murky water. The tide pushed farther and eventually carried both Blaze and his Pokemon across the room and onto a frozen wall. Crawdont, with the aid of Vaporeon, was able to push back Armaldo and promptly send it crashing down with a hard swing of its crabhammer. Shelly scurried across the knee-deep water and snatched the keystone from its pedestal, let's move. She ordered returning Crawdon while her Vaporeon swam ahead. Blaze gritted his teeth in both anger and pain, struggling to get up he reached for his earpiece and requested immediate assistance, Courtney, Tabitha, Shelley's got the stone, intercept her now. He shouted. His frown intensified as he received static from the other end, which could only mean one of two things, either his equipment was damaged due to the aquatic attack or his fellow admins were themselves in trouble. Returning his Pokemon, Blaze limped after the curly-haired admin. Shelly felt her jaws chatter as the keystone slowly began to encase her arm in ice. She soon arrived back at the entrance where both teams were now up against a much larger horde of Glalie. Matt and Amber took notice of her and motioned her to rush towards them, which did not go unnoticed by Team Magma. However, they could do nothing as they were pinned down by both the Glalie and a few aqua grunts. Suddenly, the keystone gave off a misty blue pulse as a strange seven yellow dotted cross appeared on its surface, the Glalie then bulldozed through the waters and flames and froze the few of the invaders as well as the environment with amplified ice beams. Pull back, the lot of you, shouted Matt, as he and his fellow admins dash up the tunnel leading back into the surface cavern. Preferring not to be turned into an ice sculpture, 
the aqua grunts followed their leaders out the only exit. Their sudden flee had caught the attention of several Glalie and proceeded to barricade the opening under a thick layer of ice, leaving Team Magma to fend off against the increasing horde. Blaze, where the hell are you? shouted Courtney, via earpiece. I hear you, echoed the Magma admin. Hurry up or you're getting left behind. Raiden, Graveler, use dig. Spinning its drill like horn, both the bipedal rhino and four armed boulder tore through the grounds below. Slateport City, Market, walking through the crowded streets, Sasuke frowned as his most recent battle continued to phase through his head, he was amongst one of the strongest trainers in the city and the skill of his team was near unrivaled, and yet, he was only able to bring down one of the blonde's Pokemon. Judging from your facial expression, I am guessing that victory went to your opponent came a voice that muted the rest. Sasuke felt pace slow to a stop, my team was more than capable than beating his, he just got lucky he replied, earning a sigh in return. Sounds like an excuse, there is no such thing as luck in a Pokemon battle, a win is always secured by the skill of both Pokemon and trainer. Sasuke could only growl at his sibling's words of wisdom as the elder Uchiha took the opposite direction of his trail. Sasuke took a few steps forward before glancing back at his brother's retreating self, seconds before continuing his path. Pokemon Center. Sitting outside the emergency room, both Naruto and Bayonet awaited the end result to Corsola's treatment. Once the lights dimmed down, the double doors opened and out walked the pink-haired Pokemon nurse and her chancy. How is she? asked Naruto. The beating she received was quite severe, though with proper treatment and rest, she should make a speedy recovery with a few days she explained. That's a relief. With a sigh, he handed over his dive ball. Guess he'll leave her in your capable hands earning a nod from joy and a reassuring smile from Chansey. Soon the evening clouds rolled in, washing the sky in the red, yellow, and orange colors that came with the sunset. Naruto and Bayonet had left their teammate to rejuvenate while they relaxed on the soft grass of the local park. Slateport City, wow, you move fast Naru Chan spoke a surprised Lydia. Yup, once the contest is over he'll be heading up to Mobile City. Contest. Is our son planning on becoming a coordinator as well? asked Faust. Hee hee, no dad, just gonna watch a friend compete, he snickered, before noticing his foster father's analyzing gaze. What, it's a girl isn't it? Huh, well, yeah but, oh, has Naru Chan found a girlfriend? And no, she's just a friend, and I am giving her my support is all he responded with a small blush. Whatever you say kiddo. Naruto groaned as their conversation grew more embarrassing, soon being forced to cut the connection on his extransi ever once his foster parents began to explain the steps of human reproduction. Net, don't even go there warned Naruto, which led to the marionette bursting out in laughter. Well, looks like I came at a bad time, that was awkward. Itachi, are you still up for our battle? Naruto instantly beamed and hopped to his feet, are you ready for this? He asked his starter who gave light boxing jabs as his response. Someone's eager, let's make this interesting, how about instead of the traditional one-on-one, -on -one, we have a double battle. We will be restricted to two Pokemon only, will you accept? Both Naruto and Bayonet's grins couldn't get any wider, whatever flows your way, he replied. Then let's battle, play Pokemon Battle Revolution Ost, Gateway Coliseum, Magmortar, Talonflame, Scorch the Earth, tossing a pair of uniquely designed capsules marked with a flame design and releasing the Pokemon within. Magmortar was a large bipedal, vaguely humanoid Pokemon with a red and yellow flame stripped egg body. It possessed wide pink lips on its dark face, along with long yellow tubular arms with three small claws differing from the two larger ones on its feet. Snapped to its neck, elbows, and ankles were thick black shackles. While four pink spikes grew from its backside its head, shoulders, and tail were lit in by a large flame. Talonflame on the other hand was a red-orange, black, and gray feathered falcon. It possessed orange ovular spots on its underside and flame patterns that marked the boundaries between colors. Its head formed an upward crest with its tail forming a perfect V. Naruto was curious to what these Pokemon were capable of and therefore brought out his Pokédex. Magmortar. The Blast Pokemon. The sturdy tubular arms of Magmortar can be used as cannons to blast fireballs of over 3,600 degrees Fahrenheit. 
These Pokemon typically live within volcanic craters and can heal wounds by dipping into a pool of molten lava. Switching targets, Naruto grew surprised when his dex couldn't identify Itachi's Talonflame. Looks like I'll need an update if I want info on different regional Pokemon thought Naruto, before snatching the Cherish Ball from his belt. Deoxys, come on out. Oh, it's yesterday's mystery Pokemon, thought Itachi. Having witnessed the few battles the red and blue alien had competed in, it was highly presumed that Deoxys was a psychic type, however its known moveset made it difficult to determine whether or not it was a dual type. Deoxys gave the Elite Four an uncaring glance before his tentacles morphed into arms and crossed at his core. Deoxys hold them down with Psychic. Bayonet. Help them with Will O Wisp. Talonflame. Use Tailwind. Deoxys expelled a violet aura as it targeted both Pokemon, unfortunately Talonflame was able to zoom up and out of sight. Unlike most special attacks, Psychic required a much more concentrated focus, which is why Pokemon were immobile when performing it. When the falcon left his sights, Deoxys focused his attention on the heavier fire type. Bzzdeets. Ba. Net. Hopping over his teammate Bayonet flung his fireballs at the cannon-armed Pokemon, the orbs made it halfway before Talonflame swooped in at high speeds, effortlessly evading the blue wisps before they were put out by the following jet stream. Itachi glanced at his Magmortar and noticed its arms were slightly drawn up as it struggled underneath the heavy telekinetic grip, Magmortar, use smog. Talonflame, carry the fumes with Tailwind, he declared. Erupting a cloud of toxic clouds from its hand cannons, the Fire Falcon began flapping its wings, creating wind that blew the heavy fumes towards their opponents. Deoxys counter with Icy Wind. Bayonet, ninja your way through with Shadow Sneak then stop Talonflame with Knock Off. Itachi knew the boy had a plan involving both of his Pokemon, otherwise the veil surrounding Magmortar would have remained. It was then that he felt a small drop in temperature and failed to notice the extending shadow due to the large quantities of black fumes. Bayonet soon bursts from his position and landing a surprise blow at Talonflame's exposed backside. However, the falcon's spiraling fall lasted a well-estimated 0.5 seconds as it twirled back up with an already prepared attack, Talonflame, use Aerial Ace. Ordered Itachi. With quick precision and speed, Bayonet was struck hard by a bird torpedo, Magmortar, fire a hyper beam. Halting its spew of toxic clouds, the heavy fire type shot a quick charged orange beam through the smog and frozen winds. Deoxys, defense form, bayonet, retreat with shadow sneak. Allowing himself to fall, the marionette reverse swan dived back into his shadow and towards his trainer. Deoxys on the other hand, possessed little to no time to perform the task requested as the powerful beam struck within dust lifting explosion. Once settled, the DNA Pokemon revealed himself to have successfully shifted into his sturdy armored form. Deoxys, shift to speed form and take M down with extreme speed. Bayonet, support with Night Shade. Magmortar, shield yourself with Fire Spin. Talonflame, protect your teammate with Steel Wing. Dashing at breakneck speeds, Deoxys would have tackled his opponent had he not ignited a ring of fire. Instead the red and blue alien began running circles around the heavy fire type. Magmortar glanced left and right as the now blurred Deoxys began to uplift his barrier, he looked up to see a ray of black lightning that would have caused him to stumble out of his fiery defense had Talonflame not blocked it out with her brightly shining wings. The falcon zoomed in towards the marionette as she blocked stray bolts at her companion, Bayonet, evade and use shadow barrage. Naruto declared. Ducking underneath the speeding bird, Bayonet spammed and manipulated countless orbs of undead power, making it impossible for the bird to dodge as they all bombarded her. Magmortar, blast him away with lava plume. Jamming his hand cannons into the grounds below, Magmortar gave a war cry as thick flames and toxic fumes erupted into his surroundings, successfully striking his unawared opponent. Deoxys, Talonflame, Aerial Ace once more. Bayonet, Dodge then pin her down with Hex. Evading left and right, Talonflame would not give the marionette the opening he so desperately needed. Eventually landing a blow that led to many, Bayonet was sent crashing onto the grounds below as where Talonflame flew higher up and prepared to sky bomb her down target. Bayonet, are you okay? Net, Bayonet, shall be coming down any second, and Deoxys isn't faring well either, I don't expect us to win, be errant going down without fight. Bayonet used Dark Pulse. 
Give it everything you've got. Talonflame finish him with Brave Bird. Unzipping his mouth Bayonet forced out his nightmarish energy at full throttle as Talonflame bursts into flames shortly before coating herself in a blue aura. Both attacks impacted and remained at a stalemate for no less than 5 seconds before Talonflame drilled through and crashed into her opponent. Turning the small dent into a crater, Bayonet was left unconscious while Talonflame fluttered out looking physically worse for wear. Naruto gave a small smile as he a dark violet ray returned Bayonet to his capsule, you did good, now rest up, you've earned it he spoke. You nearly took down Talonflame, I am impressed, but you forget this is a double battle, Magmortar use fire blast. Crap, Deoxys, teleport now, flashing away from his position, Deoxys narrowly dodged a speeding fire kanji. The DNA Pokemon trailed several scorch marks from the previous attack, anything over the top such as a second lava plume, fire blast, and hyper beam would have Deoxys joining Bayonet in the Pokemon Center. Okay think, my advantage is Magmortar's low speed, his advantage, Talonflame's high speed and Magmortar's high fire power, they both make up for each other's weaknesses and their moves can be collaborated for higher damage, this won't be easy thought the blonde as both fire types regrouped. Deoxys, use recover, Talonflame, use roost, it was no surprise that the orange red falcon would know that particular self recovery move, as it was exclusive to flying type pokemon. Deoxys coats himself in a golden veil as Talonflame gives out a bright visible pulse, shortly before their wounds disappeared. Ready for the round 2. Beezizidites. Deoxys. Attack form. Use. Nightshade. Trading some speed for attack power, the now whiplashing alien closed in its quadruple arms and unleashed a ray of black lightning from its core. Talonflame. Cut him off with aerial ace. Magmortar. Move in and use flamethrower. Mortar. Expelling puffs of flames, the blast Pokemon dashed across the battlefield with mild difficulty as he was struck by stray bolts. Talonflame was already ahead of her teammate as her speed allowed her to quickly reach her target, which instantly grabbed the attention of the red and blue alien. Just as the falcon disappeared from view, Deoxys heard the call of his trainer, Deoxys, strike your left flank with Zen headbutt. Declared Naruto. With his head giving off a bright cerulean glow, the alien smashed his head against the blitzing Talonflame. Bind her now, dodge with acrobatics, slipping away beneath an after image, Deoxys confusingly wrapped his arms around nothing before feeling a sudden heat draft. Without needing to be told, Deoxys skyrocketed into the air to avoid a stream of intense flames, Talonflame, uplift the flow with tail wind. Zooming in front of the flames, the falcon flapped gusts of winds that soon aided in creating a huge fire whirl that successfully captured their opponent. Beezizidites. Deoxys. Use Psycho Boost. Psycho Boost. Thought Itachi in surprise, as the blonde had yet to reveal such a technique in the public battles. Further questions were answered as a visible orb began to grow within the flame-based tornado and without warning shot down towards the earth. Eyes widening, Itachi ordered Talonflame to cease wind currents and pull out. Unfortunately the velocity of the plasma ball outmatched her speed, which resulted in her being caught in the blast radius. The explosion had dispersed the twister, nearly knocked down Magmortar, and had taken down Talonflame, leaving the raven hair to leap for, highly impressed. Excellent work, return, Magmortar and Deoxys shared a hardened stare as they awaited their trainer's orders. Naruto grinned as Itachi returned with an amused smile. Both could feel the adrenaline pumping through their veins as their battle raged on, and as much as they've enjoyed it, it would it have to end at some point. Deoxys, once more, used Psycho Boost, crossing his four arms at his core and began gathering cosmic energy that soon gave form to a large multicolored plasma ball. Magmortar, end this with Hyper Beam. Lifting both cannons, the egg-shaped Pokemon began to exhaust steam as the highly concentrated beams started to building up at the base of his arms. Beezizidites, Magmortar, blasting a man-sized plasma ball dead center of the two powerful beams, a struggle for dominance was ensured. Magmortar continued to pour every last ounce of its strength in order to push back the equally destructive projectile and to the surprise of both Naruto and Deoxys, he did. Quickly, push it back with Nightshade. Deoxys followed orders and pushed back with black currents of electricity. The struggle lasted a good 30 seconds before Magmortar's hyper beam obliterated the energy ball and raised through the nightmarish bolts as it struck Deoxys with blinding light, 
forcing Naruto to shield his eyes. End battle sequence. Once it was safe to blink, both Naruto and Itachi gasped as Deoxys dropped to his one knee and kept himself up with his right arms. His right leg and left arms, shoulder, and part of his masked face was appeared missing as white sparks tried desperately to repair the damage done. Naruto gave a low sigh, looks like we lost, no surprise there, he spoke with a shrug. Bzzzdz, I know you can, but I rather not see you suffer while you regenerate, don't worry, this defeat will help us get stronger in the future. Deoxys gave his trainer a strained yet thoughtful look before giving a nod in response, Naruto smiled and returned his companion to his cherished ball. Will he be alright? asked Itachi, with Magmortar trailing behind him. Yeah, he heals quicker than most of my team, a night's rest at the Pokemon Center and hell be as good as new. That's good to know, though I believe I should be thanking you for this battle. Thanking me, it's been a while since I've battled normally, you know without official league regulations and just for the hell of it, it was fun. Oh, well, you're welcome then, grinned Naruto. Who knows, if you keep working hard and treating your Pokemon with love and respect, then maybe, just maybe, it'll be me on the losing end. Oh, it won't just be you, it'll defeat all of the regional four, this I swear. Declared the blonde trainer, while receiving a light chuckle from the elder Uchiha. Route 126. Speeding across the ocean's surface was a two-floored, white and blue passenger boat. With many Aqua members maintaining the boat, one stood out from the rest as his hollow caster gave a vibration. Opening the screen, the monitor shot out a hologram of its caller, Amber, what news do you have? Asked Archie. Mission was a success sir, the keystone is in our hands, though I recommend getting it sealed, it's already turned our boat into a freeze tank. Noted, get it back to base and have our men study it, you've done an excellent job. Thank you sir. Well head back to base. Cutting connection, Archie gave a grin, we've already acquired one, with their power, not even the Elite Four will be able to stop us he thought, as the boat made way to its destination, Slateport 